So, Samantha's not throwing your trousers out at Winder these days. Samantha hasn't been anywhere near my trousers. <laughs> All right. He'll serve me, just not be served by me. Rovers can't be paying you that much. Are you prying again, Rita? Why a job in this street? You tried telling me what to do once before, but it didn't work, did it? I don't need your money. Get out of my shop. Oh, I'll do that. With pleasure. Thanks for doing those. I'm sure I will never this more. Katie's sound asleep at last. Did you hear her during the night? A couple of times. Yeah, well, I think she's all right, but we'll get midwife to give her a good look over when she comes today. What time's she coming? Between 11 and 12. And Zoe, I want you to say that Katie felt a bit up to you during the night and she was sick after her second feed. Zoe? Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, well, it's all got to come from you, this. I'll make myself scarce when she comes. No, Gary, you should stick around. You know, show an interest as a father. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. And I think you should mention that Gary's good with the baby. Don't worry, you'll get your money's worth. I'm going back upstairs. You know, I can't believe that she didn't hear Katie crying half the night. I know. But it's good for us that she can't. Do you think Katie will get used to me eventually? You were great. You're a natural. Do you think Zoe will do her stuff with midwife? Oh, I hope so. And he groans. Yeah, he has. Oh. <laughs> Is this their back garden, you know, Trish and Ray's? Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yes, smashing. Hiya. Morning. Back door was open. Alex said everyone usually gets together for a quick cuppa in the morning. Hey, does, mm -hmm. uh, does he do the garden, or does she? Well, in mostly. Yeah. But Trisha did some at Baskets, see? Oh, very colourful, aren't they? Is oh, he um, lovely. Is he in the bar? No, he's not in yet. Hey, have a biscuit, Betsy. Oh, thanks, love. <laughs> <I'm done. laughs> oh, Natalie. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> Morning, ladies. I asked Natalie to come in early so I could explain how we like things done, you know, show her the ropes. You're the landlady, Vera. Got any do's and don'ts? Yeah. Do take everything he says with a pinch of salt. And don't go in perfume sniffing distance of our Jack. Understood. Yes, well, we'll, uh, we'll get on. <laughs> we'll leave you to it, girls. Do you think you can restrain yourself? <laughs> hey, you, you smile like that behind the bar, you'll not go far wrong. Hey, I'll show you the cellar. It's where Jack often escapes to. I can't think why. Is this orange juice yours or mine? Ours. Have it. Would you mind if I wrote you a cheque out for this week for us, Des? I've got the cash for mine. Oh, give it to me. Mm, people will talk. Uh, sort it out between you. I'll leave you two to decide. <laughs> that was a joke, Chris. That's what Des does. You do know how to laugh, don't you? Yeah, I want to find something funny. We're the tenants here, remember? When he says we're out, we're out. Fine. Not fine! Well, he's not going to throw you out on the streets, is he? <gasps> he's not interested in me. How many times do I have to tell you? But you don't know, Des. He's a... Well, as a boyfriend, he's not a very nice person. He's shifty, he lies, he's unfaithful. He's a dirtbag. The worst thing a girl can do is make herself available to him. You did. Mm. I learned the hard way a long time ago. And now I'm with you, and he's turning himself inside out about yet another barmaid. Still think it's a bit off confiding in an old girlfriend? Well, I wasn't. Not really. Des likes a bit more of a challenge. Easy target, were you? Oh. All I'm trying to say is, if Samantha does want him, then she's going about it in exactly the right way. And if you want to drive me mad, then you're going about that in exactly the right way. Now... Would you like to be first in the bathroom? Or well, now that Des is gone, would you consider sharing? That's yeah. So, what are you going to do with your day off? The truth? 
<laughs> well, yes, preferably. I'm going to see my ex-wife. Oh. Oh, yes. I really know how to relax, don't I? I want to see her so I can tell her about us. It's a, a long way to Cornwall, John. Oh, I'm not going to Cornwall. She's up here visiting some friends of ours. Oh, right. Will she be interested? Well, I'm not really fussed if she is or she isn't. It's just in case the two of you ever bump into each other. Uh, John, I'm moving into the house that you two shared. Is she likely to turn up one day? Well, I won't be issuing invitations, if that's what you mean. Just uh, avoiding any unwelcome surprises? Yep. Well, in that case, I think you're right to tell her. If I know anything about ex-wives... Well, let's face it, what don't you know? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm actually beginning to think that Ken is starting to thaw towards me. Oh, I can do without you two becoming best friends. Uh, what will be, will be. <laughs> well, perhaps I should bring Linda back with me. We could introduce them. Oh, yes, very cosy. <laughs> let's see you later. Yeah, if you're very lucky. Mm-hmm. Come through. She's here. Hiya. Hello. Hello, Zoe. Kate has got no interest in being weighed or checked. She's still out for the count. Do you want to show me where yours and Katie's room is? Uh, I'll get her. Save Zoe's legs. Actually, I'll take a look at you first, if you like, Zoe. Me? Katie needs a mum to be well. Is there somewhere we can go? Uh, yeah. Why don't you go in the front? I'll come with you. Zoe might like a privacy, Mr Mallet. Yeah, I would. It's just through here. Oh, who's the drummer? Uh, uh, I am. You can have a go if you like. They're going to be all right in there on their own. Just keep your ear on them. I'll get Kate. It's your round today, isn't it, Sal? Yep. Mm. Do you know, love, I think I'll have a cider. Sweet myself up a bit. And I'll have my usual, Sally, love. Okay. Right, who's next? What would you like? All's going to get round in now. Shouldn't somebody go after her? Half a beer. What was that you were saying about not losing any customers? First it were eat. It's little Sally now. Well, it was to be expected, let's face it. It should be good news for this place, you mark my words. Anyway, a bit of scandal makes for a more interesting life. I've been all morning in that kitchen twiddling my thumbs. Isn't anybody eating this dinner time? Aye, we are. All oh, right. Get her back inside. We don't want upsetting any more people. Betty, yes. take weight off your feet, love. N Natalie will bring your orders through. Right. <laughs> hey, Alan. Of course I Thank will. Thank you. You know what? I bet it's the first time you've had a job, isn't it, where you've been on your feet all day? Not all day. No. No. Look, Sally, if you don't come back inside, she'll think she's won. She'll think she's got away with it. She got away with my husband, Janice, didn't she? What's this? Are we on strike or something? Go away, Les. This is girl talk. Come on, we'll have a walk round block. Take a breather. I'm going to go home for my dinner. I'll come with you. All right. Come on, love. I think Katie's had enough of me prodding around for now. She's doing very nicely, Zoe. I've done a bottle. Uh, and I think she needs a change. Uh, you can do that. Right. Is it OK if I sit here and fill out all the paperwork? Sure. Is uh, Katie healthy, then? Perfectly. Her weight's normal, eyes normal, muscle tone good, skin lovely. Zoe's doing a great job with her. And how about Zoe herself? How does she seem to you? A bit down. That's to be expected, isn't it? Yeah, she's bound to feel a little sore and sorry for a while. Well, we're going to do our best for her. Good. Your husband seems very protective. He is. It's not becoming a strain, is it? Having Kate it. No, no. For the four of you, under one roof? Well, we're managing, under the circumstances. You mean with Zoe being such a young mum? You've worked it out, haven't you? Why Zoe and Katie are living here with us? You said you and Zoe are friends? She's Gary's friend. Gary's Katie's father. <laughs> Not many women 
a court the way you are. No, I suppose not. Well, as long as Kate is okay, that's all that matters. Don't be afraid to take her out. If she's well wrapped up, she'll be fine. And some fresh air might put the colour back in your cheeks, okay? Good luck. Ta. Bye. 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 How do we do? Fine. I'll take her now. What's the matter? Wood I might get to like old dinner. Right. Well, if that's my duty over and done with. Uh, yeah, you were brilliant, Zoe. Well done. She said that Katie was obviously being well looked after and cared for. She gave the credit to Zoe, but I don't mind for now. She said that you were really lovely with her too. Oh, that's the easy bit. I told her that you were the father. You did what? We're going to have to get Zoe to sign the birth certificate now midwife's been. What, did she think I was a child molester? She hardly blinked, Gary. Oh, I bet. She's known younger mothers than Zoe. Well, I've been with blokes as old as me. She going to report me? It's going to make it official. Who to? Social services. But she said it's just for their records. As long as Kate is in a safe environment, then they're satisfied. Oh, Judy. What are people going to think? That you're the father. Which is what we want them to think. Which is what you will be. Oh, yeah, we should. Terrible. She's gone home for a dinner. She's in a rotten state, thanks to that cow. Oh, put us another one in there, love. Hey? Oh, another drink. Wasn't quite sure what you meant there. It could mean something else if you wanted it to. Oh, yeah? Like what? Oh, no, again. Come on, then. Share it with us all. Look, just ignore her. Janice, is she employed to pull pints or other women's blokes? Ali! Look, do I get another pint or not? Uh, yeah, well, uh, it's all right, Natalie. I'll, uh, I'll serve Leslie. I'll just tell her what on. she can do if you like. Now, ladies. Am I not allowed to serve the married ones? Not yourself on a plate, no. Listen, I don't have to put up with this. And neither do we. Right. Who's for up, Paul? Right, girls, come on, we're out of here. What, all of us? All of us. What are we going to do with this lot? Hang on, you've just ordered all this food. Right, we'll take it out of her wages. What would have you said about her being good for business? Yes, well, perhaps I was being a bit impulsive. Yeah, perhaps you are. Mrs Horrocks? Yes, Mrs Duckworth. The idea is to make the customer feel welcome. Yes, and that's what I was trying to do. Oh. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. And if any of that grub's going begging... Mrs Rashid, isn't it? Chris. Angie's bloke. Yeah. Hi. Hey, it all happens in here, doesn't it? Yeah. I uh, saw the flat over the bookies advertised in the cabin window and I was wondering uh, how much you're charging. Well, I'm not. I've uh, just agreed to show prospective tenants around. I am living there at the moment, but I'm wanting out of my lease. I don't think he's putting the rent up. So can Angie and I come and see? Yeah, I should be in just after five. Great, thanks. Right. Vera, may I? Uh, pint, thanks. I know you're moonlighting. Divorces can be expensive. We need the money, simple as that. No, we. You and Kev. Contrary to popular opinion, Martin, I haven't moved on to my next victim. So you can pass the word. I'm stopping with who I've got. Will you come on? I'm coming. Hiya. Uh, can I have a look at her? Yeah. Oh, she's beautiful. What have you called her? Katie. Katie? Yeah. That's lovely. How are you managing? Well, the both are. I had my boys when they were about your age. You'll be fine. <laughs> Not getting very far on this walk, are we? <laughs> oh, now that's the trouble with a new baby. You'll probably get stopped every few steps. <laughs> <laughs> you will. You'll see. Right, I'll see you later. All right, bye-bye. Come on, let's have a pee patter. Oh, look. Oh. Now, come on, who does she look like, then? I think she looks like a dad. Oh, really? Yeah, well, they say the first half and does, actually. Are we going for this walk or what? Yeah. Bye-bye. Oh, and congratulations. Just think, a bathroom to ourselves, permanently. Yeah, but what sort of a bathroom? Check it out. Can you get at work early? I suppose. Right, well, it's a date, then. See you at quarter past five. OK, see ya. 
Going somewhere special? To view a flat. Was he moving out? We are, apparently. Place above Skinner's. I have upset him, haven't I? So, how are you bearing up? I'm not off to a very good start, am I? Well, actually, you are, yeah. Well, if it's any consolation, he's drinking enough for all the punters I've driven away. True. <laughs> yes, Audrey? Now, how are you getting on? Well, I'm not going to win Barmaid of the Year. Oh, ignore people, I do. That's unless they don't manage to ignore her past. Oh! Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> G&T. Double? Ah, now that's what I call a good sales lady. <laughs> She's had a little girl, I just saw her. She's called a Katie, like my little one. She's so gorgeous. How old's the mum? About 16, 17. Well, how's happened before? At least she hasn't got herself landed with twins. <laughs> oh, should I go? No, you stay put. Right. Hiya, girls. Hi. How was Linda? Can I get a drink first? No. Oh. Well, she was, uh, waspish. Oh, she's worried because you've got somebody else, even though she has. Don't worry, I'm the best friend. I get told everything. Well, she asked me if you were pretty, if you were another flight attendant. Another? Well, she was. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot. Now can I get a drink? <laughs> Same again. A please, yeah. Don't worry, it's official. It must be. It's told the ex-wife. Yeah, the air hostess. No, when I mentioned the father, like you do, you know, with a new baby, and the three of them went absolutely quiet and hurried on. Oh, so who's your money in, then? Gary Mallet. No, not Gary. You won't look at another woman with her Judy. Kill him. Listen, <laughs> it's not looking at another woman that does it, Vera. Now, come on, this is the way I sit. Now, you remember when you took in your Lisa and little Tommy? Mm, yeah, I do. So, I mean, what did you do that for, hmm? Because I knew that no good of a son of mine were father. Exactly. And then what about, what's her name, Trisha Armstrong? I mean, that was the same story, <laughs> wasn't it? Because you felt responsible, because you knew who'd put her up, you know, in the family where. Mm. Anyway, that's it. I'm not saying any more. And I must say, it's nice to see someone with a bit of style behind your bar for a change. So, hey. Are we not going for a drink before we go home, or what? No, we're not. Oh. Not over at Road, anyway. It's not necessary, honestly. Sally, we have to make a united stand. Oh. We'll cut at White Swan instead. Right, you're on. Hey, you'll come, won't you? Yeah. Well, I've got to go... Do you know, if our Les thinks he's getting any tea tonight, he's wrong. <laughs> I've got to go and get the girls, and I've got to meet a mate. I've seen her tight before, you know. All brazen and made up. She knows she hasn't got her clothes into Kevin so tight. Why do you say that? Well, she has to stand there, don't she? Flaunting herself to remind you she exists. Oh, I don't need reminding. He made his choice. Sally, you've got to toughen up. Play her at her own game. I'm not very good at all that. Oh, you've got his kids, for God's sake. That's enough to unnerve her. She's put herself in there on purpose to keep an eye on you, love. I'll see you tomorrow. Come on, yeah, Ida. Yeah, These surveys about what men are supposed to think. Well, they never asked me. All right, I'll ask you. Come on, then. How do you feel about men preferring their wives to choose their clothes for them? Oh, I don't know about that, Rita. I'll leave those decisions to the missus. <laughs> oh, you're hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sally, love, did you get me message on your machine? I did, but this is the first chance I've had to pop in. What's wrong? Well, I didn't want you to find out for yourself. The Rovers' management, in their wisdom, have decided... I take on a new barmaid. You've been in? Yeah, dinner time. Oh, that's just what I wanted you to avoid. I won't be able to walk out my front door soon. Mm -hmm. Well, I've told her and them what I think about it. She won't be having my vodka and tonic in there anymore. Mm. The girls at the factory have made a stand too. Good for them. Well, I uh, didn't know she was working in there either, Sal, till I saw her behind the bar. It's all right, Martin. I don't expect you to avoid the rovers on my behalf. Mm. Well, I've decided it's going to be good for me. I worked out how much custom I'd be depriving them of, just for my own amusement. And it mounts up, I can tell you. Yeah, I bet it does. Um, Gail and I were hoping last week that you and Kevin might work things out. So was I. It seems we're not like other couples. We're not strong enough to withstand an affair. That woman doesn't like to lose. She seems to enjoy other people's discomfort. Happened in her marriage. Mm. I wonder if she hurt as much as I am. <laughs> she couldn't have. Otherwise, she wouldn't have done it to someone else. I'd like to see her hurt. I really would. I doubt if she's capable, Sally.
Hello. You don't do much, do you? I don't think you look like a Katie at all. I prefer Shannon. Yeah, Shannon. That's what I'm gonna call you. Right then, tell us the faults. Well, it uh, depends what you're after. Why are you moving? Because I'm moving in with someone myself. He's got his own house. Uh -huh. Anyway, I'll uh, leave you to look round yourselves. Have you got any questions? Just sing out. OK, thanks. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Small. Not for any two of us. Des says the bookies might close down. So? So we might find ourselves living over a chip shop or whatever happens to go in downstairs next. Chip shop would suit me. Oh, it'd be nice if I brought work home. My samples would end up stinking. And what if it stands empty for months? That's no good for security. I've got nothing worth stealing. Yeah, what about me? My safety. And what if it stays at Bookies? Have you seen the types that go in there? Yeah, Des. Have you any other objections? Correction, has Des any other objections? Shall we talk about this at home? We came to see whether this is going to be our home. What I can't work out is why he wants to live with a couple. The rent we pay him. Oh, come on, Chris. This is awful compared to where we are now. I like this. This could be a place of our own. I don't. Well, then I'll have to move in by myself, then. Hello, Natalie. Hello, Rosie. You don't come and see us anymore. Well, perhaps you can come and see me, eh? And your daddy. Don't even think about it. Inside, Rosie. Can Natalie come in? No, she can't. No, I'm on my way to work, sweetheart. OK, bye. Come on. So how does Kevin feel about you working at night? He's fine about it. What will he be doing? He's not very good at being left alone. No, we found that out, didn't we? He likes the Rovers. I get the impression he's spent a lot of time there in the past anyway. Well, it suits him having a local. It's something close to home. I know he came to see you the other day. He told me. He left you for me, remember? Yeah. And your husband left you for someone else. What's his name? Nick. And has Nick told you how sorry he is? How comfortable it feels to be back in his own home? Well, it would be a bit crowded these days, wouldn't it? Kevin has. He wants contact with his children. I don't mind that. Oh, that's big of you. It's not just his children that he misses. Is that right? Then why is he still with me and not in there with you? Because I said no. You're lying. Am I? Maybe you should ask him. Hey, you sat then? You go on, I'll come on later. Huh? You're not feeling well, love? I don't know what I'm feeling, Kevin, because I don't know what you're feeling. Hey, are you being funny with me? Lassila, if so, tell me what I've done, because I don't know what is it. I just want to ask you one question, right? And I want a straight answer, yes or no. What? Did you go round to Sally last week and ask her to have you back? Hey? Just answer me, Kevin. Did you or didn't you? Why are you even asking me this? Because that's what she told me. And I'm wondering if that's what you wanted to tell me when you turned up here. What are you talking about? Is that what happened, hey, Kev? That you couldn't have Sally back, so you had to settle for me? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I want to be with her, don't I? In Sally's dreams. Look, you must be mad to even listen to her in the first place. She'll do anything to drive a wedge between us. She hates you, Natalie. So what? I don't care about Sally. I just want to know where I stand with you, that's all. Yeah, well, listen to me then, and not her. Now, come on, get your bag. Oh, for heaven's sake, Chris, aren't you bored with this because I am? You're the one being boring. Why? Because I prefer a comfortable house to a poky little flat. I call that being totally rational. Besides, I've told you before, I like company. Oh, don't give me that, Ange. Why don't you just come out with it? The reason why you won't shack up with me is because, basically, you're not that into me, are you? I'll make us up some saunas before we go. And I want you here before 12 so you can have a wash and put something nice on. What am I getting dressed up for? You're not going like that. 
I'm putting cable layer down on the birth certificate, ah. So? So I can go as a cable layer. You're not going to the registry office to lay cables, Gary. It's a formal occasion. Hiya. Your cereal's on the table. What are you dressing her up as? Eh? Just get here on time. Dress me up for what? We're just saying we have to leave here by half past twelve. Unless you forgot what we're doing today. I haven't forgotten. I just thought you might change your mind. Of course we haven't. It's all booked up. Well, you can unbook it, can't you? No, we can't. What do you mean? I just thought you might have got scared off, that's all. Well, cos if someone finds out that you're not a real dad, they could have both of you up in court, couldn't they? Who could? Just go to work, Gary. I'm only saying. Yeah, we can just stop saying, Zoe. Because we're doing what we said. No one's going to find out. I'll see to that. Do I get a right to reply? Right, then. Let's not turn this into a who feels more about who competition because that's not what it's about. I think that's exactly what it's about. It's about how we make what we've got together last. Oh, come on, Chris. One snog and we're living together, then three months after and it's let's build a nest. It's way too fast. Only for you. And I'm not talking about nest building, I'm talking about space. Well, if you're dead set on moving out, then you're going to have to do it. That doesn't mean I don't want to be with you. Come on. It's as clear as day who you want to be with. Chris, all I'm trying to say is, OK, I accept that we feel differently about this house. So you go and I'll stay and we'll let it be a test for us. What? Well, let's see how we cope with a bit of space between us. Could well be the making of us. Better than keeping on falling out, anyway. Don't mind me. I just live here. Hope the two of you are very happy together. Can I join you for a quick cuppa? Suit yourself. I'm not lingering. Betty, do we have to act like we're enemies? Look, I know how fond you are of Sally and I don't expect you to change your opinion of me, but can we not call some kind of truce when we're working together? Suit me better if you didn't work together. Well, it would suit a lot of people around here if I just dropped dead, wouldn't it? But if it's any consolation, I'm not quite as thick-skinned as you probably think I am. Betty, I just want us to be civil to each other. You know, like, if I want to ask you where something is. Well, can't say I didn't try. Psst! What? Is our Jack about? Jack? He's in the cellar with Alec. Oh, good. Anyway, don't crack on, you've seen me. Well, what are you up to? You'll know soon enough. Mm. Right. We're taking her off to get registered today. What's that? It's what you have to do to get a birth certificate. Ah, oh, so you've picked a name for now, have you? She's not just a pig in nuisance. Well, what they've picked. They want to call her Katie. Katie? Oh. Oh. Katie Mallet she'll be. Are they allowed to do that, though? They can do what they like. Yeah, well, I suppose it's what you wanted, isn't it? You haven't told anyone, have you? Of course I haven't. You mustn't. I haven't told anyone. I wonder what they'll tell her. I mean, she's got to know something someday, hasn't she? Dunno. Well, if your name's on the birth certificate, she could turn up on your doorstep when she's 18. No. Oh, come off it. Of course she could. She could try and trace you. Adopted kids do that, don't they? You'll have to go now. Right. Hello? I, uh, just came to see Zoe's baby. But I'm going now. Mm. See you then, Zoe. See you. Well, this is boring, isn't it? It's better than being served by that slag bag in Rovers. Depends. Could have her hands all over you, all less for all you know. Do you want more tea? No, Tara. We're fed up of boring tea. Well, do you want coffee? No, we want to drink. We're proper drinking it. Well, get her off to the pub then. Just shut up about drink, will you? And about my les. Hey, missus, can we bring us own bottles in here? You are. You know, like the do at places don't have a license. Oh, I've no idea. Don't ask me. I'm just a mere minion near me. Yeah. Hey. What's your line on Rovers? Do you still go in there? Well, Lord, yes, I do. I'll be there this very minute if the time when we... <laughs> Did you hear that? 
Look, we've promised Sally. I know, and we've made a stand. And I'm going to make another stand. Do you fancy a Swifty? Yeah. Sorry, love, but when needs must. Hey, no, come on. I didn't mean go now. Oh, to hell with it. Hey, will you wait for me? Oh, so. Fine, please. Hey, you don't look very happy today. What's mm. eating you? Same as every day, living with your boyfriend. Wondering why it is my girlfriend would rather stay with him than move into a flat with me. So you found a flat then? No, oh, I could have. Deirdre's yeah, flat over the bookies. But Angie's not too keen, right? Oh, yeah. Pack to lager, please, Alec. So explain it to me, will you? Because it mystifies me. What is it that Des has got over you, look, then, eh? Got nothing over me. Why? Des boy giving you some grief, is he? <laughs> Just fed up with having to live with him, that's all. And Angie won't move out. Ah, right. So I'm probably right, aren't I? She's just not that keen on me. Mm, yeah, of course. Except she won't say so. I tell you what, I'm glad my dating days are over. Eh? Wife, arms, kids, sorted. <laughs> I bet you don't look back either, Jack, do you? Eh? Do what? I'm saying, I bet you don't look back to your bachelor days. You know, all that gadding about, greasing your quiff, will she, won't she? I bet you're glad to have your ball and chain on, aren't you? No comments. <laughs> I was going to say to you about, um, what's her face? Who? Oh. Natalie. I've been thinking. What? Well, don't you think we've been a little bit hard on her? Eh? Well, I was thinking we, perhaps we should ease up a little bit when she's working. I mean, she knows, you see, we don't approve of her. Don't be so soft. She oh. deserves all she gets, sir, that tartan, madam. Oh. And I'm going to make sure she gets it and all. Right. Oh, what are you lot doing back? Will we come for a drink? Oh. Yes, ladies. Now, your usual, is it? Ah, and soon as. Ah, uh, my pleasure. Hey, but don't get us wrong. We haven't changed what we think. And I bear no grudges. She's not here any road. Have you sacked her, then? If you're referring to Mrs Horrocks, she's on the evening shift today. But I'm sure we can all live and let live, eh? Here, I want a word for you. Uh, I'm very busy. Later, love. Never mind later. Now, in the back. Right. Right, what's it all about? Look, I want that Natalie sat. Oh, V. Today, I want the two of us against that one of Alec Gilroy, and I want her out. But, but where, where's the need, Vera? You've got all the flaming factory girls back. Look, I don't care, Jack. I don't want her here. And I don't want him in there thinking he can get better of us. Look, I'm sorry, but I just cannot see that it is worth a fight. Oh, well, I'll have to make you see you then, won't I? You won't? Oh, yeah. Well, if you're not going to cooperate with me, I'm doing note for you. So enjoy that clean shirt and the clean socks and the underpants because I'm doing no more washing for you. And I'm not making you tea either because I'm going on strike. Oh, and another thing. Don't you be thinking there's any clean clothes in the bedroom because there isn't. What time is it now? Just after ten past. Let's get straight in there then. No, wait, wait a minute. Uh, let's go in at twenty past. Let him know you're here, Gary. Hang on. Let me just have a think. What about? Are you bottling out? No. I just want to be sure that there's no other way of doing this. Gary. This is down to me, Jude. Yeah, me and all. And I've told you both this is the best way of no one finding out. Well, it isn't it? I suppose so. Right. Well, will you get in there and sign the papers then? Hey, you just missed Chris. Good. He was a bit fed up. Mm. He's been a right pain at the moment. Wants us to move out of Desi's. And you're not too keen. To be honest, I could cheerfully live without the pair of them at the moment. Chris moaning about moving and Des moaning about you. I don't know which is worse. Why? Cheers. What's he been saying? Oh, only that he's really bothered about you. Not that I know what to advise him. Bothered about what? Oh, I'm not getting involved. You talk to him. It all sounds far too tricky for simple little me. Ta. And I'm sorry you've had an earful from Chris. So what's it like inside the palace? <laughs> Fantastic kitchen. You know, designer kitchen with everything tucked away. Oh. Lovely big sunny lounge. Beautiful lawn out the back. But no sign of him anywhere. How do you mean? Well, you know, no... No personal bits and pieces lying around. Mind you, he's hardly ever there, is he? Oh, it sounds wonderful. Hey, I've just had a thought. I could show you it. How do you mean? You could go there now. I mean, I haven't got any keys or anything, but you could see it from the outside. Hey, I'd love to. Yeah, then you can picture me in it.
I'm, I'm sorry. I have to go out of Gary? Chance. We'll just have to chance it without our father's name now. Don't be daft. What chance do we have if Zoe comes and takes the baby? We've got no to stop her. Please, Gary, please sign the birth. What are you doing, Gary? He's all right now. Just felt a bit funny. Well, what do you think? <gasps> it's fab! It's a bit up from Coronation Street, isn't it? <gasps> Most of the time it's just sitting empty, isn't it? Yeah. What a waste. Oh, I wish I could show you the inside. What make me even more jealous? You're so lucky, dear. Oh, no. I keep pinching myself. Hey, I wish I could meet a fellow like him. Hey, it shows you, though, doesn't it? You never know what's next round the corner. Babe, come in. I didn't expect to see you. Do you want a beer or something? No, thanks. You all right, Sam? No, I'm not. I saw Angie at lunchtime. What have you said to her? Don't know what you mean. What have you said to her about me? I haven't said anything. Well, then why does she seem to know something? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't lie to me, Des. Just tell me what you said. I haven't said anything. Apart from, well, saying how I feel about you, that's all. About what about me? About me and my hang-ups? No. I don't believe you. I promised you. Well, then why did she say you were so bothered about me, eh? Why did she say it sounds very tricky? Have you done? Signed and sealed. She's ours. Katie, Joyce, Alec. OK, I admit it. I told him that we'd had a great kiss. It was driving me mad because I knew it wouldn't go any further than that. I did not say one tiny word about Ian Phillips or any of that. I swear to you, Sam. Well, maybe it's not such a bad idea. You telling Ange. You know, perhaps that's what you need. Another woman's view. Don't you dare tell me what I need. God, I must have been mad to trust you. Sandies are just about worn up now. Yeah, well, I'll make some more tea to work. We'll have our big tea tonight. Great. They make you hungry, these barn vacations, don't they? Oh, hiya. Hiya. Oh, hold on. I want to have a look at this new baby. Oh, she's fast asleep now. Oh. She always drops on straight to sleep when we put her in pram. Oh, she's gorgeous, isn't she? What's her name? Katie. Oh, that's a lovely name. Hey, she looks like a Katie, doesn't she? Yeah, we've just been down with Zoe to the registry office to get a birth certificate. Oh, is that what you have to do? Yeah, it's only three quid for an handwritten one. I'll be back in a sec. Leanne. Oh, are you? Where are you going? I'm just going shopping for me, Mum. We've just come back from registry office. Look at him, showing her off. I can't take much more of this. Yeah, well, you won't have to soon, will you? I have to keep telling myself. I mean, I can have another baby, can I? And at least I'm getting a load of money for her. You should spend some of it. Cheer yourself up. Hey, we could go out tonight, couldn't we, and get blasted? Don't give me it yet, though. Well, tell them that you want some up front. Come on, they've got your baby, haven't they? 
So, did you have a word with Bessa? Yeah. Don't know if I got anywhere, but at least I reminded her that I'm human. Well, what does she think you are? A vampire or something? Must be those teeth marks I keep leaving in your neck. Uh, excuse me, this customers want serving. What, me? I'm being served. She's serving someone. Me. Well, we all know what she does for you. Leave it, Kevin. It's not worth it. Give us a pint, please. Here. I thought you were going to deal with her before opening. Oh, come on, Vera. Give her a chance. At least till the end of the week. Are you not listening to I me? I am listening, but there are other points of view, V. Right. Well, I'll this will bring you round to mine, then. Vera. See? Look what you make me do. So unless you want to be stood behind that bar serving in your best, you better get her in the back and get her fired. It must be so hard, Ken, after such a busy life. Well, busy but not balanced, you see, Emily. Apparently that's my problem, according to the gurus. No hobbies, no family life, nothing in reserve. Well, I suppose that's what helped me through retirement, having so many interests. Have you thought about taking up writing again? Oh, well, the great novel. Well, or articles, you know. Well, I just don't seem able to concentrate that side of my brain. If I pick up a book, I get restless. No, I think I just need to find something mundane, you know, tide myself over. Well, um, if it wouldn't insult you, Ken, Sunliners do need a courier every now and again. Oh? Yeah, just to and fro to the airport. I mean, we usually book a taxi, but I'd sooner we paid you. Oh. Well, thanks, Deirdre. I appreciate the thought. Bye. 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 Hi, Angie. Excuse me, Hi. Hi, yeah. Listen, Am, it's about the flat. Was that a definite yes you wanted, or are you still making your minds up? Uh, has Chris not got back to you yet? Not yet, no. Oh. Well, you can't really delay, Angie, because uh, I've got a house to move into on Friday. Yeah, yeah, you said. Which is a lot of organisation, as you can imagine. And I'm loath to take the advert down if you can't give me an answer. No, uh, sorry. Um... So, uh, when will I know, then? I'll tell Chris to give you a call tomorrow, let you know one way or the other. Right. I hope it's yes. I'm pretty sure it will be. So, can you let me know first thing? Yes, OK. Oh, and, um, I'm sorry if I detected a bit of a strain between the two of you, but, uh, John and I can't wait to share a house together, you know. I'll tell him. Thanks. Good evening, Desmond. Uh, your usual, is it, love? Yes, thanks, Alex. Mine's the love, please. Anything for you? No, thank you. You've given me enough to handle in one day. Eh? What have you been saying to Samantha? Samantha? Oh, lunchtime. Not much. Why? Because she came straight around and shot my head off. Now, what do you tell her I've been saying? Just that you were really bothered about her. I was trying to give her a little nudge along, you know. Yeah, well, thanks a billion. Because I think you might have just nudged her out of my life. Uh. Natalie, I'd like a word in the back in private, if you don't mind, please. What now? Has Vera reported me? This is getting really tedious. It won't take us a minute. Well, what is it now? <laughs> well, someone be a sec. Sign of appreciation in some countries. That was fantastic, that. Yeah, Zoe doesn't think so. I'm not hungry. Well, do you want some pudding then? It's chocolate cheesecake. No, I just want a sub on my money. Eh? I want some money so I can go out. I shouldn't have to ask anyway as soon as it's mine. I don't mind having any cash. How much do you want? 20? 50. 50 quid to go out? That's right. Okay, that's what you want. It's not gonna last very long at this rate. Well, that's my business, isn't it? Right. That's 50 off the turtle, then. Ta, you don't wait up for me. It's us that should get paid. And not letting her bring up the kid. She really is ours, isn't she? Katie Joyce Mallet. Sounds just right, don't it? You'll make a smashing mum, you know. I can't believe we really are a family, aren't we? No going back now. No, Natalie, wait! Oh, you misunderstood me, didn't you? 
my husband. Well, there you go. I've done the deed. You didn't sack her. She's resigned. But she's gone. So, right, where's me flaming shirts? Outside in love. Kevin, come on, go in. Hey? They can keep the lousy job. Natalie, what, what's the matter? Ask the management. Vera, what's going on? Didn't our Jack explain, Alec? They switched sides to me. Hey, what? Well, it's like that, isn't it? Yes, love, what are you having? You're drunk. I had a few jars with my mates, that's all. A few jars? You've had a skinful. So what if I have? It's my kid you're buying, not me. We're just trying to do the best for everybody, especially Katie. Yeah, right. Zoe, you've just given birth. You're not doing yourself any favour staying out drinking till all hours. Well, sure up and let me get to bed then. Hey, what's all this row? Have you seen the state of her? Oh, get off her back, Perry. Oh. Zoe, Judy's only trying to tell you what you're doing. Is well, not... I'm sick of everyone trying to tell me what to do. Er, uh, you, the piggy midwife. Well, better off with Liam, least he didn't boss me about. No, he just left you pregnant, without a penny to your name. No good for you anyway, a poxy job like that. Now, we can find you something more suited. I will, when we get back. Back from where? Holiday. I've decided that we both need a break. But you've just been given a sack. I'm paying Sally an arm and a leg. We can't afford a day trip, let alone a flipping holiday. Yes, we can. This came from my solicitor. Nick's caved in. He's agreed to pay me a one-off lump sum on condition that I make no further claim. You're going to take it? Well, I'd be mad not to. It's more than I thought. You must reckon it was worth it to get shut of me. So, lover boy, where do you fancy going? Oh, give it a rest, Des. You must have said something to get her so knacked during this girly little chat of yours. Like what? The train confidences. Betraying? Exactly what dark, dirty little secrets of yours am I meant to have divulged? Oh, not mine. Uh-huh. Look, we've all got stuff we'd rather keep private. Well, whatever it was, it stayed that way. Tell her. Oh, you tell her. Oh, no, you sort out your own love life, sunshine. I've got enough problems of my own. What's going on? Our landlord has just accused me of opening my gobby little trap. Yeah, well, keeping it shut was never one of your strong points. Hey, don't you talk to her like that. Oh, keep out of it, Junior. It's between me and Ange. Not when you slag her off, it's not. You wouldn't have this if you moved in with me. I'm not being pushed out for something I didn't flame in do. Anyone else insult you, they'll be scraping them off the walls. Just what is it with you and him? Oh, simple. She'd rather live with the grown-ups. <sighs> oh, Chris, where are you going? Well, you might be happy to put up with this, but I don't have to. Not anymore. I'm not surprised you can't face a proper breakfast. State you came home in last night. Lace, tell her, will you? Tell her what? Coming home bladdered, waking all house up. It weren't that late. Oh, only half past flipping three. Who we are we till that time, any road? Hey. You should be doing something with these. Never mind leaving it to me. Do you know you're flaming useless, Puria? I hope you're going to shift that heap of junk. Hey, some bike parts I got off a car boot sale. Could be as good as new when I've done them up. I didn't ask you what they were. I asked you how soon you could get shot of it. Hey, they're not harming anybody. A flaming eyesore stood there. Not to mention a booby trap. Any poor old soul could easily trip over that. <laughs> what? Like you, you mean? Nice manners you teach your kids. Hey, there's no wrong with my family. No, now that shipping you all off to Australia wouldn't cure. Chime in. Who's got nice flaming manners now? I was going to fetch him round. You have enough to do. And it's charity shop morning anyway. Hey, where does it all come from, eh? Do clothes breed when you shove them away or what? They do say it's very therapeutic, having a good old clear out. Oh, well, I have one every time I move, which seems to be every other day lately. <laughs> Let's hope this is the last one. You deserve some real security after what you've been through. Is that your roundabout way of saying I've got your approval, Mrs Bishop? You don't need my approval. Well, you're blessing then. I mean, let's face it, for the time being, me and John will be living in sin. <laughs> That's the sort of thing Ina Sharples would have said. <laughs> she wasn't the only one. 
No, I suppose not. Well, those were the rules you were brought up by. It's the way things were. Well, I was worse than most. It's a different world nowadays. Now I'd say there's a lot worse sin than being happy. Thanks, Emily. If I was tut-tutting about it, you'd still be going, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, of course I would, but I'd rather have it this way. Hey, listen, you must come for dinner as soon as I get settled. Get to know John properly. He's a lovely man. Maybe he's got a lovely uncle who could make up a foursome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for looking after the place again, Barry. It's not to ask. Rubbish. Any special instructions? Well, just the same as last time. Pop in, draw the curtains in the evening, lights on. Trying to keep an eye on the place. Make it seem lived in. When are you due back? Uh, a week tomorrow. Laura's staying on some others with the children. I'll give her my regards when you speak to her. Well, she really appreciates this. There's been a lot of breakings around here, and it's both her away at the same time. She worries. Well, there's no need, mate. House couldn't be in safer hands. Have a good flight. Go easy on the sake when you get there. I'll stand the stuff. No, the, the girl wasn't my cup of tea. Girl? She was 40 if she were a day. Hardly. Listen, from where I'm standing, if you're 50, you're a girl. Anyway, like I was saying, she, she grows on you. Mm. Well, so do Verokas. No, she knows what she wants and she goes for it. Something to be said for that. Yeah. Not when it's other women's husbands, it isn't. Look how we're making a stand for deceived wives everywhere. Come off it, you're only trying to let Jack and Alec know who's boss. <sighs> Look, our Jack don't know what's best for him. And him in there, well, he ain't a clue. Mm. So Natalie was just a pawn in your little power struggle? Look, I'd shed no tears over her flower. Because she wouldn't shed any over you if it were the other way around. <laughs> Brassy tart. Oh. Do you know it's under her head ain't rotted off the amount of bleach she must use in a month? <laughs> Oh, uh, I, uh, I was looking for Jack. Oh, mm. he's gone to Barbers to have his remaining three hairs cut. <laughs> Presumably having first sought permission in writing. Eh? Well, I couldn't help but notice, Vera. He, he can do nothing these days without your consent. And you're not above a bit of skullduggery to keep it that way. Yeah, well, hang on to that thought. <laughs> It seems five minutes since you moved in. Oh, no, I was just saying to Emily, I've had too many flits lately. Yeah, but this one is for all the right reasons. Mm. How's it feel? Truthfully, cloud nine. If I say I'm jealous, is that horrible? No. Yeah, it is. It's not that I don't want it to be happening to you. I just think it'd be nice if it could happen to both of us. <laughs> well, you'd risk it again. After Fraser? Well, yeah. Can't all be duds, can they? John's not. Do you know, you're so smug I could thump oh, you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, if the right person came along and made me glow like you're doing now, I'd risk it like a shot. You don't think I'm crazy, then? What are the alternatives? Playing it safe and ending up an old maid? No. I didn't know what loneliness was the last couple of years. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, Chris, hi. Come on up. Hello. Hi. Sorry to bother you. I was just wondering, when are you actually going? Ah, about tea time. All right, then. Can I move my stuff in after work? Oh, uh, better leave it till tomorrow. The rent starts from then. Right. Why is there any rush? No, I need to get away from my present landlord. Oh, uh, why? What's up with him? What do you mean, apart from the fact he's an arrogant prat who thinks he can pull anything with a pulse? Um, I'll uh, give you the spare keys. I'll push the other one through the letterbox when Thanks. I go. Great. Are the two of you moving in? Just me. Oh, well, I hope you'll be very happy here. Well, I'm bound to be. It's a Barnes-free zone. Hiya. Hiya. Like little dolls, isn't it? <sighs> she is a little doll. You are, aren't you? Hey, Ah, Shannon. Katie. So, did you get anywhere interesting? Just went for a look around market. I saw this gorgeous crop top, but um, I'd look a right freak in it. Why? Flaming stretch marks. And I was going to get a gold ring in my belly button, but forget that. Good job and all. And it's Tara bikinis. Oh, we are feeling sorry for ourselves, aren't we? Got a nice little figure on you. 
There was this leather jacket, though, that were really nice. Yeah, a nice price and all. Well, I could afford it if you sub us. What? So you can go out boozing again? I've just said it's for a jacket. Any road it's my money, I can spend it how I like. Even if it means ending up in the gutter like before? If I fancy, yeah. Zoe, you're 16 years old. You don't want to waste your life away on booze and drugs. Look, fetch her up to be little Miss Nice Knickers if you want, but leave me out of it, all right? You are so stupid. Well, I'm not that stupid. I can have a kid, which is more than you can flipping do. The front door was open. Uh, I, I did knock, but you obviously didn't hear me. the Rovers. It's not my birthday. Yes, it is. Rita, you know I don't go in there. Not with his fancy piece preening herself behind bar like Lady Mug. You keep your nose out. I've had one running with your family today and that's more than enough for anybody. It's all right. Trust your aunt, Rita. Right, well, if that's me finished, I'm going to go upstairs. So where? She doesn't need me. Anyway, you know more about the kid than I do. Go on. You look like you could do with a nap. That'd be easy for her. And for none of you. I'm sorry you heard us arguing earlier. A new baby brings a lot of stress into our household. And I suppose with the other complications. Uh, that's got nothing to do with it. I told you. Forgive Gary. It's more to do with her being a kid herself, really. Not having any idea how to go on. What, with the baby? With everything. I shouldn't be telling you this, but. It's okay. Well, it's not very clever going out drinking when you've just given birth, is it? I mean, I tried telling her, but... Does she make habits of it? No. Just last night. I suppose you can't blame her. I mean, after what she's been through, she has to let rip, poor kid. You're a very unusual woman, Judy. In what way? Well, not many wives would be as understanding if their husbands behaved as Gary has, let alone show such concern for the mother of his child. Yeah, well, like I said... It was just a one-off. And anyway, I couldn't see Zoe back on the streets. You can't make an innocent little baby suffer, can you? Gone? Yeah. Vera's given her the sack. Thanks, Vera. I'm really grateful to you. Well, I'm taking the stand on behalf of all deceived women. Weren't you, Vera, love? Well, somebody has to keep up the standards. <laughs> somebody better watch out that her nasty little games don't rebound on her with a vengeance. Big mistake if you've got shut a blondie. In my view, she was an asset. In your view, out's an asset if it's under 90 and wears a skirt. Oh. Well done, Vera Love. Why are we squabbling like a pair of deaf kids? Do you know? Wasn't it something I thought you said to Angie? Thought being the operative word. Yeah, but you did discuss me with her. Well, she's a mate. She sussed that something was bugging me, so I, I told her we had a problem, but I didn't tell her what. Look, Sam, when I said that you could trust me, I meant it. Prickly cow, aren't I? Middle name's Cactus. But if you turned all sweet and cute on me, I'd probably lose interest. Mm -hmm. Not much danger of that. Which? Both. <laughs> I can't claim to know him, but he seems a decent chap. She dotes on him. That's the main thing. Mm. Picking up a dashing pilot in a singles bar. It's like something you read about in a steamy paper back in it. World we live in, it's usually like local milkman or something. Eyes met over a pint of semi-skimmed. That's about as romantic as it gets. Well, in those books, there's always a happy ending. Yeah. Well, it's good to know it can happen in real life, eh? For once. Right, well, I can have it done by tomorrow dinner if you can get in first thing. Unless you want to leave it now. Well, I can't. I'm taking the kids out later. Hey, Kev. What? You and the girls fancy joining us? We're going to see some scary monster spacey movie. Davey's just got to see it. He's the only one in the school that's not seeing it, and it's not fair. Come on, it'd be a laugh. For a change. I can't. Hey. 
Oh, he's got some beautiful blonde whisking him off to a tropical paradise, all expenses paid. And he's not a happy bunny. How are you working out, mate? Well, that don't take a genius, does it? So yeah. Hiya. Hiya. Hi. Hi, Nat. Kev! Grand Canaria. Air-conditioned apartment, balcony overlooking the sea. Does that suit you? All right. When? Tomorrow. And it would be a good idea if you came in in the morning as well, give yourself a head start as you're going to be at the main man. I'm moving into my flat. Well, how long does it take to shift a few T-shirts and some CDs? It's a bit quick, isn't it? Oh, not you as well. What do you want? Six months' notice. Look, I'll need to let Sally know. Why? I wasn't intending taking her. Sally needs to know. Arrangements and things, you know, I'm supposed to be taking a girl swimming. OK, well, tell her. It's no big deal. You're entitled to a break, Kevin. There is life after Sally, you know. Well, I uh, couldn't let you go without saying goodbye. <laughs> I'm only going to Cheadle. Well, I'm not talking about geography. I know. <sighs> End of an era. Our era ended a long time ago, Ken. Well, not completely. The bonds are always there, weren't they? Shared history, mutual support. Tracy, Samir, Denise, Daniel. Well, they're not going to disappear just because I'm not living round the corner. No. No. Anyway, it's time I grew up and sort of my own two feet, isn't it? Fact is, I should be doing what you're doing, really. Moving away, fresh start. Well, then do it. I think the moment's been and gone. Oh, maybe if you... If you meet someone. I did. Not all women are like Denise, Ken. No, thank God. Anyway, you're a better picker than I am, I'll give you that. Samir was a good bloke. And John seems to be, uh... Another good bloke. Anyway, uh... I hope you'll be very happy. Together, you deserve to be. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Ken. Oh, that'll be him. Right, well, I was going anyway. Hi. Hi. Ken's here. Hi. This now still not finished. It's been non-stop visitors all morning. Anybody would think I was flipping emigrating. Well, it shows how highly your friends think of you. Either that or they're making sure I really am going. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll be off anyway. Uh, hope the boob goes well. well. It's all under control. No glitches expected. Oh, he can't afford any glitches in his job. No. Right, well. Bye. They're driving me mad. So why stick it then? Well, I can't go till I've got my money, can I? Well, then tell them that you want it, it's yours. Yeah. She's not even two weeks old yet, though. Who? The baby pillock. Shannon. Shannon Jade. I thought it were Katie or something. Well, yeah, it is. Right, let's go. Dude, I'm off. I'll see you later. Oh, you went out. That's right. Recovered then, have we? <laughs> you don't know when she's well off that time. I can't stand this any longer. Oh, what's she done now? She keeps giving me digs about Katie not being mine. We had another row and midwife walked through in the middle of it. She didn't hear anything, did she? Not that she was supposed to know. But it's getting harder to take. She's an ungrateful little piece. Don't let her bug you. Chica can put up with I'm used to that. But I'm just so worried that she's going to change her mind. Oh, well, she won't do that. She's not that daft. She wants to cash. She don't want to get stuck with a kid. You don't see the way she looks at Katie. You can't fight nature, Gary. So what are you saying? That we give Katie back to her and let her get on with it? No. That we give Zoe the money and ask her to go. Sooner rather than later. Or else it'll be too late. She didn't last long in the job, I see. Natalie. Wasn't the right thing for her. Beneath her, you mean? Not what I heard. I heard she got fired. Yeah, well, either way, she's not there anymore. Well, the thing is, I'll look out of the girls Wednesday. We're going away. Where to? Does it matter? Bit of a break, that's all. Where to? Gran Canaria. Not a cheap B&B &B in Blackpool, then. Look, it wasn't my idea, Sal. Oh, next you'll be telling me you don't want to go. Poor little put-upon Kevin. The same poor little put-upon Kevin who only a few weeks ago said he couldn't even afford to pay for his own kid's keep. Natalie's foot in the bill. Natalie's pain. 
You're pathetic. Look, she got a settlement from her ex. Do you remember when we were happily married? Remember when I wanted to go out and get a job? Remember how you said no wife of mine goes out to work? I'm the breadwinner in this family. Now look at you. Natalie's toy boy waiting for handouts. Proud of yourself, are you? Look, so we just... Get out! Don't send me a postcard! You really going then? Can hardly be a surprise. Especially after this morning. I thought maybe we could work something out. Well, we can. You move in with me. I can't. You mean you won't? Chris, you and me living here just sort of happened. If we move into the flat together, it, it'd be making a decision. It's like making a statement. Yeah, that we're living together. So? So I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Under this roof, it's OK. Under another roof, 20 yards down the road, it's a different ball game. There's no need for sarcasm. You're just hiding behind words. If you wanted to do it, you just do it. It's as simple as that. Well? It's OK. I'll get the message. I won't ask you again. Is that my fault? Mostly mine. He's going. And you're not? No. Nope. I'm sorry. Liar. Well, he's too young. He's all wrong for you, but he obviously matters, so... I'm sorry. Endon's hurt. Same boat, eh? Actually, me and Sam are back on track. Oh, well, bully for you. That's all right, then. Hey, I'm not the one stopping you going with lover boy. No, I know. Well, do you want me to, um, carry you over the threshold? <laughs> Not unless you plan on giving yourself a hernia. Are you disparaging my manly physique, madam? No, just protecting my interests. <laughs> <laughs> John, what's wrong? I don't believe this. What is it? It's from Linda, my ex, telling me, in a word, that the house is in her name and she's taking possession. Well, she can't do that, can she? Well, she seems to think so. She's changed the blasted locks. The lousy, rotten... Oh, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I wanted this to be so special and I've really blown it for you, haven't I? Theatre. I'm so very sorry. It's not your fault. Come here. It's not your fault. What if we end up hating each other? Well, there is a door to this flat, and all you have to do is open it and walk out again. Easy as that. Well, isn't it? Not in my experience, no. I'd love you to come in, but I'm not trying to pressure you. If you don't want to, then. I understand. I don't want to. OK. But I will. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, else I'll never know, will I? And there's so many things in my life that I don't know about because I decided not to take the risk. I'm not sure if I can afford another. <laughs> yes. Well, well, I'll start packing then. <laughs> Now I'll have to tell you. Tell me what? Well, you know how Chris is moving out today? Mm -hmm. I'm going with him. Best of luck. Meaning you think I'm stupid? As a matter of fact, I do, yeah. Well, I like to do stupid things. And in between them, I do even more stupid things. Went to Mexico once, remember? At least this time it won't be so far to come back. Well, I always knew there'd come a time when the pair of you would spread your wings and fly the nest, at least. 
Knowing you together, I won't be worrying so much. Get lost. <laughs> She's not getting away with it. The agreement was I got the house, including the mortgage, and she got whatever savings we had. Well, she's obviously had second thoughts. I don't care what she's had. And I don't care what right she thinks she has over that house. What she doesn't have the right to do is humiliate me like that. Well, you always said she was unpredictable. Oh, she's a mad woman. Well, you seem for yourself now. I mean, all right, suppose she has convinced herself that she's had a raw deal. Why doesn't she come and talk to me about it? Write to me? Phone me? Oh, no. She has to sneak in and change the locks. Or two can play at that game. I'm going to go back to that house, and then I'm going to break in. And then I'm going to do exactly what she's done. Change the locks, stick a note on the door saying, up yours. You're not serious. <laughs> you just watch me. Give me a couple of hours, we'll have you moved in like we should have been doing last night. Uh, yeah, but, uh, hang on. What? Well, you break in, change the locks, move me in. Yeah. And you fly off somewhere, and I'm sat there waiting for this woman that you tell me is mad to turn up and start trying to smash her way in. Yes. No thanks. We can't let her dictate to us like that. Well, actually, I can, yes. Well, I'll do everything. I'm not asking you to climb in through any windows. Or no! I... Look at it from my point of view. If Linda's going to fight you for that house, it's the last place on earth I want to be. Fine then I will be humiliated. Well, don't be on my account. <laughs> I've lived through worse. At least I've still got this place. Chris wasn't due to move in till today, anyway. So what's going to happen? Well, this is just a temporary setback, isn't it? You're going to sell the house or whatever, and then we're going to try again, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. And Chris is just going to have to do the same as I'm doing and stop where he is for the time being. It's the fairest thing for her, Zoe. How do you work that out? Well, the longer she stays, the longer she'll have to get attached to little Katie. That can't be good for her, can it? The sooner she goes, the sooner she'll be able to forget about her. So we're doing all this for her sake, are we? No, I'm not saying that. But she's going to be leaving Katie with us anyway, isn't she? So we might as well get it over with. I think we should give it money today. And all right, we don't have to tell her to go straight away, but we can, well, you know, so that we understand if she wants to move on. OK. Well, this is what we agreed, Gary. If you don't want to do it, then say so. Oh, I want to do it. Good. Of course I do. It's evil, though, isn't it? And what's that supposed to mean? I'm taking a baby away from his mother. She wants to do this as well. Oh, I know. How many were her who suggested it? I know. It? Don't stop it from being evil, though. And you know that as well as I do. So let's be honest with one another, shall we? Even if we can't be honest with anybody else as far as this is concerned. Not if we'll live to be 100. See you then. Yeah, thanks, Des. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Oh, no. Look, I'm sorry. Wait. You'll have to go back. Why? So I'm not moving anymore. I can't. It's all had to be cancelled. Oh. But why? John's ex-wife has made a claim on the house and... Oh, I'm sorry. Are you buying that or what? I haven't decided yet. I suppose it's an honest answer. Rita... <clears throat> You're not dashing off straight after we close, are you? No. Why? Well, there's something I want to talk to you about, only I don't want to do it with people in the shop. Oh. Oh, Lord, a sister's here now. You could have waited. Oh, can you lend us some money? I'll pay back next week. It's always the same. Yeah, well, you've got a job. I do say you, I have one. Hello, Hi. Sally, love. I'm going to treat myself to a newspaper, I don't care. <laughs> you do right. Because you know what he's doing now, don't you? No. He's only gone on holiday to the Canaries. With his lady friend? Oh, he has to take her. She's the one who's paying. Well, shall I tell you something? I think he's the silliest man on this earth. I mean, when I look at you and I look at that trollop he's gone off with, mm. I think he's taken leave of his senses. Here, here. Thanks, but he can't be all that silly. He's the one who's going to be lying on a beach, isn't he? Shall I come across later and we'll have a real moan about him? <laughs> yeah, whenever you like, cos I'm not going anywhere. Right. See you later. Bye. Right, now, come on, you. You've got me worried. What do you want to talk to me about? Well, later. Well, is it personal? 
Financial? No. <laughs> Beauty tips. You think this outfit clashes with some supplements? Oh, <laughs> These and 20 ciggers. That are for me. Only she's paying. So do you not get on, then? Never mind, didn't get on. We didn't get in. Deidre's gone back on a deal. Oh, be fair. It's only because she has to. Something's gone wrong with her boyfriend's house, so she can't move out. She can't move out. We can't move in. Yes, she can move out. What you mean to say is that she won't. She's refusing to. Can't, won't. Point is, she's stopping where she is. We can hardly go around and throw her out, can we? Hmm. So what's happening, then? Moving back here, are you, the pair of you? No. No, that's well, you can do what you like, but I'm not moving back in here, no way. Though I will leave my stuff in here, if that's all right, mate. Well, I don't mind at all. Where are you going? I've got to go out. I need to think. Clear my head. I feel so stupid. We walk out, we walk straight back in again. Yeah, well, don't worry <laughs> on my account. You're welcome back any time, whether it's one of you or both of you. Thanks, you've been really nice. Tell that to Samantha, will you? Oh, I suppose I'd better go after him. Stop him throwing bricks through Deirdre's window. <laughs> By the way, Zoe, me and Gary were talking earlier and we think we're all right with our visitor now. I mean, they've accepted that Gary's the father and, uh, well, they think that Kate has been well looked after. Don't you think, Gary? I do, yeah. So, what we thought were, rather than keep you hanging around, we'll give you the money, like we promised, and then you can take off whenever you like. I mean... You want to get on with the rest of your life, don't you? You don't want to be stuck here with us longer than necessary. Well, will I be able to come back and see you? Of course you can. Yeah? I mean, it is your... Of course you can. So, shall we do that then? Give you the money now? Gary. Oh, yeah. Right. Here we are, Zoe. £2,000. All in twenties. So that means hundred of them. I know we've given you bits and pieces as we've gone along, but... Well, you've been so good, we thought we'd give you the whole £2,000 as a bit of a bonus for you. What are you going to do with it? That's so his business. I know. Look after yourself, won't you? Don't go flashing it about. Well, she won't. She's smarter than that. So have you thought any more where you're going to go? Well, not really. I... I suppose I've got used to living here. And we've got used to having you, but... Well, the deal is... You know what the deal is. But I will be able to come back just sometimes and see you. Of course you will. Yeah. OK. Well, thanks. Right, now you, come on, talk to me. Well, I, uh, I don't know how to say this. Uh, well, with, uh, without making it sound ungrateful, but... Um, well, I've decided to hand me notice in. Do you know, I knew it was going to be that. I, I always thought I'd carry on till you decided to finish and then we could finish together, but... Oh, I've just had enough. And with Derek going, it, it's made me question a lot of things and... I just feel it's time to go. I don't know what to say. I... I think... Um, I'm just, just young enough to try something else, and, and not only that, but live somewhere else. Anywhere in particular? Yes, well, I've, I've always liked the Lake District, so, uh, especially around the, uh, the Cartmel area, so I, th I thought maybe I'd look there first. Yeah. But you're not thinking of looking for another job? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, I mean, if I've got a spare room, well, I could probably offer a bed and breakfast. I wouldn't mind doing that as a sort of sideline. So I can always come and stop? You've got to promise me you'll do that. So, after how many years? Twenty-five. 
Shoulder to shoulder, <laughs> dishing out toffees, cigs, newspapers, cards. The time's come. <laughs> That picture today is rather different. I know. Anyway, i better get going. I want to call in on Linda on the way to the airport, see if I can renegotiate her way back into my own house. Well, if you can't, promise me you'll come back here. You sure? Of course. In fact, I hope she's really awful to you. I hope she never lets you near that house again, then you'll have to come back here. You know, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. So when shall I expect you? Around midnight. Great. Hey, and you tell Linda we don't care what she's done. We're still going to move in together. It's just going to be here instead of at your house. OK. <laughs> uh, pints and a dry white wine, please. Sir. Ah, now then. A little bird tells me that you're holding your reception at the bell staff. Yeah, mm -hmm. there we are. Ah, oh, you did a right. You did a right to ignore the rumours. Innocent till proved guilty. Mind you, you'll have had that drummed into you, won't you? Well, if you Ignore him. He's just trying to scare us into having the reception here. You find us very competitive? No, we won't, because we won't even be asking. No, come on. All I'm saying is, she pushes that little baby about like it's her own. Who else is she going to push a baby about? Oh, you know what I mean, Mark. Yeah, but now, wait a minute. Have I got this right? The baby actually belongs to the girl who's living there. Yeah, she's got it dead right, right Ken. But why is she living there, huh? Oh, come on, Audrey. Don't get all coy on us now. What you're trying to say is... You think it's Gary's baby? Gary's baby? No, it's not really, Ken. This is just Audrey trying to get herself sued for life. Oh, Martin, don't be silly. Well... Anyway, I wonder if Samantha knows. Knows what? Uh, well, we were just saying... You were. No, sh You know that little baby uh, that Gary and Judy are looking after? Mm. Well, does anybody know who the father is? Mm. Well, I suppose the mother does, but I don't. Oh, no. come on, Samantha. You can tell us, honestly, it won't go any further. I don't know. And I'm not sure I want to know, anyway. Oh, no. Who'd like another drink? Oh, yeah. Go on, Sammy. Hiya. Hi. Hi. Two pints, please, Alec. Right, you are. I'm not moving back into that house. No, well, it won't be moving back, will it? Because we never moved out. We tried, but <laughs> we didn't quite make it. Well, mentally, I've moved out. Mentally, I don't live there anymore. So where mentally do you live? Anywhere I like. Oh, yeah. Look what I've got. <gasps> Where'd you get that from? From them. I told you just what they pay me for Katie. Hiya. Oi, me and Zoe are talking. It's stuff you're not old enough for. What sort of stuff? Just get lost, will you? Yeah, right. But don't ask me to lend you any money again. Don't worry, I won't. How much do you owe her? Twelve quid she owes me. Here. Right, now get lost. I said get lost. Thanks. Of course now they want rid of me. It's like, here's your money and when are you going? So when are you going? Hiya. Hiya. Glass of red, please, and uh... Oh, I'll have a glass of red as well, please, love. Two of those then, please. Hi. Hi. You uh, may have noticed I'm still here. Oh, no shame in that. I'm here all the time. Uh, no, no, I mean, my move has had to be delayed. Apparently, his wife still has some claim on the house. What, one of those ex-husband and wife things? Yeah. Mm, very cool. Right, it's my round. Put it out for me, thanks. No, me neither, love. I'm off in a minute. Thanks, sweetheart. Oh, OK. My mum I'm really close to. Uh -huh. But my dad... Not so close to. Well, he used to compare me to my brother, who's, like, really brilliant and who's going to, like, take over the world and stuff, whereas me, I was just this stupid, messy little kid. We've well, changed a bit since then. Mm. I was impressed when I took over the salon, though. I don't know, I just don't know about this meal. Thing is, you want to know what the thing is? What? He never wanted to move in with me anyway. Oh, that's not true. And now Deirdre's giving you the excuse you can go back and stay with Des, which is what you wanted to do anyway. I didn't, but I will do after this. Right, well... We'll both get what we want then, won't we? Hang on. So, we get there and his keys don't work and there's a note on the front door from his wife saying that she's changed the locks and put the house up for sale. No! Well, this morning he was all for ignoring her and breaking in, but I told him I don't want any part of that. Oh, you don't? So, I'm back where I started. The only difference is he's having to move in with me because he can't get back in his house, can he? Oh, clever. 
<laughs> well, you have to be, haven't you? <laughs> oh, no, I did feel sorry for him, though. I mean, there he is, trying to move me in, and his ex-wife puts the kibosh on it. Hey, do you think that's why she did it? Because of you? Oh, I'm positive it is. I don't think he realises that, though. He thinks it's all to do with money. Oh, always do, don't they? Men. <laughs> Whoever he is. Can I tell you something, Audrey? But you've got to promise you won't tell anyone. Of course I won't, no. Well, I think you've already guessed, haven't you? Who the father is. It's Gary. Oh. Now, don't breathe the word. Of course I won't, no. Do you know, I think you're very brave, Judy. So what happens now? I mean, the mother's going to go on living with you, is she? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Gonna take each day as it comes. Well, you have to, don't you? I mean, there's no rule book for this sort of situation, is there? Right, well, best get on. Don't like to keep her out yeah. too long. Bye bye. Bye. Rita! Hi. Audrey, I'm sorry I didn't get to have that drink with you. What? Oh, no, never mind about that. Oh. Rita, the things I could tell you. Well, I'm being told all sorts today. What's this about? No, well, I can't, actually, because I've promised, but you wouldn't believe it anyway. Mm. Oh. So what happens when Kevin comes back? I'd have found somewhere else to live by then. So stay here till you find somewhere else? No! Oh. Shoot. That was a mistake. He should Jesse. have possibly been a bit green. He's going to camp out in the garage. And you're not going with him? No, I am not. Which, of course, proves his point, faulty logic, that I'm glad the move fell through because I never wanted to go in the first place. Hmm. And did you? I was willing to. I should think that's all that mattered. Yes, but when Deirdre said you couldn't... Oh, I don't know, you're as bad as him. One minute she's knocking on my door, practically begging for any crumbs that me and the kids can spare off our table, and the next minute they've got at Canaries for two weeks. <sighs> Makes you wonder, doesn't it? When I think how cautious Kevin used to be about everything. Mm. Like, I could never get any furniture on credit, never mind buy it. Couldn't even switch it round without having to talk about it for three days first. Well, I think she's the one pulling the strings, isn't she? Oh, I'm sure she is. Telling him when he can breathe and when he can't. Mm. Hey, I'll tell you what, Rita, it's made me wonder. A bit like that with me and Kevin. I mean, do folk used to say, oh, she's the one pulling the strings in that marriage? What, meaning that you that were I so... dominated Kevin like we're now saying that she does? No. No, of course not, love, no. You all right, Rita? You seem a bit on edge. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just that I won't be able to stop long. It's um, something I've got to see to. And Nixon has to... Did he turn that uh, down? Backwards. She's just gone off. Just as went round corner. Oh, good. Do you want a cup of tea? Please. Oh, I best tell you. I told Audrey Roberts that you were the father. No, I know she'd been guessing. Yeah, well, she was guessing again, so I thought, right, lady. I swore her to silence and I said, yeah, you're right. Gary is the father. You swore Audrey Roberts to silence? Exactly. So she's going to tell everyone, isn't she? Which is what we want. Do we? Yeah, I suppose we do. It's not going to do my reputation much good, though, is it? Some of the women are going to want to lynch me. Yeah, well, they might at first. But then they'll think, no, because you're doing the right thing. You're facing up to your responsibilities. Oh, we don't live to regret this. We will. Gary. Of course we will. It's frightening. I'm waking up in the night and I'm sweating over this. I am frightened, Jude. Well, you've no need to be. This is the worst part. Then Zoe will go and... People get fed up talking about it. Then it'll be like she's just ours. What do you think? I know. Because it feels like that to me already. She's mine. Mine and yours. Hiya. Hi. I'm going out with Leanne tonight, it's all right, innit? Yeah. 
Uh, do you want some dinner? No, I'm all right, thanks. I'll get some later. Oh, and, um, you know we were talking about me going? Yeah. Well, um, I've made up my mind. I'm gonna go tomorrow. Tomorrow? I think it's best that way. I don't have to keep seeing her. Well, do you want me to do some washing or ironing for you? No, I'm all right, thanks. Is it okay if I have a bath? Yeah, should be enough hot water. And neither of us even asked where she's going. Why? Because we don't care. Could be the next street, could be Timbuktu, anywhere. As long as she's out of here, we don't have to watch her sneaking a look at her own baby. It's my afternoon for visiting. I've done Sally, now I'm doing you. Well, I was half expecting you. You were? Yeah, I thought, well, either she'll come this afternoon or she didn't hear this afternoon, then she'll come this evening and ask me to go out for a drink and she'll try to persuade me to change my mind. Well, I'm not going to, Rita, not this time. Well, I'll tell you something, shall I? You're wrong. I'm not going to try and persuade you to change your mind, Mavis. For one thing, I don't think you should. I think it's like you said, you want to do something else with your life while you can. Well, yes. Only that got me thinking. That and what you said about you thought we'd finish up together. We still can. Why don't I pack it in as well? Sell off the whole shooting match and come and help you to run your B&B &B up in the lakes. Would you have me? Oh. <laughs> Where are you going to meet? Just said this one tonight. I'll give you a lift, all right? Yeah, thanks. How well do you know these so-called mates? As well as you can know anyone, really. Because when you've got money, people crack on the mates when they're not. They don't know I've got it. Well, they don't know how much I've got. What are you going to do? In the future. Dunno. Well, you could use some of that money to make yourself a future. How? Well, you could go to college for a start, help you find a job. I hated school. Well, just because you were thick at school doesn't mean you don't get a second chance. You yeah, said I was thick, I just didn't like it. Anyhow, you sound like my dad or something. Why are you bothered? Because I'm bothered. Because I care about what happens to you. No, you don't. You just feel guilty because of what you're doing. If you thought it was going to be all right, it'd make you feel better, wouldn't it? How can you be so sure, eh? What? They're going to let you come home early. Because a couple of lads said they'd cover for me. I really don't want to go for this meal on my own, I'll own. Oh, is it going to be that heavy? I don't know, but even if there is a massive outbreak of serious crime all over the north of England... I shall be home early, I promise. OK. Goodbye. Hiya. Morning, Sal. Having swanned off and dropped you in it as well as everybody else. No. I can manage with the work we've got on, no problem. So you've been staying here? Just last night. Things are not going well down there. Oh, what behind you? No, it is. So where are you gonna go up? I haven't thought yet. Well, there's always our couch. You're very welcome to that. Oh, thanks, Sal, but I couldn't really. Right, that's settled then. Hey, bring your stuff over after work. Thanks. Is Zoe really off? Well, I'm giving her a lift to her mates in a bit. It's going to be our first night as a proper family. Me, you and Katie. I'm going to pack in my job at the Rovers. I'm the arcade. I want to spend all my time with her, Gary. Hang on, hang on. If you pack your jobs in, then we're going to be living off my wage. Yeah. Well, we've got a young baby and young babies cost money. And we've got the loan to pay off. Well, I'll get another job in a couple of months. How do you know there's going to be jobs then? Well, there isn't there, if you're not fussy about what you do. Thank you very Thank much. You. Bye. Bye. Be there.
The fella from the estate agent says the cabin could be a little gold mine. <laughs> Mind you, they do come out with stuff like that, don't they? You see, I'm torn between Keswick and Grasmere. They're both lovely, aren't they? Oh, I don't think so, Rita. We well, did say the lakes. Oh, yes, but they're far too busy. Well, isn't that what we want? Well, yeah, but I think they'll be over-catered for in the bed and breakfast department. Now, I was thinking more of the Furnet and the Cartmel Peninsulas because that's an area of really wild beauty. And I think it'll attract a, well, a more select type of guest. And what makes you think they'll want to stay with the likes of us? Well, they'll know that we are of their kind. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying people around here aren't very nice. Mm. Thanks, love. But you see, they don't want much from us. We are capable of a much better quality of service. Of course we are. <laughs> hey, up. Hiya. Where have you been? Next door but one, that's where I live. Hey. It's just that we haven't seen you around. Well, I haven't been anywhere. Fancy a pint at dinner? I'd love one, but I've got to get things for... You know, for Nipper. Oh, they've got you well shackled. How is the youngin? She's beautiful. No, she really is. She's bonny. Doesn't it keep you awake? Well, yeah, but it's part and parcel, isn't it? Yeah, well, don't worry. The older they get, the quieter they become. Don't they, Janice? <laughs> I'll see you. See ya. See ya. There you go. What? That is a smitten man. Smitten? He's the father of that girl's kiddie. It's written all over his face. Come on. Okay, they're out there taking pictures of your shop. Never. No, I missed. He's still there, yeah. Can you keep a secret? Oh, Rita, how dare you ask? News agents of the year, me and Mavis. Cabin's going to be in all the papers. Really? No. <sighs> Actually, he's from the estate agents. I'm selling up. Oh, why? Well, we're going into business together, Rita and me. As what? Well, we're going to buy a B and B in the lakes. Bed and breakfast, you two. Yes. Oh no, I can't see that. I mean, one of you banging the gong and the other one wheeling in the host trolley with the tea and fancies. Oh, I'm sorry, but I mean, you're hardly experienced in the catering trade, are you? Well, we can cook. We know how to run a house and look after folk. That's all you need. But, I mean, bed and breakfast, isn't that a bit tacky? What do you mean, tacky? Well, you never know who's going to turn up, do you? I mean, all those seedy travelling salesmen who want folk out for a proper <sighs> old time. You're thinking of a boarding house or a hostel. Our accommodation will be of a very high standard, more of a, a country house hotel at the upper end of the market, actually, Audrey. Well, uh, Small country house hotel. <laughs> hey, it was a brilliant night. Yeah, them lads were all right. Mmm, a bit on the young side for me, though. I like them more mature and with bigger. Bigger what? <laughs> bigger wallets is what I was going to say, you and your dirty mind. Hey, there's no reason why we couldn't do it again. You could come over once you've moved. I can't, really. Well, all right, then. We could meet up in town. Yeah, of course, yeah. Oh, you're going to miss Katie. Shannon Jade. I thought her name was Katie. A real name, Shannon. Isn't it Shannon? Hey. Do you know Aldi? I've never held one before. Oh, look at her, she's tiny. They are. Oh. <laughs> oh look at her, she's lovely. I'd like a baby of my own one day. Never had anything of my own. So we aren't you gonna miss her? Nah. Well, I thought. I thought I wouldn't, but, well, now I'm going, I'm, I'm a bit confused. Here, give me. Well, why don't you take the money and take Shannon? I can't, Leanne. I promised him. Promised? Why should you promise the mallets out? I've taken money off him now. Right, so, yeah, you've taken the money. Is that a word against yours? Yeah, and Gary's registered as a dad. Yeah, and you're registered as a mum. They come after me. So what if they did? Hey, what could they do? Oh, Rita, I mean, how will you cope? Eh? Not Mavis. She'll drive you round the bend. I mean, 
Here you can go home of an evening, but I mean, a bed and breakfast, that's all the clock round, isn't it? She isn't that bad. In fact, it wasn't until she said she was off that I realised how much I'd miss her. That's not why you're going, though, is it? No, Audrey. No, you get to a point in life, don't you, where you weigh things up? I just have. And there's more to make me go than keep me here, quite frankly. And it's only Cartmel. It's only an hour and a half up the motorway. You and Alf will have to come for a dirty weekend. Oh, some hope of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got me wondering, though, you know, Rita. Me and Alf uh, never really fitted in here. Well, Alfie, maybe, but not me. I always thought destiny had somewhat more for me than Weatherfield. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Somewhere exotic. Definitely overseas. I mean, tropical, even. Mm -hmm. The last time I saw you, lady, you were going to tell me something. Was it? Mm. Oh, yeah. That little baby at the mallets. Zoe, I think the mother's name is. Well, mm. I found out who the father is for definite. Go on. Gary, Gary Mallet. Oh, not again, Audrey. Listen, Judy Mallet told me herself. Why do you think she told you, Audrey? You'd be surprised, Rita. People do confide in me, you know. That's my advice and that. Because they, they trust me to be discreet. Zoe? No. We were only upstairs five minutes and when I came down they'd gone. Hey, what's up? Zoe and Katie, she's gone and taken Katie with her. Oh, no, she, she wouldn't have gone and left her car. Is her bag upstairs? Yeah, but she wouldn't take that, would she? Not if she were doing a runner. Go after her, Gary. Well, go after her, were. And if I could find her, what could I do? Judy thought that you'd, uh... What? Run off? Yeah. Thanks. I was just saying to her to Leanne, actually. What have you done with that? Oh, yeah, yes, thanks, Vera. Very nice. Very nice, you've hardly touched it. Stick it back in the microwave and dish it up again. Don't you like hot pot? Uh, yes, Vera, it's delicious, but couldn't we ring the changes just a bit? What do you mean? Well, I mean, something foreign. Are you sure that Mexican mince didn't go down very well? Uh, no, well, I, I, um, this cookery class will give you some ideas, eh? <laughs> when does it start? This week. Yeah, you're right. Happen it might. <laughs> <sighs> Pastels for pleasure. Eh? That was that evening class I'd enrolled for. I was looking forward to it, but I've managed to change it to cookery at the last minute. Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah, well, I think the more extensive we can make our menus, the better. Right. Anyway, I've asked the estate agent to come round. He said it won't take him long to measure up. It's all very cold and, and matter-of-fact selling houses, isn't it? I mean... They seem to forget that it, each one is somebody's home. Or was. Well, I'll come with you. I'd best get back as well. <laughs> Ta-da, Alex. Oh, oh bye, -bye. Bye, Rita. bye bye So where'd you wash and things? Well, we've got all mod cons in the garage. We've got sink, loo, phone, cable TV. You can't stop there forever. Don't worry, I'm sorted for the short term. What? Sally's offered me a couch. Chris? What? You can't stay there. Why? That place is a war zone at the moment. You can't live with Sally and work with Kevin. You'll end up taking sides. Not necessarily. Or worse, get caught in the crossfire. You all set? Yep. Yeah. Is that all you've got? It's what I came with. Do you want a minute on your own? Could I? Of course. Gary! Just give her a minute. 
not going to do anything stupid. You can watch it from here if you like. It's not that. I just don't want to give any more time to change your mind. Right then, Shan and Jade. I have to go now. I don't want you to think I don't love you, because I do. It's just that I can't look after you. I got you this. It ain't out much, but every time you play with it, you might think of me. I really do have to go now. Be a good little girl, won't you? You will look after her, won't you? Of course. Right. I'll see you then. See ya. Come on, we'd better get off. You look very smart. I just want your parents to like me as much as you do, mm. for your sake. Have you told them everything about me? Yeah. Have you told them how sensitive I am to your needs? Oh, yeah, yeah. I said, uh, I said you're dead average. <laughs> you what? You what? <laughs> Love's young dream, eh? Mm. What was it like? <laughs> you're never too old, Ken. So, still nothing on the job front. Oh, it's the old story. When you don't want something, it falls into your lap, and when you're desperate, it never does. <laughs> you, uh, you were kind enough to offer if anything came up on Sunlanders. Well, it hasn't yet, Ken, but I promise you, when it does, you'll be top of my list. Unless... No, no, you... No, go on. Well, I wouldn't be able to pay you very much. What's the job, Deirdre? Just picking somebody up from the airport. It's a boring taxi job, and I know you've done your time as a cabbie. No, Deirdre. I'd be very interested. OK, fine. Right. No, you see, there comes a time in everyone's life when you have to accept you're not going to set the world on fire. And you finally settle for everything you landed with. Well, right. Let's brought all this on, Audrey. Mavis is leaving to open a guest house in the Lake District. Mm. And Rita has decided to sell up and join her. Is she? I mean, totally unrealistic. I know, but try telling them that. I said, you should take a leaf out of me and Alfie's book. I mean, we've learned to be satisfied with the little we've got. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I don't know. I think it's a cracking idea. Oh, Martin, it'll be disaster. They'll drive each other mad within days. No, I don't think so. I think they'll make a real go of it. I mean, neither of them got any ties here now, have they? No, going somewhere different, doing something different, could be the best thing that's ever happened to them. Well, I'm happy to have Chris back any time, you know, if he wants. He won't want. And even if he did, nobody'd know about it anyways. That's stubborn. Only I don't want to be the one who carries the can if things go wrong between you two. You won't, Des. What happened between me and Chris is about us. It's not about you. And who knows? If Deirdre's hadn't fallen through, it might have all worked out fine. Yeah, but maybe it wouldn't have. You have a relationship with somebody and it's all going perfectly well and then you go and muck it up by moving in with them. No, the best people to live with are those you're not having a relationship with. Look at me and Curly. Look at you and Des. Come on through, Chris. And just don't be stuffed there for now. You got to this book today. Hey, Rosie, leave Chris alone. He's been working all day and he's tired. No, I'm not. Here we go. Why don't you just tell me what happens in the pictures, eh? <laughs> Chris, you're very welcome to stop here as long as you like. Well, I hope I won't be in your way. I won't be around much, but uh, as long as I can get my head down, I'll be fine. You can be around as much as you want to be. Are you going to live here now instead of Dad? Rosie, come on, it's time for bed. Come on, sweetheart. And you too. Come on. Come on, Sophie. Come on. I've just made an appointment to see the one that's most promising. Oh, God. <laughs> They won a holiday award up there last year. Oh. It says the warm and balmy climate has earned it the title of Cumbria's Riviera. Mm. <laughs> you know, perhaps we could specialise in traditional Lakeland recipes. Like Kendall mint cake? Oh, I'm thinking more of goose giblet pie and sheep's head broth. Well, they'll be queuing round the block. <laughs> hey, we're closed. It's Alec. 
Charlie, we're closed. Uh, yeah, yes, I, I know. I, I didn't want to buy anything. I, uh, I just wanted a, a word in, in, in private. Uh, Would you mind, Mavis? Now. Cheers. 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 My father and I would very much like to pay for the wedding. Oh. Right, well, well, it's all been paid for. Everything. Well, you can just give us the bill then. But we've... All right then. Um, great, thank you. That'd be really good of you. Your Auntie Eileen and your Auntie Joan have been asking about dates. I didn't think they'd want to come all this way in November. Of course they would, for you. Well, we just wanted a small do after the wedding. But I've told you, we're happy to pay for a bigger do. That is very kind of both of you. We'd be delighted to accept, wouldn't we, Finn? Yeah. Have you completely lost your marbles? Not that I'm aware of, I. But, but is it right that you're selling up and going with Dolly Daydream That's in not there fair. to start a guest house? B and B, actually, Alec. And yes, it is. So? Well, it's suicide. Starting a business like that at the end of the season. Well, it'll give us time to refurbish, get the place the way we want it. Mavis Wilton, they'll have you committed after a week with her. Actually, it's no skin off your nose what I do, Alec. I mean, you're talking to me as if you're still my agent or summit. Not be the same with you gone. I do care about you, you know. Oh, I know. All them tricks you've pulled over the years. Yeah, well, they say there's always a bond between old enemies, don't they? The bigger those girls get, the more energy they seem to get. When's it going to end? Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. I need this. I wonder what it's like in the Grand Canaria. Oh, well, uh... Kevin's probably got sunstroke and Natalie a dicky tummy and they probably haven't had any sleep because of the eight guys that are living next door. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I don't feel as though I'd last for months. Yeah, it's great to see you with a smile on your face. Yeah, everyone's been so careful not to mention Kevin and Natalie all the time. Treating me like I'm some sort of invalid. And I just have to accept that it's happened and I just wish other people would accept it. Yeah, well, things like that take time, but, uh, you look as though you're on the mend. Yeah. Yeah, I think I am. <laughs> I never imagined how pleased I'd be off your own over marrying a copper. <laughs> but I'm very pleased, darling. We never did like that Steve MacDonald. Trouble if ever you saw it. You didn't even know him. Well, you will be interested to know that whole family is a bad bunch. Well, it doesn't surprise me. Mm. Oh, come on, that's not very fair. That's Fiona for you, look. She sees the good in everybody. You've got a grand lass there, Alan. You'd better look after her. Don't worry. I intend to. I'm very proud of you, Fiona. You've made your own way. Started your own business. You've grown into a smart and beautiful woman. Are you here? I want you to have the best. Here's to a great wedding and a wonderful marriage. Cheers. 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 How'd it go? It, it was all right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, its place is all right. Well, at least she's off the streets, and with uh, without our money, she should stay like that, eh? I wash her. Hey? Zoe, when you left her. Well, she was fine. She was fine, yeah. Well, she's a kid, isn't she? They don't stay down for long. She'll get over it. Don't worry about her, eh? Give her here. Oh, have you seen her arms going? Yeah. You know, I think she's got natural rhythm. Gary. Yeah, she's got the makings of a good drummer. It'd be good, that. A band fronted by a female drummer. Oh, well, she's got right name for it. Katie Mallet. Yeah. I'll try her on Kate later. My daughter's going to do better than a drummer. Our daughter? Yeah. Our daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. Give us a quarter of a humbug. It'll give me something to do in the car. Yeah. 
Right, now you remember all the details, won't you? I will do my best. And you know that my cookery class starts tonight? Oh, tonight, is it? Yes, so oh. if you're late back, I might already be there. But mm. I could always see you later in the room. Right. Oh, well, you're, you're tripping off somewhere. Morning, Alec. Anywhere nice? Cartmel, going viewing a property. Oh, you're determined, then. He thinks we're daft. Nay, no, nay, no, if you two want to spend your twilight years growing forgetful together in the middle of nowhere, who am I to pour cold water over it? He's jealous. No, no, if that's what you want. <laughs> I just hope you don't regret it when you get there. Right, I'm off. Listen, if I'd known you were going, I'd have offered to drive you. Why? It's an outing. Well, you can still come. I mean, we can't go together because one of us has to stay and look after the shop. Oh, well, well, I'd have to get my jacket. Well, I can hang on for a minute, but look sharp. Uh, right, right. I shan't be two minutes. Right. I shan't need the paper. Well, that's nice, isn't it? He gets to go and I don't. Well, I hope you're not going to let him put you off. He's good at reading maps. Rubbish. It's always me that has to do all this. Here, Alec. Uh, listen, I, I, I'm in two minds about this cookery class tonight. Oh, you'll enjoy it when you get there, Vera. Yeah, but there might be somebody there that knows me. Well, what if there is? Well, they might tell Betty. Look, I, I'm, I'm just popping into town. Well, there could be some awkward questions, you know. Oh, I'm making excuses. I hated school, you know. I hated them teachers. They were always picking on me. <laughs> Mind you, they won't do it now, you know. Oh, no. I'd give as good as I got, don't you worry. Uh... Come on, answer the question. You'd rather sleep on Sally's couch than stay with me. You know that's not the point. No, but it is a point. Angie, do you really want to discuss this out here? Well, there's nowhere else to discuss it. It's the only place I see you these days. Right, well, I'll be at the Rovers at dinner time. Right, I'll see you there then. I'm lucky. Right, oh, well. we'll stick to the first version. Uh, we got her this morning and she disappeared. Right. We didn't know where she was. Right. And we ain't got a clue where she's got. Right. Not a clue. Right. right. Morning. Hiya. How are you, Gary? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, only we've had a bit of. Do you want to come through? Good morning. Morning. Good morning, Katie. And how's Mum? Where's Zoe? Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. you see, we. She's we... gone. Zoe. She's gone where? We don't know. She's disappeared. We got up this morning and she just won't hear. Well, she'll be back, won't she? It's not ten o'clock yet. She knows I'm coming. Let me have a look at Katie. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Katie. Hello. Uh, you see, the thing is, you, you know telling you that she'd been drinking and that she had no interest in the baby? Well, uh, she'd been threatening to take off as well, hadn't she? Yeah, yeah, she had. And it's not like her to be up and out at this time. I mean, she doesn't normally surface till around nine-ish, does she? No, no, she doesn't. No, and we wouldn't have known that she'd gone, only a bedroom door wide open and there were Katie laying there crying. Really? Yeah. She were all on her own. And I can't say I'm surprised, to be honest with you. I mean, it were really getting to roll this, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Poor kid. Now, her name's Mrs. Aristidou. Her English is very good, so I'm told. So just make her feel at home, and she wants drop in at the Midland Hotel. All right. And here's your 15 quid. Oh, thank you very much. So, uh, how do I know which one is her? Oh, you have to hold a card up with her name on it. You're kidding. No, no. Here, I've made one up for you. Oh, what if she doesn't see me? Well, just make sure you stand near the front. I think I'm going to feel silly. Why? Just... Pretend you're in a James Bond film or something. Oh, I think that'll make it worse. Oh, if it's any consolation, Ken, I'm really grateful to you for doing this. Well, I just hope your boyfriend doesn't see me. Ah, uh, unlikely. He's flying to Cape Town. Oh, right now. All right, he's flying to Cape Town. I'm topping up to the airport for 15 quid. Oh. See you later. See ya. She's just had a baby. She needs the aftercare. That's half of what I'm here for. Yeah, we know that. Do you know where her parents live? Uh, not a clue. Or any of her relatives? Well, she never bothered with them, as far as we knew. No. Nope. Well, what about other friends? Well, we never met any. Had you had an argument? No. No, it was not like that. 
We knew she wasn't happy generally, but, well, we did our best for her. Whereabouts does she come from, do you know? Not really. So, you didn't really know a great deal about this girl. You got pregnant then, eh, Gary? Gary made a mistake. We've more than made up for it. You seem to be doing a good job. This little one's doing fine. Yeah, well, I don't mind looking after her. Not at all. In fact, I've grown very fond of her, actually. I can tell. Will she have to go into care or anything? Care? When she's got a daddy here? Certainly not. And what about Zoe? Gonna have to get on to social services again. If she needed help medically, I'm sure she'd come forward. Because she was never backwards at coming forward. As Gary knows, don't you? Hmm. When she shows up, tell her to stay put right here. And ring me. I'm responsible for her. We will. OK. You have a very understanding wife, Gary. Only me. Hiya. Right, come in. I bought a hat. I'm in the car, so I thought I'd pop out this way and show it you. All right, I'm just making a sandwich. Are you hungry? What's that pub like opposite? Do they do food? It's all right. Let me treat you. Go on. I fancy a gin and tonic. What do you think? Um, it's very... I mean about going to the pub. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, sure. I can't remember the last time I bought a hat. Can't remember the last time I wore one. Must have been our Collins wedding. But I think I must have borrowed one of somebody else because I don't remember buying one. It's very nice. It suits you. Alison Asquith. She married a policeman. Who? I was at school with her. He was a very smart fellow. We were all very impressed. For impressed, read jealous. Turned out he used to knock her about. They're divorced now. Mum, Alan doesn't knock me about. No, I don't suppose he does. But something's not right, is it? I thought it was you. Oh, hello, Ken. I was just... You said you were flying to Cape Town today. Oh, yeah, I, I am. Well, I was. It's been cancelled. Oh, oh. Yeah, I was just killing a bit of time. Yeah, they often keep the nicer patterns on the bottom that you don't see on display. Do they? So I uh, always look there first. Oh. oh. Yeah, I often kill time here, looking around the shops. What's this? Oh, uh, oh I'm uh, just meeting someone from Athens. Uh, it's a favour for Deirdre. Oh, right. Well, Arrivals is back along there. Yes, I know. I'm early. <laughs> I'm killing time, too. <laughs> right, right. Anyway, nice to see you. Yes. Yes, and you. Bye, then. Right. Bye-bye. Hello, yes, uh, it's uh, John Lindsay here. Can I speak to Deirdre, please? Right. OK, uh, well, can I give a message? Can you tell her that my flight to Cape Town has been cancelled and I'll, um, I'll see her at her flat later tonight? Do you think it's a bit odd? What? Well, OK, I mean, she wants him to sell the house for whatever reason, that's fair enough, but, well, trying to lock him out. That's nutty. What's he meant to do? Yeah, well, I get the impression she is a bit, uh, you know... Ah. Well, he's even nuttier then for letting her get away with it. Well, you know, my theory... Now, it sounds to me as if she's a bit of a handful. Yeah, but he should stand up to her. He's necking a rod for his own back and it's you that'll suffer. Well, it is. I mean, what about his clothes? Where are they? Are they all still locked in the house? I don't know. He hasn't said. The more you think about it, it's mad, isn't it? Your dad thinks he's smashing. You never <laughs> stopped talking about him all the way home. It's a first. However, it isn't your dad that's marrying him, is it? I thought you liked him. 
I do. I think he's charming. Yeah, he is very, and he's kind, and he's thoughtful, and I love him. Well, why don't you look happier? Oh, we've had his ups and downs. Do you argue a lot? No, not really. You mustn't let him bulldoze you into something you don't want. He doesn't, and I won't. The only reason I'm bothered, the only reason I'm asking is because a mixed marriage is damned hard work. I know. And if you're not 100% sure, it's not something I'd advise anybody to enter into lightly. That's all. Mum, I love him. And he loves me. And we want to be together. Do you love him as much as you loved Steve? I don't know. Who cares? This is different. I'm older and I'm wiser. This is better. Steve, I've, I've outgrown Steve. Why are you bringing Steve up? It's the only thing I could think of. Because I think you were more fond of Steve than you like to admit. No, look. If if things seem a bit... whatever, right, it, it's because we had a, a bit of a fallout a couple of weeks back and... What about? Well, it doesn't really matter what it was about, but it frightened me. It made me realise just how much I loved him and how awful it'd be if he wasn't there. It just made me a bit anxious, that's all. Well, that's no way to be. I can't help it. I love him. Hey, Wasn't well, that Steve's dad? Hello. Hello. Fiona's mum. I think we met once before when she was thick with your Steve. Yeah, I remember. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You're just up visiting the wee girl then, eh? Yes, making plans for the big day. She was trying to have a little hole in the corner affair. Hardly. I don't know why. I don't know what she was frightened I'm of. I'm not frightened of anything. We thought she must be ashamed of us. Ashamed of something, anyway. Right, well, I'll tell you what, I'll leave the Perriers together then, shall I? Nice to see you. See you again. Bye. Is he invited? He's a nice fella, isn't he? Well, I must say, it's a very pleasant part of the world. You know, I could first set my heart on this. Wonder what they do for entertainment round here, after they've cut the toenails. <laughs> Gaze at the belly buttons. You'll not put me off. Will you make an offer? Oh, I shall have to consult with Mavis. I mean, she'll want to see it. I'll leave it with you, then. Yes, right. right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. I meant what I said, you know. I'll miss you. More than perhaps you realise. Yeah. I'll miss you as well, Alec. I suppose if I was to make any sort of wild suggestion, you'd probably just think I was after your brass. What sort of wild suggestion? Uh, even if you didn't think that, you'd no doubt turn me down anyway. Well, you know what they say, don't you, Alec? Well, who says? There's only one way to find out. It's, uh, it's getting late. And we should be getting back. Mavis? How did Rita go on in Carmel? Oh, I, I don't know. She's not back yet. Right. Uh, did she tell you that we... Uh, yeah. That... Well, it's not a secret, is it? No. But she knows. Oh, yeah. Uh, knows what? Well, Rita and Mavis. What about them? Selling up. Moving away. Away? Where to? <laughs> Carmel with Anthea. Up, up in the lakes, you know, up around there. Huh? Well, I, th I thought... You'd have been the first one she'd have told. Well, I know she's been very busy. Oi! What happened to you this dinner? Oh, I was busy. Couldn't get away, so don't flatter yourself. I was sulking. Got a paper. Got a couple of flats we could go and have a look at. Oh, not this evening, Chris. I'm not in the mood. So are you going to come home tonight or what? Home? Mm. You mean over there? No. You know I'm not. Well, I can hardly join you on Sally's couch, can I? Well, call me when you go to the Rovers. I well, can't get up to much in there, can you? Is that all you think about? No, it isn't. Good job, I know. Uh, now, lo looking ahead, I've printed out a sheet. The, the broad aims of the course, if you'd like to pass them round. Oh, thank you. Now, the, the broad aims of the course, looking ahead, Oh, there possibly aren't enough sheets here. I'll have to get some more printed for next week. The 
broader aims. Ah, now the late arrival. Is this cooking for bigger numbers? It is. Come in. Oh, sorry. I I'm sorry, I'm late. Is, is it Mrs. Uh, Jascott? Uh, no, Mrs. Wilton. Oh. Would you like to sit down, Mrs. Wilton? Right, right. I'll just go oh, up there. Oh, uh, uh, yes, well, the broad aims I'd rather be near the, the next six weeks. Oh, uh, to look well, at I can take it to you as food yeah, legislation. I'm not here to have fun. I'm here to learn. Sit down, mm. stop dithering. Do sit down, Mrs. Wilton. Anywhere you like. Uh, right. <laughs> At the same time, we what have I missed? Um, Not much. She hasn't said much. And what she has said, um, it didn't mean much. What are we doing here? Oh, well, it, it's no secret, but Rita and me, we're hoping to invest in a little guest house. Oh! Um, Mrs. Wilton, sorry, Mrs. Wilton, C could you. Do you mind not talking? I, I, I'm struggling. I'm afraid I've not got a very loud voice. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Do you want to share a bit more? No. Thank you. Now, we'll be spending most of this um, today uh, class uh, discussing or talking about hygiene. Hygiene? God, I can't stand the outside. Oh, First, shh. I'll outline or... Adam Brake is the basic principle. I thought we were going home with a meat pan. And then similarly, you're not uh, taking notes. Outline those that Psst. similarly hey, apply to the oh, Do you mind? I'm bothered. It's the right lip way. Oh, really, Vera? Do you know, no wonder I didn't do well at school. If it were like this. Uh, Mrs. Duckworth, sorry. Um, could you. Would you mind? No, I love you. Carry on. Doing a really good job. It's already taken. Oh, that was quick. Yeah. Yeah, thanks anyway. No, look. Sorry. Hey, don't apologise. You can stay here as long as you need to. It's not ideal, though, is it? For you, I mean. For me? It's nice having somebody around I can have a proper conversation with. You okay? You look a bit. Oh, it's just when I was leaving the factory today. Martin was telling me that wheat is off. Flitting. That's right, yeah. You knew? Lake District, apparently. Cartmel, I think she said. She told you? Yeah, well, I was just checking her tire pressure this morning. You okay? Yeah. Yeah. Fancy a lager? Yeah, go on. District. What do you want to go there for? It's dead. Well, to each his own. Oh, it's all scenery and hills. No nightlife, you know. Uh, like I say, here, why don't you get my place at Blackpool? Oh, me and our Jack could come, you know. Oh, no, we would. Yeah. Sorry, um, did you get... Oh, no, you didn't. Um, there are two sheets here. Each. Oh, mm -hmm. right. yeah. oh. Oops, thank okay. you. Sorry. Oh. Oh, sorry. It's <laughs> all right, love. Thank you. Do you know how far it goes in one ear and out of the other? Perhaps she's a novice. Here, there's an archery class next door, you know. Yeah, I might switch to that. I've always wanted to learn how to use a weapon. <laughs> well, maybe you could swap. No, I can't. Oh, yes, and I'm sure they'd let you in. No. Hey, listen. Can I trust you with a secret? Yes, I like to think people can trust me with the secrets. Well, uh, don't let on to Betty that you've seen me here because uh, I'm having to get rid of her. Yeah, I I'm taking over cooking. That's why I'm here. So she, she's going to lose her job? Hey, now, you did promise, you know. I know why she won't have told me. She'll be putting it off. She won't want to upset me what, after everything we've been through. She's been right good to us over the years. We've had our ups and downs, but... We 
really gonna miss her? Sally. I'm <laughs> losing everybody. It's gonna take her ages to sell out, I bet you. I must be doing something really wrong, you know? And what do you mean? In life. Don't talk like that. <laughs> Sally, come on. Am I... Am I really boring? No. I must be. I must be something. I must be... I must be really unattractive or something. No, you're not. <laughs> oh. Listen, I'll go and get that. No, I, uh, I'm really knackered, actually, Ange, and, um, I haven't had any tea yet. Oh, yeah, yes. And what about tomorrow? Oh, right. Ta-ra. Bye. What did you do that for? You don't have to stop in because of me. I don't do anything I don't want to do. And no, you're not unattractive, and you know that. Do I? Thing is, I think Natalie's a real dog. And if I'm less attractive than that, God help me. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Got your message. <laughs> so, how are things on the house front? No, oh, I don't want to think about it. I've got enough on. The flight to Cape Town has been transferred to tonight now instead. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, at the most, we've got till half ten. Oh, well. Better make the most of it. <laughs> oh. Oh, I was flicking through your album. I didn't think you'd mind. No, no, I don't. You know, you'd have got on with Sam here. He'd have liked you. Would he? He liked everyone. You know, I sometimes... Deirdre. I sometimes feel guilty because I'm so happy. Oh, come on. You mustn't torture yourself with thoughts like that. I mean, you'd have been just as happy if you still had him and never met me. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I would. Oh, I don't know. Maybe that's why I feel guilty. Maybe I'm happier. Well, it's the talk of the town, isn't it? What is? Fiona's wedding. Rita's just been telling me about it. What does she know that we don't? Well, all things have changed now since you got your invitation. It's a, it's a golden coach job, isn't it? Top hat and tails, full kit. Well, we knew all that, didn't we? Your mother was given a chapter and verse the other day, so she was. Well, I hope you know which knife to eat your peas with. Why? Well, you'd be rubbing shoulders with high society, won't you? I mean, I won't want you to make a fool of yourself or anything. Well, there's no chance of that, Stephen. I'm not going. Why not? Well, that's not my sort of thing, really. It's a bit classy for me. Well, Fiona's hardly top draw material, is she? Hey, behave yourself. She's a decent wee girl, so she is, and she's entitled to whatever type of wedding she wants. Oh, you be telling me next she's entitled to wear a snow-white dress and cover herself Stephen, in a... Stephen, Stephen, shut up. Ah, isn't she lovely? <laughs> Just like Daniel was at that age. <laughs> Bye. 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 Do you sell disposable nappies, Rita, or do we go to Maureen's? I'm oh, sorry, love, we don't stock them. Tell Zoe she'll be better off in precinct. She won't. She's gone. Oh, where? I couldn't tell you. She's upped it. Upped it? Well, I can't think of another word for it. She's upped and left Katie to be with us. Well, why would she want to do that? Well, she's only a kid herself, isn't she? Don't even think she wouldn't do it in the first place. Well, that's oh. terrible. She can't just dump a baby on you. Yeah, well, she has. Anyway, we can do it best for her. Yeah. I'll get to Maureen's. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> right, who's that have I got? Hey, come on, girls. You're in the way. <laughs> no, they're not. They're helping I me. I know what their help's like. You're quicker on your own. <laughs> come and get your breakfast. And you too. You can have your breakfast when you wash your hands. Come on upstairs. Oh, 
I never got treated like this by Angie. <laughs> so, are you two back together again, or what? Oh, it's a bit of an on-off relationship, you know. What is it at the moment? On, just about. Oh, it sounds great. It's the sort of wedding I'd like to have had. Although I didn't say so at the time, not with the uh, way things were. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have preferred a little bit less fuss, but my mum and dad insisted, so... Oh, we'd be the same, wouldn't we, eh? We would. Oh, yeah. If one of my boys were getting married, I would insist on a big do. <sighs> right, well, um, I'm going to have to get off, so I will see you later. All right. Uh, hey, are you going to finish your drink? No, no, you finish it. Hey, please, Sandy. Coming up. It is nice to see you so happy, isn't it? Is it? Oh, yeah. Be pleased for a gin. I know you think it should be our Steve she's marrying, but... Actually, I don't think that at all. Well, I don't like Alan McKenna, either. If he's what she wants. Well, does she know what she wants? Well, she should do by this time. Anyway, it's really nothing to do with me what she does at all, Liz. I can't wait to see her in a long white dress and a big veil. Hey, she'll be a stunner. Yeah, look, why don't you try changing the subject? I've heard nothing else all day, okay? Hi, yeah. Hi. Oh, I wonder when we might see you again. Yeah, I've been busy with Katie and Zoe. Oh, she's coming on lovely. Yeah. I'm glad she's not making a complete mess of it. Who? Zoe! I didn't think she'd show much interest. Oh, yeah. Anyway, when are you coming back? I mean, we're all right now, but this afternoon we'll be spinning. That happy hour really brings them out in the woodwork. Well, that's what I want to see Vera about. Is she in? Yeah, yeah, she's in the back. Alec, can Judy and the baby go through? Yeah, and tell Vera there's a hot pot been waiting for ten minutes. Oh, tell her no such thing. It's that man in the corner. He's only just come in. Oh. Hi, Vera. Oh, hi, love. Brought baby to see me, have you? Yeah, I thought you might like a look. Do you want to hold her? No, better not. I'm half hot pot. Alex got me demented. Well, he thinks he has. Here, sit down, make your cup of tea. No, don't, Vera. I've got something to tell you. Have you, love? What? It's about the baby. Zoe's gone, she's left her. Zoe's run away? Yeah. And not taking her with her? No. She's left her with you and, and yeah. Carrie? Yeah. Well, why would she do that? I don't know. I bet I do. What do you mean? Well, there's no I've not seen or come across. I don't know what you mean. It's Gary's isn't it? Hear it? Oh, look, just between us. I mean, why else would you take a girl like that into your home? V? Look, you're a good girl, Judy. I mean, you must be to stand for that rotten... Uh, it's not that simple. I love him. <sighs> You must do to stand for that. It were a mistake. It were just the once. Mm, is that what I told you? It was, Vera. You won't say anything, will you? We wanted a baby. We might not have had one of our own. And we'll love Katie as much as anyone else could. Oh, I know you will, love. But <clears throat> it still don't make it right. Well, she's Gary's, even if she's not mine. But how will you be able to look after it? I mean, you're both out working. Yeah, well, that's what I've got to tell you. I won't be going back behind the bar. Not for a while. But we need you. We'll miss you. Yeah, well, I don't want to give up my job, but we've taken on baby now and we want to do the best for her. It's bad enough with people whispering and saying stuff. <sighs> Listen, the world, not in this pub. If I hear one word... Thanks, Vera. I knew I could rely on you. Well, you can, love. And don't you forget it. Ah, the girl of my dreams. Oh, don't you ever stop. I'm sorry, it's just force of habit. Let me start again. Ah, the girl of my dreams. <laughs> Do you fancy coming out with me tonight or what? I'm washing my hair. Pick you up at eight? I've got nothing to wear. I'll borrow something of Angie's. Because it was that turquoise top. Uh, with the embutelage. Decolletage. The other one's a traffic jam. <laughs> it might mean traffic jam to you, but to me it means heaving bosom. What would you prefer? Greek, Italian, Mexican? Or whatever you've got in the fridge. Eight o'clock or I shall be waiting on the doorstep. And I thought I might persuade you. Well, it will mean cancelling my previous engagements. Mm. See ya. See ya. Now we rushed there and we rushed back, but it was a bit of a disappointment. Yes, overpriced and under-maintained. Mm. Not the sort of place I'd have wanted to stay at. I mean, if I was on a walking holiday. 
You don't walk in Lytham, you push your wheelchair. <laughs> Lytham's nice, it's not full of old fogies. No, we don't want anywhere too lively. No, not full of raves and late night bars. But we don't want to fossilise either. Well, you won't, not one in a guest house. You'll be rushed off your feet. Oh, only in the summer. And in the winter, we'll just have each other to look at. <laughs> in the winter, I'm going to paint. I might even throw a few pots. In a world of her own. I've begun to think I am. Why didn't you tell me you were leaving? Oh, Sally, love, there just hasn't been the chance. It's all been such a rush. I was wondering if it was something I've done. You? No, never. I won't be a minute. Hello, She's Karen. very fond of carp now. What did you think of it? Well, I haven't seen it yet. I mean, we want to see a great range of places before we make up our minds. We'll miss you both. I can't imagine the street without you. Oh, I will keep in touch. Yeah. I'll bring the girls over. We'll be your first guests. Oh, you certainly will. Rita will see to that. <laughs> it's Mr Groves from Cartmel. He's had an offer on the house. Oh. But it's below the asking price. Are we still interested? Well, I haven't seen it yet. Well, now's your chance. Otherwise, he sells. Oh, Rita, it's too quick. I mean, we can't go now. We'd look after the shop. Well, Emily would. Look, run across road and ask her to come back. Pronto. Tell her she can name her price. She's just gone home. Well, well shut shop for the afternoon. <laughs> right. Look, I mean it. I'll tell him. Look, we're going. You'll love it. Shut the shop. Move. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too fond of a Judy loaf. Why not? Well, it's great that you stood by your husband, but there's going to be jealousies. How do you make that out? It's Zoe's baby. Now, she's the one that's wanted to fuss over it. No, she won't. She's left. She just packed her bits and went. Went where? Who knows? She didn't even say goodbye. That's how much fuss she made. You mean she's just abandoned her little baby? Yeah. That's terrible. I know. Well, I can't believe that. Well, at least Katie's young enough not to notice. Yes. Oh, well, perhaps it isn't such a big disaster. Uh, you can hardly call it an ideal situation. No, I don't. But, well, it's very convenient, isn't it? Because it lets Gary off the hook a bit. Gary is not proud of what he did. Well, I don't suppose you were exactly thrilled, were you? Come on, Judy, I wasn't born yesterday. I don't know what you're getting at. Yes, you do. It must have been a bit awkward, love, sharing your house with Gary's little fancy bit. Not to say embarrassing. She's not his fancy bit. It was a mistake. Oh, uh, mistook her for you, did it? Couldn't see in the dark. Listen, love, I'd have done exactly the same thing. I don't blame you for giving her a marching orders. I didn't. Well, not directly, maybe, but I know there are ways and means. Audrey? Bye. Not too exhausted after last night, then. Take more than that. Might see you later. Don't count on it. So, are you two going out tonight? No, we might meet up in the pub later, but don't worry. I won't come back too drunk. Oh, I'm only asking, because I just wondered if you'd like to have a dinner with us. You and the girls? Yeah. I mean, you get much more sensible conversation at Lounge, but the offer's there if you want it. What are you having? Oh, Chris, we're having burgers, chips, peas, alphabet spaghetti. Ooh, sounds great. Spaghetti goes everywhere. Most of it ends up in food. Mm, I can cope. <laughs> Thanks. See you later. Here. What am I doing tonight? Oh, I don't know. What do you normally do on a Friday night? Embroidery? Crochet? Macrame? No, not anymore. Samantha's taken me out. Ah. Oh, does that mean you're going to be an hour in the bath? Oh, at least. And I'll be borrowing your posh shampoo. Sounds like a lot of effort for no reward. Yes, well, that's where you're wrong. Should've seen the look on her face. She can't wait to get her hands on me. She's probably giving you the push. No chance. I'm irresistible. <laughs> I told you not to touch that piano. Vera. It was a choice of an out-of-tune piece of junk or a brand-new jukebox. The pub isn't big enough for both. What have you done with it? 
It's gone to a good home. Mm, sold it more like. Do you know that was a beautiful piece of furniture? A lovely tone. I had to pay him to take it away. Made money on it more like. Look, excuse me, Vera. I'm just out of thing. Say, give me a large gin and tonic, please. Oh, why? What's up with you? You've heard the latest, haven't you? Latest? About the new little baby. I'm Judy and uh, lover boy hanging on to it. Hanging on to it? Yeah, apparently the mother's done a bunk and left little uh, thingy with Judy Katie. and Gary. Katie, yes, that's right. Mm. <laughs> I think I'd do a bunk if I got Gary Mallet's offspring gurgling up at me. Gary Mallet's? Yes, Vera, come on. I said it all along, didn't I? Eh? It's like olden times, isn't it? The Lord of the Manor with the downstairs meat. What are you talking about? Perhaps not the Lord of the Manor, no, but you know what I mean. Oh, it was lovely, Alec. Much nicer than Rita said. Well, it's in a nice situation, I'll grant you. It's beautiful. There must be something wrong with it. No, there isn't. Just the price. Well, we can put in an offer. Oh. Oh, you don't want to stretch yourself. I mean, look what happened to the Duckworths. You happened to the Duckworths. No, no, I saved them from the vat man. Anyway, it's all water under the bridge. Well, we're going home now to sort out our finances. Are we? Of course we are. Oh, right, you see, this Mr Groves has had another offer. Oh, you see, I told you that's what he'd say. He's just trying to get you to make a move. Well, he doesn't have to try very hard with me, cos after the last few months on this street, I know I'd rather be there than here. Mm. Oh. See you, Alex. I'll see you later, yeah. Right. Oh, no! They've not gone already. I wanted a word with Rita. Oh, don't bother, Audrey. It's no good. What? Lodge whiskey, please, Sandy, when you're ready, and uh, whatever your man wants. Uh, fine, please, oh. Alex. Hi, Jim. Back to your old ways, eh? Do us a favour, Audrey. Shut up, will you? Oh, uh, oh, Sandy, bring him across when you're ready, will you? All right, yeah. Oh, I've no need to bite her head off. Oh, she's a nosy old bat. Well, she always was, wasn't she? So yeah, what? I've had enough, that's what. You had enough first thing this morning. Oh, Stephen, will you lay off? Well, it's you that's laying into me here. No, it's not. Look at you doing it again now. Listen, would you rather I went home and drank a meal? Well, you can do what you like where you like. I mean, what's it to me? Well, it's nothing to you. It's nothing to anyone else, is it? Eh? Look, cheer up, Dad. Eh? If you're going to get legless, at least do it with a smile on your face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she's asleep. You're a proper little mother. Yeah, well, I will be. Once words got round that Zoe's done a runner. Who did you tell? Everybody I could find. I walked the streets half the day. Should have seen Audrey Roberts face. A jaw hit the floor. What did she say? Oh, some snide remark about you. Did you punch your face in? No. But I will do next time. <laughs> Still, midwife's happy. Zoe's gone. Katie's in a cot. She is lovely. You're not the best thing. I may not be a mother, but you're a father. It's on the birth certificate. Yeah. She looks like you, you know. Oh, don't start that. She does. I'll do my best for her, Jude. Honest, I will. I know. She won't for nothing. She won't. I promise. Our Katie. Our Katie. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, I needed that. Hey, leave him alone, Rosie. He's been working all day. Tell you what, though, I've got something for you. I'm going to go and have a look in my coat pocket. Hey, you better go and see what it is. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's just a few sweets. Oh, you shouldn't tell. It's nothing. Kevin was always bringing him treats. Now he flies off on holiday and doesn't give him a second thought. He does, so. I doubt he misses them as much as they miss him. He'd never turn his back on them. He might. In time, lots of men do. Not Kev. I didn't think he'd turn his back on me. Now I believe anything. He's been a fool, though, hasn't he? No. The only fool sitting right here. Kevin has his regrets, and they won't go away. How can you say that? Because if I walked out on someone like you, I'd regret it. Hey, do you like them? My favourite. Lovely. Can I have one? Thanks. There you I hope we can do this every week. Very unlikely. Well, I'll pay in the future. No, the money doesn't worry me. Oh, I love going out with you. Des, it's 
just what I need to talk to you about. Don't say that you never want to see me again. I'm the last person who would force you into a situation you're not happy with. No, I know that. I've really enjoyed tonight. You make me laugh. Yeah, it's just the old jokes. I've got stacks of new material. <laughs> you don't have to impress me, you know. I'm here because I want to be. And why am I here exactly? Well, because I want to thank you for being so patient. Well, patience is just one of my virtues. You can ask anyone. Hey, don't be so flippant. I mean it. So do I. I'm not all bad. No, I know. I've been a bit confused and you've helped me through it. I'll always be grateful. Can't say I'm that keen on gratitude. Well, you don't have to be. No? Not anymore. I want to try and... Take things further? Yeah. Any particular reason? Yeah. Nothing's changed. I feel the same way about you I did weeks ago. What way? Oh, don't make me spell it out. You know what I'm like. Well, I hope you mean that we're going to get closer. That's the idea. If... Well, it doesn't have to be everything all at once. Oh, with me it won't be, but I want to try. I've kept you waiting long enough. No, you haven't. It's been my pleasure. I'm not sure what'll happen. You know what I'm like. Well, I'll take it as it comes. You're more than worth it. Thank you. I don't want you here. All right. How come you let me in, then? Because you wouldn't have gone away, would you, to just stay down there in the <sighs> middle of the street with people walking past you? No, I wouldn't have done that, Fee. Come on, I wouldn't upset you. You've been drinking, haven't you? Yes, I have had a drink. I needed a bit of courage. What for? I don't want you to marry Alan, all right? Thank he's you. not the right man for you. Don't. Please believe me. Look, he's not going to make you happy. He's he, he's hard. He doesn't give a damn about anybody else but himself. Trust I love me. him. No, you don't love him. You're too young, Fee, and you're certainly far too good for him. Jim, right, we have made one mistake. All right, we don't mean anything to each other. Why can't you just let it go? Look, I'm not here to talk about me. That yes, is not the you point. are. You are old enough to be my dad. Oh, fine, right. I'm old enough to be your dad. That is not the point. It's not why I'm here. I don't want to talk about me. Will you just stay away from me? Every single time I see your face... Oh, uh, what? Oh, yes, what? Every time you see my face, what? Eh? Kai just wishes well. Right, come to the wedding. Oh, come Shake to the... his hand, kiss me, just no, wish us no, both well. No, no, never. No way, Fee. Fine, then. Well, don't come near me again. Oh, please, I'm begging you. Don't go through with this, honestly. For me, don't... But why? Hey, why? Oh, God. Look, all right, fine. You... you don't give a damn about me anymore, but please don't forget about Stephen. He'd make you very happy, honestly. No, buddy. no, Steve is an ex-con, all right? I would spend the rest of my life standing outside prison gates. Not at all. You'd be the making of him, Fee, honestly. I am marrying Alan. Look, please listen to me, Fiona, no, just no, for a no, minute. No, 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 look, right, I have listened, right? And all I've heard is the same thing over and over and over again, right? I have finished with Steve, I have finished with you. The McDonald's caused me no upper arm. Oh, please, that's no, not true. No, come on, just get out, I mean Come on, no, please, No, Fiona. will you stay away from me? You scare me. Oh, I'm sorry, for you. you know you mean the world to me. Oh, come on. Please, Fiona. No, no don't me. touch me! Look, you're upset, you don't know what you're just talking about. Get out! Yeah, all right, I'll go. But just remember one thing, Faye. No matter what you say or no matter what you do, you and I, we'll still always know what the truth is, won't we? Good night, Faye. Aye, right. it'll be the end of an era when that place closes. They're not gonna close that. Someone will take over. What do you fancy it? It's in your line. No, I'm management. You could manage the cabin. No, I like to work for a big organisation. It gives you more scope. Scope? What for? Being sacked or made redundant. Have you seen the size of that place? Better drive me nuts being stuck in there day in, day out. Aye, well, it's not done Mavis much good, has it? All right. Aye. Aye. See you later. See you now. Good night, mate. Evening. Excuse me, this is number seven Coronation Street, isn't it? It certainly is. I'm looking for Samantha Failsworth. Do you know if she's at home? Ah, well, I'm not sure, mate. Hang on. Well, it doesn't look like it. Uh, she shouldn't be long, though. 
would you like to come in and wait? Yeah, thanks very much. OK, come on in. Yes. Cheers, mate. Keep the change. Well, it's been a lovely evening. You fancy a coffee? Yeah, why not? Your place or mine? Well, if we go over mine, Angie will be weeping her way through some late-night movie. Mm, sounds like my type of thing. <laughs> What's Curly's nocturnal habits? Don't ask. Actually, he goes to bed quite early. Your place it is, then. I mean, in, on any other night, you should have just popped into the pub. It's the Rovers, you see, on the end of the street there. That's where she works. Isn't she there now? No, it's a night off. Oh, no. <laughs> That'll be her now. Sam! In here! No, oh, <gasps> trust him. Oh, Curly, go to bed. We want the place to ourselves. <laughs> I told Des you... Hello, Samantha. It's been a long time. Yeah. Des, this is Richie. Richie Des. Hi. All right. Friend of yours. Richie's my husband. Richie, what are you doing here? I was waiting for you. You better do some introductions, son. Um, Richie, this is Curly. Hi, man. And Des. Hi. Well. Right then. I'll say good night. Uh, are you going? Time for a pint. Yeah, I'm coming with you. Excuse me. I'll just go and see him out. Des, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know he was going to be here. No. Well, you'll have a lot to talk about. Hey, hang on. Hang on. You know, I can't believe my luck with that woman. Now a long-lost husband turns up. Didn't you know about him? I thought he was history. I thought he was joking. When did he get there? Just before you. Planned it then, didn't he? What? To spend the night with her. I think he planned to spend the rest of his life with her. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to be a drag. Oh, could probably do with an early night myself. <laughs> Don't half catch up on you, doesn't it? Anyway, be sure you're feeling lively for Friday. Friday? Mm. Try that new club out. I showed you the flyer. Oh, yeah, right. Well, I'll see you tomorrow then, sleepyhead. Drive carefully. Uh -huh. Only cheap plunk, I'm afraid. Yeah, well, I wasn't expecting champagne. Well. Here's looking at you again, Sam. So, how on earth did you find me here? Your mother. You don't know my mother? Oh, we've been in touch ever since she left me, on and off. She never told me that. Well, she called me after you went back to see her. We thought it best if I just turned up in case she ran off and left me again. I really hate myself for what I did to you. Mm. I mean that, Richie. Do you know, there were so many times I wanted to pick up the phone and just call you, but I didn't have to explain it. No, your mum explained everything to me. She told me the whole story, Sam. About your tennis coach. What he did to you. I just wish I'd known before. Nobody knew. I just couldn't talk about it. All those years keeping it to yourself. Couldn't even admit it to myself for ages. Just felt so ashamed. Some people would still say I made too much of it. Yeah, well, then they don't know what they're talking about, do they? Most women have had something happen to them. Just get on with their lives. Yeah, but you were so very young, Sam. So very ignorant. And I'm still not over it all. Not really. What are you doing here? Uh, Rachel was feeling a bit tired. Went off for an early night. <sighs> Come on, then. Don't keep me in suspenders. What's all this news? More hassle. Alan can't get any leave after the wedding, so we can't have a honeymoon. Oh, no. Means you've got to go three weeks before instead. Hey? Friday week, we're going to Mauritius, it's all booked. You're going to Mauritius for three weeks? Mm -hmm. 
We were really lucky though, got a cancellation, but it just means I've got to run around now, trying to get all my jobs done and all that. I've got to move all the clients around as well. What are you making such a headache about? I'm not. Look, you're going to Mauritius for three whole weeks. You should be celebrating. Yeah, I'm just saying, it's all, no, no, it's all back to front. Oh, Vera. Well, jukebox going down well, is it? Oh, it's a real hit. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better than our Jack whistling. <laughs> Here. Uh, what were it, love? Uh, a pint and a large scotch? Aye, when you're ready, be aye. Aye. So then, where's Samantha tonight? I thought you were never going through night out. We were. Then we got back to Curly's. Something turned up. Right. Her husband. Eh? Hey? Out of the blue. Her husband? Mm. Sam's a bit shocked as well. Do you mean Samantha's married? Well, all we know is the little we're told. Did you know about that, James? Sorry. Samantha had been married. Married? Yeah, well, Des and Curly just said her husband's turned up. No. Yeah? Mean, she got a bit married. Never, never mind that. Hey! See hey. 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 you! Hey! 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 All right, all right. Hey, Hi, right. right. Vera. So who's missed me then? Oh, well, I tell you, I must have been missing something up here. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> just wandering in off the street? Uh, trying to catch last orders, mate. Why didn't you give us a ring? Sure, would have come and picked you up. That's nah, not a problem. Jump in a cab. Thought I'd give you a bit of a surprise, you know. Oh. Where's sure. the kit? Uh, just inside the front door. Left it there and uh, picked up my mail that you left out. Thank you. <laughs> hey, well, you better give us another pound. Oh, nice yeah. one. Oh, hello. New jukebox. Well, we're moving with the time, slow. Oh. It's got a little bit of a Yeah, don't you look good with this time? Oh. Well, I only got this, you see, last couple of weeks on the beach in Sigess. I've been doing bar work inside most of August. So. What in Spanish? Catalan, mate. Catalan? Yeah, but the uh, uh, the owner was uh, English, so see? I was just another pair of hands. Aye, fair oh, play. So fair play to you. You've been paying your own way some. I have, but I'll tell you what, mate, you've got to see the measures over there. None hey, of your stingy Sammy, singles that you get here. Uh, serve it by the glass for yeah, 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 yeah. Makes you wonder what we have to put up with over there. Hey, well, I'll tell you what, son. It's good to have you back. And it's good to be back, mate, it really is. I'll tell you what, two and a half months is a very long time without your cooking, mate, I'm telling you. Hey, you see? <laughs> I still can't believe you're sitting here. What are you up to these days? Well, I thought about going back on the boats, but then a mate of mine got me into his engineering firm. I'm working down in London now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, somehow I thought that's where I might have found you. In London? Just how I imagined you, Sam. You know, doing something glamorous. <laughs> Never thought you'd fit in a place like this. Well, it's a good hiding place then, eh? Not that I kid myself, I do fit in. Still haven't found that place. So you're not involved with anyone round here, then? Not very good at being involved, am I? But what about you, Richie? You seen anyone else? There isn't anyone else for me, Sam. Don't you know that? Oh, come on. What a load of rubbish. Lots of women falling for you. So why did you choose here? Of all the small-time places in all the world. Because I felt small. My nan used to live in a street like this. And I suppose I just felt like going back to something that was safe and simple. I certainly couldn't have coped in London. Yeah, but you can't imagine rooting yourself here, can you? Oh, I don't try and think that far ahead anymore. Still trying to mop up the past. And does that include me, then? I might have been mopped up with the rest of it. Well, after what I did to you, I never expected to see you again. But you have thought about me, haven't you? Of course I have. But I really thought you'd have met someone else. You're my wife, Sam. Right, I'm off. Well, what's the rush? I'm just not in the mood. I've got some cans indoors. All right, well, hang on. Well, you can stay for last orders. And what am I going to do then? I can't go home while he's still there, can I? Well, why not? Oh, leave off. Come on, I'm coming with you. What's brilliant, though, is the late-night culture. Wish we had it here. You know, kip in the afternoon. That's when you need it. And then off round the bars till the sun comes up. <sighs> well, they've got the climate for it, haven't they? It's not just the climate, mate. It's their attitude. Like, their attitude to kit. They take them everywhere. Bars, restaurants, they don't separate them off like we do. Who wants to go out for a drink in a bar with a load of kids bawling and screaming? Yeah, but they don't, though, you see, because they're used to it. <sighs> and it's nice, then. It's not, not full of rowdy lads, you know what I mean? It's friendly. I'll tell you what, the way you're talking, you're going to find problems settling down here again. You'll be finding fault with everyone. No, I won't. There's plenty good here, mate. I just... just wish we had the best of everything, you know. <clears throat> oh, look. Invitation to Fiona's wedding. Right, my round. No, um, I'd rather just go home and have a cup of tea, actually. You all right? You look a bit picky. It's a bit of smoke. Come on, then, we'll just go, shall we? 
Hey, Fee. Thanks for the invitation. Right, yeah. I'll be there. Great. Now, we're definitely set in stone, Rita. Oh, come on, phone him. Right. Be sure. <laughs> yes, how many more times? Oh, my heart. Hello, uh, Mr. Groves? Oh, hello, Mr. Groves. Uh, this is Mrs. Sullivan here. Yes. Uh, well, um, Mrs. Wilton and I have had a discussion and we'd like to make you an offer on your property. Yes. The full asking price. Yes. Now, uh, for that, Mr. Groves, we need a swift response from you. Yes. Yes, all right. I'll be here. Bye. <laughs> what did he say? He said he'll ring us back when he's discussed it with his wife. But when? Well, he said tonight. Oh, do you think he might mean after he's gone back to the other bidder? No. No, I think Alex's right. There probably isn't another bidder. Well, not yet. Well, then why are we offering him Because the now we know we really want it. Yes, but... Well, we... let's not get too sharp. We'll only cut ourselves. Besides, it's a fair price to pay for a new life, isn't it? Somebody up there's got it in for me, you know. Probably nudged on by the spirit of Derek Wilton. Well, cheers, mate. Thanks. Nice one. Oh, leave off, will you? At least you've got your own home to go to. No, I haven't. You're in it. Oh, thanks very much, mate. I feel very welcome now. Hello, mm. Out here. Oh, hi, Curly. Hiya. What's all this? Some sort of male bonding ritual? Where's the lovely Samantha? Sleeping it off? Shut up, Ange. Excuse me? The lovely Samantha is with a lovely husband. Come again? Her husband. He turned up. Husband? Samantha? In my house. What? Something I stupidly didn't think it worth telling you. You mean Samantha's married? <laughs> hey, Vera. Um, what's this for sale sign doing outside, maybe, she's Oh, Well, what it says, she's selling up. Well, where's she going? Her and Rita live in a bad guest house, you know, in Lakes. What, Rita as well? Yeah, it's hard to believe, isn't it? I mean, the cabin will never be the same. No, feels like I've come back to a foreign country. <laughs> well, I can't say you stop it much longer around here. Not now you've finished college. Well, the thing is, you see, Vera, I've, well, I've got to go anywhere I can get myself a decent job, haven't I? Yeah. Well, listen, I don't suppose there's any chance in, well, carrying on behind here in the meantime, is there? Would you like to? Oh, Vera, I'd love to. Well, we'd love to have you. Hey, when can you start? Um, Do you want some coffee? I just feel so sad about us, Sam. <sighs> like, if only you could have talked to me, then I could have helped you, couldn't I? At least I could have proved how much I cared about you. I did it all wrong, didn't I? You weren't the only one I hurt. You weren't the first guy I got engaged to marry, either. I should have told you that to start with, then you'd have had fair warning. Yeah, but that's because No, listen, you... let me finish. I've never really told you anything, have I, and I should have done. Because I never meant to hurt you. I mean that. I suppose I should have taken myself off to counselling, but I didn't believe in all that then. I should never have married you, Richie. You're much better off without me. No, don't say that. It's true. I know it's true. No matter how much I hurt you by running away, I'd have hurt you a lot worse by staying. What if you talk to me then like you're talking to me now? I'm sorry, Richie. But at least now you know it wasn't your fault. Sam, I married you because I loved you. I still love you. Yeah, that's why I'm here. You could have got married over there. Look, exotic weddings. Then you got your bride's discount. And you used to have a blessing ceremony when you get home. Oh, God, that's what people do, isn't it? Oh, well, why don't you do it when it's your turn, then, eh? Oh, you're in a lovely mood tonight. You menstrual or something. Phone, right? Yeah, and don't tell me you're pregnant. Are you pregnant? That's the usual explanation, isn't it? <laughs> Just 
be stressed. Why don't you buy one of them test things? I have bought one. Hey? Eh? I've been too scared to do it, Max. I don't want to be pregnant yet. Why not? I haven't planned for it. I mean, there's the business. But you can sort that. Max, it's a hassle. I wanted to wait a couple of years. I bet I'll be over the moon. I don't know if you will be, though. I mean, he might not be. Of course you will, Fee. Come on, you've got to find out. I mean, you've got to find out before you go and have your jobs for your holiday, haven't you? Because you could damage the baby. I hadn't thought of that. Come on, just go in the bathroom and do it. Go on. Why is it taking so long? I don't know. Well, maybe he's changed his mind. Maybe he's changed his mind not to sell. I mean, people do that when it gets to the crunch. I don't think he'd do that. Oh, maybe he wants to sell it and his wife doesn't. I mean, that happens, Rita. Well, we'll give him five more minutes and then I'll phone him. Have you done it? Doing it. Hiya. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Max. Where's Fee? She's in the bathroom. Fee Allen's here. That's all right, Maxine. I don't need announcing. I was just waiting for her. Uh-huh. Fee, you coming out? Well, Max, I'll see you in the morning. Hey? You don't have to wait for me. It's all right. Oh, right. See them. Gone. Yes. Do you want a gin too? No, I'm all right, thanks. Is she all right? Max. Yes. She was behaving like a criminal. No, she's fine. Are you sure you don't want a drink? I can get you some wine if you prefer. Not if you want to be a father, Alan, no. Hey? I think I'm pregnant. Okay. Okay, bye bye. Thanks, Lou. Wants to see me tonight. Tonight? Mm. I told you so. Now then, another round, lads. No, you're all right, Sam. You're uh, way on after this. No, 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 no. I'm all right. Thank you, Alec. No. Oh, uh, thanks for keeping my job open, Alec. I'll be in first thing, mate. Sorry? Her husband? Well, I don't know the details, but he's around there now. Oh, Vera, go on. Makes you wonder what else we'll find out next. Do you know, I've always thought there was something, well, just a little bit strange about her. Yeah, I mean, I wonder why she's kept it a secret. I wonder why it's turned up now after so long. Yeah. Oh, I do hate having to wonder, don't you? Yeah. Wonder, as they say, is the daughter of ignorance. Oh, do they? And uh, what do you know for her? Vera. Well, Andy says you've offered him his job back. Oh, I have, eh? And they were glad of it. But you've got no right to go hiring new staff off your own bat. Well, you hired that Natalie. Eh? Well, only after prior consultation with a fellow partner. Look, he's not new staff, is he? It's old staff. He's been on holiday. Look, I don't want him back, Vera. Well, if you feel man enough to tell his dad, go tell him, Alec. Really... Vera, oh, are we in time for last orders? <laughs> yeah, of course, Charlotte. What you want? What oh, you having? Well, we will have a bottle of champagne. Champagne! <laughs> and glasses for you and Alec, if you'd like to join us. Yes. Uh, why? Uh, what's happened? Uh, well, I thought you'd retired to your counting house tonight. <laughs> yeah, we're having champagne. Huh? Celebrating our successful bid for a and b Alec. Oh, so you've gone for it, then? We've got right. it. Well, nearly got it. We still to go through the survey, etc. Well, as good as got it then. <laughs> Until he comes up with another spurious bidder. Well, he won't do that. We've offered the full asking price. Have you never heard of gazumping, Mavis? Have you ever heard of a thump in the mouth, Alec? Give my love to your mother. Right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so All right, pal. Yeah. Hey, hey, nice to have you, you back, Andy. Safe and sound, Cheers, Bill. See you, mate. Take care. Bye bye. <coughs> hey, Bill, a small word. Yes, Fred. Just in case there's any difficulties between us. Like what? My impending marriage to Maureen. Oh, you're thinking that I might bear your grudge like? No, 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 no. I know you wouldn't quibble with a lady's choice. 
I just want to say that there's no ill feeling on my part for what happened before. Well, that's lucky for me, isn't it? And I just hope there won't be any ill feeling for the future. I wouldn't worry yourself about it, Fred. Not now, I won't. You don't think it's too soon? Too soon? For what? We hadn't planned it, had we? Well, then we will... we'll plan around it, won't we? I just wondered if you'd rather wait a couple of years. Sweetheart, we're gonna have a baby. I think that's fantastic. Don't you think it's fantastic? I'm just in a bit of a world. You should have told me as soon as you suspected anything. How, how, how long do you think it's been? I uh, don't know. I mean, it could be eight weeks, it could be less. Fancy you thinking I wouldn't want it. We've got to be sure, though, haven't we? Come here. Do you know what this is? This is the happiest day of my life. You should hate me, Richie. Why? Because I've messed up your life. I could never hate you, no matter what you did. Look, I only want to help you. But I've been so horrible to you. Well, you didn't mean to be. You were just floundering. My parents should have told me they'd been in touch with you. Well, I think they feel very guilty about you. Good. Good. I want them to feel guilty. I don't know. I want you to be happy, Sam. Happy so they can get on with their own lives, yeah. That's not a bad thing to want, is it? Not for the past to stop hurting you all. But I don't want to forgive and forget. I want revenge, really, if I'm honest. Yeah, well, maybe that's because you won't forgive yourself for what you think you've done to me and to whoever else. You're still so beautiful, Sam. Well, we can't sit here all night. You'll have to keep down on the sofa, Curly. Eh? Well, you can hardly go back home, can he? Well, why not? Well, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? It's your home. Yeah, and there's a marital reunion going on in it. Why can't you stay on your sofa? I'm not saying can't. I'm just wondering why it's necessary. Well, we all know where you're coming from. Go on, Curly. There's a sleeping bag under the stairs. Oh, all right, if Des doesn't object. I don't care. Uh, right, then. OK. Uh, have you got a spare toothbrush? Use your finger. Yeah, all right, OK. Uh, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, what a brilliant evening. Go out with Samantha. End up bedding Curly Watts. Thanks for that. Why didn't you tell me Sam was married? Because she asked me not to. Oh, she is a dark horse, isn't she? It's a pity I've staked so much in her then, isn't it? Because I have, Ange. I've really gone and got myself involved. And for what? Yeah, but you don't think she's getting back with him, do you? Well, he's the one who's spending the night with her, isn't he? Yeah, but not together. They won't be. Surely not. So, you've still not told me what your plans are, Sam? I don't have any plans. Nothing definite, anyway. I suppose if you had met someone else, you would have wanted to dissolve our marriage, wouldn't you? I'd have thought you'd have been the first one to do that. Oh, no, you thought wrong then, didn't you? Curly must have decided to stay at Des's or something. So we've got the night to ourselves, you mean? Oh, I'm exhausted, Richie. I'm going to have to turn in soon. OK. Well, we've got plenty of time, haven't we? I'm really glad you know about it all now. Yeah, well, from now on, we'll talk about the future, not the past. Mm. You don't mind sleeping on the sofa, do you? No, no, if that's where you want me to sleep. Right. I'll just go and get your a pillow and a duvet, then. Sam. Don't be scared of me. Morning. Morning. I tell you what, my sofa's more comfy than Des Barnes is. Oh, you didn't have to do that, Curly. This is your home. Yeah, well, I thought I'd give you a bit of space, you know, a bit of time. Sort yourselves out. And did you? Oh, we talked for hours and chatted. Yeah, well, the past has a nasty habit of coming up and poking the eye when you least expect it. <laughs> Still here, is he? Yeah. Not in my room. I wasn't asking. Of course you Do you still have any feelings for him? Apart from guilt, you mean? Yeah, yeah, I suppose I do. 
Like? Well, I thought it'd all be clear cut, you know, finished business. But seeing him again. So he's still in with a chance? Oh, I don't know. I can't think straight at the minute. Someone thought time, is it? Should have woken me. You do realise we're soon going to be drowning in a sea of little knitted things? No, I hope not. Most amnits look like badly washed dishcloths. Oh, then you'd better have a word with my mother before she starts getting her needles hot. I never know when you're being serious. It's not me. It's my mother. She is a serious serial knitter, my mother. You always do this. Do what? Start getting all jokey when something serious comes up, like you try to pretend it's not there. That's not how it is. Then how is it? I'm just trying to warn you before she starts dropping not so subtle hints all over the place. I've told you, sweetheart, I'm tickled pink that we're having a sprogler. Mm -hmm. Hey, if he is a she that looks anything like her gorgeous mother, I should be even more tickled, right? I'd be a bit of a letdown after all this if we go to the doctor and say it's a false alarm. No, oh, I doubt that. Have you rung yet? No, surgery doesn't open till half eight. Well, I'll tell you what. If you try and get one for this morning, then I'll pop back and you can tell me the good news over lunch. If I am right, I hope I don't start showing till after the wedding, because I don't want to be walking down the aisle with this big bump under my wedding dress. Won't make any difference. She'll still be the most gorgeous bride in the world with or without bump. Alan. Thank you. For what? It's true. For not minding. I've told you, sweetheart, I am tickled pink. If you're that desperate to know what's going on, get your bum over there and find out. I'm not that desperate. Mm, could have fooled me. I don't know what you're getting your knickers in such a twist for anyway. It's not as if they're a couple. Not in any real sense of the word. Well, she must have cared in the first place to marry him. And do a runner, what, a couple of days after? Can hardly have been the love of her life, can it? It wasn't because of him. Because of what, then? Oh, this deep, dark secret we're not supposed to talk about. I must say, I wish I had a mysterious past. Can I get you fellas going? Oh, all right, you're upset, I know, I'm sorry. Question still is, what are you going to do about it? What do you suggest? Challenge him to pistols at dawn? I told you last night, just because he's back don't mean she's going to fall into his arms, does it? Oh, maybe you're right. Sit it out for a bit, see what happens. Only I won't sit too long. She might think you're being considerate, or she might think you don't care. It's not too early. Only I was passing and I wondered if one of you might like a lift. Oh, really? And which mm. one of us would that be? Any of you. All oh, right. Stephen, mm -hmm. there's a wee girl here offering to be your chauffeur, or should I say chauffeurs, even? Oh. Uh, well, I, uh, I usually go in the van, really. Must be cramped. Three big fellas in there. Mm, oh, aye. And she was just passing, you know. Oh, well, fair enough. Now you fit, then. Mm. Bye, Jim. Cheerio, now. Hi. Pack yourself on. Nice sweet girl like that there. You could do a hell of a lot worse, you could. Oh, thanks, Dad. Lesson number two after the birds and bees, is that? Eh? Cheerio, night. Hang on. What? Contingency plan. Well, might be worth looking into, just in case I hit a brick wall with the dragon lady. Are you sure this meeting's such a good idea? I mean, you did say you never wanted to set eyes on her again. Well, I don't. But it'll be worth it if it gets this mess sorted. What's she asking for it, do you know? I have no idea. Got it nice inside, has she? Plenty of decent bits and bobs, I should imagine. She looks the type who'd have a few good pots. Be like that. So this guy, Curly. <laughs> What sort of name is that, anyway? It's a nickname, because of his hair. I can't call him Curly. What's his real one? Believe me, he prefers Curly. And he's just a friend, yeah? Yeah. That's not the reason you made me sleep on there last night, then. We haven't seen each other for over a year. You didn't expect me to fall into your arms, did you? Mm, I suppose not. You never did before. <clears throat> right. Hi. Hi. Uh, I I'm off. Uh, very nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Will you be staying? Well, it's up to Samantha, but don't worry if I do stick around for a bit, I'll find a B&B, &B, yeah? Right, uh, see you then. All right, see you then. See ya. Poor Curly. 
Poor old Curly. Not big into emotional scenes. He looks so repressed to me. As it happens, he's been through a very bad marriage split himself. Still very painful. I don't know how he feels. Oh, no, you don't, Richie. You don't. When I left you, we'd only known each other a couple of weeks. We were hardly the love affair of the century. Yeah, well, we could have been. You know, if you trusted me enough to tell me what happened to you. <sighs> maybe. Well, there's no maybe about it, Sam. You know, we could have been happy together, worked it through. You know, I was crazy about you. Yeah, I know. And this Des, another friend? That's right, yeah. And does he know about you? About my little problem, you mean? I don't broadcast it to the entire world. No, but someone you're involved with might begin to suspect. Oh, and this is no problem when you're with him. There still is. Not just with you, with anybody. Do you know you could have knocked me down with a feather? Her having a secret husband somewhere, never a word. Man, you know, it surprised me about that one. She always did keep her cards close to her chest. Oh, sorry I'm late. I brought me ill in the grid. Yeah, well, now you are here. Can you get Louise shampoo, please? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, by the way, was it... Hello, Fiona. Yeah, what's happened to me, you know? I was caught me ill. You know, oh, going on Dean's game. Yeah. I just stopped dead like that. Honestly, God, I felt such a fool. Fee. It's the doctors. They've had a cancellation for 10 o'clock. Can you make it? Tell them, yeah. Yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, I've just got a little bit of a tummy upset, you know. Yeah, Fiance's a bit of a curry you. addict. All right, Spicy, bye. the better. Yeah. So it's all settled then? Well, barring it legal stuff, yeah. Oh, and is it nice? Well, it's not grand, but it's very cosy. <laughs> bit like yours truly, then. Oh. Uh, uh, you've got a good surveyor, I trust. Well, we only had the offer accepted last night. It was very nail-biting. That's one thing you mustn't skimp on. If you want any recommendations... Thank you, Fred. It's all in hand. Oh. Well, you'll be anxious to do a swift deal on your place, then? Yes, cos we don't want to have to go for don't a bridging loan. we need to be discussing thins and outs, do you? You want to avoid a bridging loan? I say you want to avoid a bridging loan. Interests are killer. No. Quick sale's your best bet, even if you have to come down in price. ta -ra. Bye, Bye, Fred. Bye. I do envy you two, you know. Brand new stars. We'll never do it now. Yeah. Bye, love. Well, what have I said? I don't like discussing my financial arrangements in public. They're not your finances, Rita. It's our finances. And quite frankly, if you're going to get snippy every time I open my mouth, we might as well call the whole thing off right now. I'm sorry. It's just all so scary. But I shouldn't take it out on you. There's nothing to be scared of. It's like a wonderful adventure, and we're lucky to have the chance. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day when Audrey Roberts envies me. <laughs> Here, trouble, Warry. Who? Oh. Your husband. No, it was my fault. I should never have married him. Well, we all make mistakes when we're young and fat, was there? No, I did. And I must say, he seems a pleasant enough young man. Have you met him? Yeah, just now in bar. He's been telling me all about his son. What are you doing here? I wanted to see where you worked. It's not what I expected. Yeah, well, it suits me, and I'm busy. No, well, don't worry, I won't get in the way. The gent's over there, is it? Yeah. Yeah. He seems really nice. Yeah, he is. The house across the road. What the heck do we want to go there for? There might be something decent we could get off her cheap and flog on. She might have some valuable antiques. She looks the type. You wouldn't know an antique if it jumped out at chip pan. No, but I can smell a bargain when I see one. I've got a nose for it. Well, can I be godmother then? Maxime, you shut up. I've been two months gone, I don't need to have one though. Knock off early tonight, I'm taking you somewhere special. Oh, what, both of us? No, this is a private celebration. Oh, celebration is it? Yeah, it is. Um, it's the uh, anniversary of the day we met. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> you tell me upset all right now, is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Mm. Don't worry about letting me down gently. Just tell me where I stand. Not now, Des, please. Been seen her long? Not long, no. Oh, it must have been a shock the other night, me turning up like that, eh? Did you know she was married? She mentioned it, yeah. 
and that you've been apart for over a year. Yeah, well, hopefully that will all change now. Eh? Yeah. I mean, we've had our problems, but nothing we can't sort out now. We've uh, cleared the air. Don't give up on a girl like that without a fight, do you? <laughs> Oh, do you love? Can we have a look round? Uh, well, it's viewing by appointment only. Oh, but we're neighbours, aren't we? Yeah, it's not as if we're strangers who are going to mug you. I oh, need your engagement ring. Will you belt up the pair of you? Whatever will the lady think of us? Well, I'm afraid it's not very convenient. A quick butcher's will suffice. Aye, come on. Hey, do you remember that guy who wore a crystal doofer on a piece of string around his neck? Yeah. Samantha, love. Customers want serving. Yeah, right. Um, are you going? Mm, there doesn't seem much point in hanging around. I'm sorry, Dad. It's all right. I know when to retreat. He's a nice chap. Thinks a lot of you. Yeah, I know. Makes two of us. Still, he was there first. Can't argue with that. I still think you'd have been better doing this through a solicitor. Well, I'd prefer to keep them out of it if I can. Anyway, the bottom line is, Linda has now decided she wants to sell the house and split the proceeds. What, you mean she's not going to live there after all that? Yeah, real dog-in-the-manger stuff, I know. She doesn't want it, but she doesn't want us to have it. Well, at least this way I might come out of it with some cash. Hey, Vera, uh, what? what's the latest? You know, talk about yeah. dark horses. Oh, uh, she's not the only one with a secret. It's not come from me, mind. There's a certain hairdresser who'll be going down the aisle soon with a big uh, bunch of flowers in front of her. Fiona expecting? Oh, get away. Do you know I had her down as expanding her business before her wasteland? She always seems so career minded to me. Well, Mother Nature had other plans. Gossiping old biddies. I hope I never get like that. Steve? What's wrong? Oh, uh, nothing. You know what I mean? Bother she does it, your ex-girlfriend being pregnant. No. No, it doesn't. Can we, uh, can we get out of here? This place is doing me a deal. Hey, who's Baldunican? He is a singer, and a very tuneful singer. Not like that senseless noise you inflict on us. And will you please stop doing that? You break the springs. Hey, this isn't one of those funny ones, is it? Well, I heard you've got done for growing pot. <laughs> this is one of Derek, my late husband's favourite plants. It's a peace lily. And we did not get done. It was just some ridiculous practical joke on somebody's part. Now, if you're not interested in buying the house, I'd be very glad if you'd please leave. We'll have to have a look round upstairs before we make our final decision. Eh, hey, Jan? Yeah. Definitely right, now how many bedrooms did you say I had? Just the two? Well, that's OK, because the girls share, you see. Sam? Oh, I didn't think you'd be back yet. Yeah, Vera told me to go home early. She said my mind wasn't on the job, and she was right. I'm glad. Means my turning up hasn't left you totally cold. Of course not. You're a part of my life. Yeah, not for long enough, though, eh? Yeah, but now you know why, don't you? If it hadn't happened... him... do you think we would have been OK? I can't answer that. It did happen and poisoned everything after that. You can't let it wreck your life forever. Well, I won't. So where do I come into the picture, eh? Do I come into it? Oh, don't ask me about the future, Richie. I've only just got rid of the ghost from the past. The truth is you're still obsessed with her. Who? Don't give me who. Fiona. That's why it knocked you sideways when you heard she might be pregnant. Why should I be bothered if they're having a baby? Because you're still in love with her. And you can't bear the thought of her having another man's baby. Uh, what is this, Rachel? D DIY psychiatry? <laughs> you don't need to be a psychiatrist to know what your problem is. Uh, you're the one with the problem, Rachel. You could be right. I must be crazy putting up with this. But I won't carry on being second best, Steve. 
I have got some self-esteem. Either you forget her, or you forget me. Simple as that. Ah, oh, Rachel. <clears throat> Well, well, that's just about typical of you, son, eh? Get yourself a nice wee girl, could be the makings of you, and what do you do? You treat her like dirt? You don't know when you're well off, Stephen. <clears throat> Fiona's pregnant. What? She's having McKenna's baby. You're hammering that a bit, aren't you? Dutch courage. What for? You. Me. I just can't leave it like this, son. What were you talking to Des about in the pub? He was um, telling me that you'd not been seeing each other very long. Yeah, that's right. Well, I was glad, really. You know, at least it wouldn't knock him too much off balance when I told him. Told him what? Then I was um, hoping we could give it another go. <sighs> OK, maybe I did jump the gun a bit. And that's why I needed a few drinks inside me. Give me the guts to ask you for a second chance. Only I was scared stiff at getting knocked back again. Sam, I don't give a toss about the past. It's the future I'm thinking about, our future. Sam, it could be brilliant. I still love you, Sam, that hasn't changed. Say something, even if it's only get lost. Hey, I won't mind that sheepskin rug. Better than that monkey old thing I've got. Yeah, but it's dead sexy wriggling your bare toes on it. That bathroom cabinet would come in handy. Mm. And that little table in the conserves it. Do for putting in the bedroom. Tell you, hey, kid. Look, yeah. for the last time, it's the house that's for sale, not the content. Oh. Give me that. <laughs> oh, oh, Fred, how lovely. Oh, do come in. I'm afraid you're going to have to leave now. Mr. Elliot is a genuine buyer. He's got an appointment. Afternoon. Afternoon. Ah, he's a genuine buyer, not riffraff like us, I suppose. Knock it off, <gasps> Leanne. Thank you for showing us round. It's really very nice. Aye. Well, a bit too mimsy for us. Sorry to have took up your time. Come on, you two. Try. Well, I've heard of warm welcomes, but that puts Jenny on cake. I'm sorry, Fred. I had to tell them that tale to get rid of them. They're, they're a nightmare. Well, as it happens, it's not a tale I've come to view. What now? Well, if it's not convenient... Oh, no. No, it's not. No, no, you look a bit mithered. Tell you what, I'll come round tomorrow afternoon and you can do me the grand tour then. Will that suit? Oof, dear, what happened to him? Poor old Richie. Started off needing Dutch courage and ended up drowning his sorrows. And you gave him his marching orders? No, not exactly. He asked me to go back with him and fell asleep before I could give him an answer. Which would have been? I was waiting to see what would come out of my mouth. Not always the wisest course of action. No, but the only one I could think of at the time. No, I'd have probably said I wasn't ready to make a commitment yet. To anybody. Yet? Oh, don't you push me as well, Curly. Everyone else flaming is. But what I do know is he's a good man. And he deserves a lot better than he got from me. Hey, where are you going? Oh, don't tell me. I can guess. <laughs> mm. See you later. See ya. So on the strength of what he says, you ready to chuck in the towel? That's pathetic. At least get her side. She knows how I feel. Why hasn't she been round if she's not back with him? Now's your chance to find out. Hiya. Hiya. Bottom out this misery, will you? It's oh. not a bad lad under all the blarney. I know what Richie told you, and it's not true. Why did he say it, then? Because he wanted it to be true. He was hoping I'd agree to give it another go. And will you? No. No, it's over. Cheers, mate. Still can't get my head round. 
Me. A mum. It's weird. <laughs> me a dad? That's even weirder. Oh, it's my mother's birthday on April the 15th. You can get me some brownie points if it's born then. She already thinks the sun shines out here. Anyway, the doctor only said mid-April. Can't be any more specific than that. The problem is, cover for the salon. Get another girl in? Oh, and it's called Hair by Fiona. Well, get a girl called Fiona. <laughs> oh, hi, don't worry. Be happy. I am. I am. Steph wanted us to have another throw of the dice. Were you tempted? Oh, briefly. For all the wrong reasons. Then I said no. Was that common sense rearing its little head, or was there someone else? Sense, I think. For once in my decidedly unsensible life. There was no one else. Not then. But since? Too many, plenty, you'd say. You know my history, Sam. Open book. And not much choice round here. Might have shocked some, but tough. I'm sorry if I hurt people, of course I am. Especially, well, it don't matter. All the worst mistakes, all the naff things I did just helped me grow up to know what I really want. You're lucky, I wish I did. That was your cue to say, what do you want, Des? And what would you have said? You know what I'd have said. None of this mess would have happened if I'd have told Richie the truth to start with. Was too screwed up. How did he take it? How do you think? He was angry about what had happened. He was angry with me for not telling him and suspicious that I'd not had a sexual relationship since. You haven't, have you? Not till now. Sam? I think we've waited long enough. Are you sure I can't get you something? Eggs, bacon? No, no, thanks. No, I'm not into big breakfast either. What time was it when she went? Last night? Eleven-ish. And this was to see this Des character, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Can I get you some toast? Can I ask you something? Has she said anything to you about what she's thinking of doing? I mean, where I'm concerned. I mean, is she coming back with me or what? No, no, she hasn't said anything, no. I suppose I should never have come. But I had to see her again, I had to. And now I have, I realise I still love her as much as I ever did, and I, I can't lose her again. I just couldn't stand that. Don't you want me to make you some breakfast? Oh, I haven't got time. I shouldn't have stayed this long. I shouldn't have stayed at all. Hmm, but you're glad you did. Oh, I think you know the answer to that. Oh, right, yeah, we have a visitor for breakfast. Morning, Samantha. Good morning, Angie. Oh, listen, I'd better go. He's bound to be awake. And what he'll be thinking, I've no idea. What are you going to tell him? Well, I can't think of anything else. But it's going to have to be the truth. I will see you later. Hmm, hope so. So, broken your vow of celibacy, have you? I didn't know I'd taken one. You didn't? The women of Weatherfield took one on your behalf. I had a feeling someone had. Do you not get any of that, um, morning sickness? No. Not yet, anyway. I don't think all women do, though. I should really ask women what her pregnancy is like, shouldn't I? Fee, you know I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased I'm dead chuffed, right? Yeah. Well... I still can't understand how we've managed it. I mean, we've both done GCSE biology, right? So we know what causes it, and we know how to stop it, which is what I thought we were doing. Yeah, so did I. Remind me, what, uh, what are you working today? Hmm? Oh, lights. All I can think is, is that it was um, when, I, when I left, which is what, seven or eight weeks ago, which would fit then, wouldn't it? I don't know what you're getting at. 
nothing. I'm just saying that uh, I moved out, you stopped taking uh, precautions, then I moved back, and it's taken us a few days to get back into the old routine, which is when it must have happened. Mm, we'll never know, will we? <laughs> um, right, I've got a business to run. Okay. Listen, I'm not complaining. Whatever caused it, I am. I'm glad. Good. Listen, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to leave you. See, I have to get to work. Because you see... Ah! Ah, oh, you're back then. Yeah. We were beginning to wonder. How are you feeling? How should I be feeling? Well, you had a fair amount to drink, didn't you? Oh, yeah, well, I tend to when I don't know what's expected of me. Uh, listen, I'm off to work. Right, Kelly, um, thanks for everything. Hey, it's OK. It's just... I'm not going to say nothing. It's your life, all right? Bye. Goodbye. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers mate. Yeah. Right, I'll just go and get the change then. Well, you know, hang on, hang on. Before you do, do you think you could tell me what's going on? I mean, I wake up to find myself with this guy you share a house with, and he says you're out seeing another guy who you say you're just friends with. I mean, come on, Sam. Just what is this? Let me get changed, and then I'll tell you. Hey, Fee. What? <sighs> Nothing, I just hear congratulations are in order. How do you mean? Well, uh, the word on the street is that you've a baby on the way. Who told you that? Well, I don't remember. Point is, is it true? Yeah. Right, uh, well, are you pleased? Yeah, I am. So is Alan. See you later. Yeah. The truth is, if we're honest, I don't know you. Not really. And you don't know me. So whose fault's that? All right, mine, I suppose. You were the one that walked out on our marriage. I know last night you did it again, didn't you? Went to see old friend Des, yeah? I don't want to talk about Des. I want to talk about us. Yeah, but you're not denying that that's where you were. That you spent the night with him. Yes. Thank you. A bit of honesty for a change. Only why couldn't you have just admitted it when I first arrived? You could have saved us all this, couldn't you? But no. No, you couldn't, could you? And I'll tell you why not. Because all this is what you like. It's what you get off on, in it. Therapy sessions. Let's all talk about Samantha's problems, eh? Is that why you came here? To be horrible to me? No. It wasn't, believe it or not. Look, what I'm trying to tell you is, I know we're technically married, I know that. Mm. But there is nothing else between us, is there? There could be. No, no, I don't think so. Because you don't want there to be. And why not? Because you've got Des. I think you better go. I can't. I love you. No, you don't. You don't, because you don't know me. Oh, and uh, Des does, does he? Will you stop going on about Des? The reason I don't want to get back with you is nothing to do with Des. It's because there is nothing between us. And as far as I'm concerned, there never was. Oh, right. Well, now we know the name. I'm sorry, but you made me say that. So uh, what, what did you marry me for, eh? A joke? I'm sorry I married you. Oh, it was awful. They just took over the house, and even when I asked them not to, they were looking in the wardrobes and going in my drawers. Why she let them in in first place, I'll never understand. It's £19.30 yeah. to the end of the week, I think. Well, you? then they started wanting to buy things. Oh, not the house. I don't think they ever had any interest in that, but just got bits and pieces. I mean, I felt I was running a jumble sale. You see, it, it can be very upsetting, can moving. My advice would be stop where you are. Hey, that's enough of that. It was the batter's bit that upset it, not moving. Mm. So where is it you're going? Cart melon, oh, don't you? Yeah. Well, what is there there that you can't find here? Oh, there's <laughs> lots of things. There's yes. beautiful views and open countryside. Fresh air, peace and quiet. Well, I mean, them things are all right for a bit until novelty wears off, and then you'll be crying out for some traffic and some good, honest pollution. Mm. What's he on about now? Now uh, worth listening to. He's trying to persuade us that we won't like Cartmel. <laughs> Got a very impressive priory. Wouldn't mind being buried there. Oh, well, you never mentioned that, you see. I can see the attraction now. Nice place to be buried. 
All right, I'll see you then. Bye bye. Thank you. Look, what have I got to do? Swear on the Bible? No, just forget it. How can I when you think I'm the one who's told everybody? Oh, morning! Hiya. Morning, Audrey. Yeah, I know I'm a bit early, but I thought there's no point in standing outside, no. is there? You are looking very well, Fiona. Thank you. Well, why don't you take a seat? I'll get Maxine to get you a cup of coffee, eh? Yeah. Oh, you've heard about Samantha, have you? Oh, yeah. Husband yeah. turning up out the blue. Yep, we have. There was something a bit peculiar there. I mean, keeping all the fellas at arm's length. At that age, you don't behave like that unless there's a reason. <laughs> you are looking radiant. Tell you what, we'll get you started as soon as we can. Maxine, isn't Fiona looking well? Right. I'm going out. Okay. Oh, do you, uh, do you want to join me at the Rovers for a bit of lunch later on? No, I can't. We're too busy. I'm just going to stay here and have a sandwich. But don't let that stop you, right? Oh, sure. Okay. Bye-bye. See you, sweetheart. I suppose you think I told her as well. Well, I think it's fairly obvious that someone has, don't you? Well, if somebody has, it wasn't me. You can get a bus at the end of the road. Look who it is. Good old Des. Richie. Richie. How are you? All right. You should have come over. We've just been talking about how best to arrange a divorce. That's got nothing to do with Des. Oh, I think it does. I think it's all about Des. You're proud of yourself, are you? Destroying somebody's marriage. Oh, and... just ignore him. You haven't. Oh, but you have. You're not denying my wife was with you last night. No, the way I Look, understand... you don't have to answer him. Oh, I don't mind answering him. The way I understand it is your marriage was over years ago. Not for me, no. You know, I should kill you for what you've done, shouldn't I? Richie, please stop it! Do you want a divorce? I've said, I've said. Do I've... you want one or not? Yes. Too bad. Because I'm saying no. I'm saying we're man and wife, and we're going to stay man and wife. And I'll be back. Remember that, you. I'll be back for my wife. You okay? I've never seen him like that before. Yeah, well, I'd be a lot worse if I was in his shoes. Losing you. Oh, I've got to get to work. I'm late. Yeah, so have I. Listen, see you tonight, eh? If you still want to. Talk about them because uh, I haven't got them. You're fantastic, you know that. What do you mean? You make it sound as though I've dragged you here and you can't wait to get away again. Oh, we're gonna have another argument, are we? That's up to you. And anyway, it's not a matter of what I'm going to tell you, it's a matter of what you're going to tell me. And what about? What I said last night. Whether you want to carry on seeing me or whether you want to spend the rest of your life dreaming about Fiona. Uh, gin and tonic, Samantha, love, please. Your husband not here? No, he's not. Uh, I must say, you know, Paul Daniels couldn't have topped that. Producing a husband out of thin air. Well, I have, because I've made him disappear again. Oh, no. It's a good thing I'm spoken for, else you'd not be safe looking as lovely as that. I say you'd not be safe. Well, you can't think that much of me, Fred, otherwise you wouldn't be marrying someone else. Don't you be too sure. Scotch and threat, Samantha Love, and if that's Audrey's, I'm paying for that and all. Oh, Fred, thank you. Uh, uh, Fred, Fred. What? Have, have you a minute? Now, listen. I'm ordering the food for your nuptials today, and once I do, it'll have to be paid for. Yes. Well, go on, what's your problem? Well, there's no problem. I'm just checking in case you're having second thoughts. Why should I be doing that when I'm marrying the most wonderful lady that ever trod this earth? Second thoughts never in this world. You get that fatted calf and you get it slaughtered and laid out on this bar top for next Monday. So, um, what you're saying is, when I'm seeing you, I'm not even to, to think about anybody else, then? It's not anybody else we're talking about. Oh, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, well, I should do, yeah. Because it's all you ever do say every time we go out. To be honest with you, I'm getting a bit sick of it. 
Oh, you are, are you? Well, don't worry, because you won't be hearing it anymore. What are you doing? Going. What do you think I'm doing? Oh, and don't worry. This time, I won't be ringing up and asking if I can see you again. So you can go to your precious Fiona, and you can tell her that you're all hers. Because that's all you've ever been, really, isn't it? Even when you've been seeing me, it's always been her you've been thinking about. Oh, well, come in. Thank you. Oh, yes. It's just as nice as I remember. Mind? I couldn't see you and your dear departed having out else but a lovely home. Oh, well, I must admit, there's a, a lot of tender, loving care gone into it. Uh, too much, perhaps. Perhaps it shows that we've nothing much else in our lives, I don't know. Oh, and you've got a budgie. <laughs> Hello, little budgie! Please, don't frighten him. Oh, so sorry. So, uh, your asking price is 47000 That includes carpets and curtains, I take it. Oh, well, yes, I suppose so. Right, that I'm very interested. Oh. But there are two conditions I must insist on. Well, well, don't you want to see round first? Eh? Oh, yes. Yes, I suppose we ought to do things properly. Alan, what customers to see to? It won't take a minute. I just want to ask you something. It's about Steve MacDonald. Has he... Has he, um, been pestering you at all? No. Why? All right, maybe not now, when I left. That three weeks when I wasn't here, did you see anything of him then? See anything of him? Was he round here? Did you have anything to do with him? Oh, that's like weeks ago. How am I supposed to remember that? I think he would. I don't think he'd have any problem remembering, especially, especially now. Are you asking what I think you're asking? Did you have anything to do with him? You mean, might he be... Yes. I don't know how you can even bring yourself to even think that. Oh, you think I want to? I know he still fancies you. What, and you think I fancy him? You think I invite him in the minute that you're out? I don't see how he could still fancy you without a little bit of encouragement that's along the way. Awful. That's really awful. Just tell me, I can't you? I am doing! I haven't been anywhere near him, and he hasn't been anywhere near me. But I don't expect you to believe that. I mean, why should I? You seem to have already made up your mind. Wait. No. Well, the, uh, the conservatory hasn't been up very long, but well, we found it a very pleasant place to sit in the evenings. I'm sure you did, yes. You can just look out on the garden and watch things developing. Well, you can if you want to. Now, down to business. Now, I, I take it there's nobody ahead of me? Nobody else who's put in an offer? No, nothing like that. Well, I am offering 47,000 full asking price oh. together with carpets and curtains. Plus, as I said, two conditions. The first is that we keep this just between you and me. You should tell nobody else. Well, I, I might have to mention it to Rita because what happens to the house could affect her plans. Well, I'll accept Rita then. Oh. Only ask her to keep her gob shut as well, will you? Now, the second is, I want a quick sale, fast as you can, so shake on it. Oh, oh no, I, I, I need a little bit of time to think it over. Think it over? I say, think it over. You want to sell, I want to buy. Gosh! Both people would say that was an ideal situation. Yeah, well, I, I still need time to consider. How much time? Shall I pop in this evening? Oh, no. Tomorrow, if you come back tomorrow, I'll have decided then. Hello, Andrew. You had that shopping, son? Uh, I did, yeah, and I've put it away in your receipt and changed it in there. Good man. Uh, where's your didn't phone, did she? No. Good. Because I'm not putting over with her anymore. You know, she had a massive go at me this dinner and then she just, she just got up and walked out. Do you think she's trying to tell you something? Well, she told me. And I told her she can get lost. Oh, very good. Uh, excuse me, right. I've put the kettle on, so perhaps one of you two could make the tea. I'll just get the phone, shall I? You know what, did I tell you? This would be it, isn't it? Hello. Jim. Hello. For me, yeah? Hang on a minute. No, it's not. 
Go on ahead. Um, would it be possible for us to maybe meet up later tonight, maybe? <laughs> Are you uh, sure you got the right phone number? Look, I know what I've said and everything, but I really need to talk, please. Okay. Well, uh, let's, uh, how do you want to play this then? You want me to come over there? I don't really want anyone noticing, so could we not say meet by accident? I don't suppose you can finish early tonight. I don't suppose I can, no. Tomorrow then? Working and Friday and Saturday. But. What? Well, next week I've got the whole week off, and as yet I've got nothing planned. Mm. She must be off her head. Why'd you say that? Well, I got to know her husband, and he seemed like a nice bloke. So's Des. Mm. Well, from what I've heard, it wasn't much of a marriage anyway. Yeah, they haven't seen each other for about 14 months. Yeah. I've not seen Raquel for 10 months. I'm still married to her. Well, actually, I'm not married to her. Well, actually, I'm not married to anyone, am I? Des, Sam. Mm. Good luck to you. Oh, cheers, mate. It's going to him. So do you fancy it, then? Week's cruise, lying on the deck during the day, dining in style at night. On a canal boat. Oh, my canal boat. Mm -hmm. And you get to stay in the captain's cabin. Mm -hmm. Oh, seriously, you love it. Yeah? Oh, all right, then. Go on. Hey. Yes, lady. Uh, vodka and tonic and sweet sherry, please. Right. Well, I don't get it. He offered you the full asking price. Yes. Well, why didn't you snatch his hand mm -hmm. off? Well, I, I just wanted time to think. What about? It's my house. I'll sell it as and when I choose. Sorry, I suppose. Well, what are you up to these days? <laughs> I'm practising keeping my mouth shut. Oh, yeah. Got the anger bit? Well, I hope so. <laughs> no, it's our Maureen marrying fat Fred Elliot. <laughs> I've tried and tried, but I can't see the sense in it. I think she's been a fool to herself. But I'm determined not to make things worse for her. I'll say nothing, even if it kills me. Well, Maud, they are both grown-ups. There's a fair chance to know what they're doing. Not our Maureen. She's got no judgment she never did have. Mm. Still, whatever happens, I'm keeping my opinions to myself. Or, if you're desperate, you can always tell me. I might just do that. Not having doubts about moving, are you? <laughs> Why do you ask? Because you won't sell Fred your house. Oh, I'm not saying that I won't sell. I just need time to get used to the idea. Well, it sounds to me as if you're having doubts. Which you're entitled to. And you will let me know what's happening, won't you? You'll both know tomorrow. Both you and Fred. Well, well, well. Fancy seeing you here doing your sweeping outside the shop, eh? And me having a wee down around the Rosamond Street to post me letters, eh? So, just bumped into each other for a wee chat. What could be more innocent than that? Look, I just don't want anybody saying anything to Alan. Things are bad enough as they are. Look, I'm sorry. But despite the news? Yeah, he's got a bee in his bonnet about Steve. About whether he was around when... When he... I was around? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, tell him no. Yeah, I have done. What's the problem, then? <laughs> problem is... Evening. All right. Hey, Morton. Oh, and the terror again, eh? Ah, yeah, well, someone has to, don't they? I'll tell you what, I'll give it a word myself in a minute, see if I like it. Go for it, Jim. All right. Uh, the problem is that I can't see how I've managed to get pregnant by Alan. Whoa, 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 listen, hold your horses. Are you thinking what I think you're thinking? Listen, I've had to snip, you know. I couldn't get you, never mind anyone else, pregnant, even if I had a year to try. Yeah, I know, but when you had the operation... Aye. It did work, didn't it? I mean, they told you that. They said it had done everything that it was supposed to do and... Yeah, they do tests and all that stuff, eh? Then they send you off in your way and say, go forth and multiply no longer, Mr McDonald's. Back again, eh? <laughs> hey, look at the cut of your man, eh? Two minutes out the boozer needs to go back in for more. I know, eh? Promise the kids some crisps. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got him. Eh? Right, so you're saying that it couldn't possibly be you, right? Well, how could it be me? But I know I'm not making any sense. It's just Alan frightened me. He started going on about Steve, and then I just started imagining all this. Thanks. Okay. So now you've finished your sweeping, and I can down around the corner and post my letters, eh? Yeah. I'll see you, Faye.
He hasn't taken one blind bit of notice. Really? What, are you still pestering her? Mm. Well, more than she's letting on, but I can see it. I can see there's something she doesn't want to tell me. You sure you don't mind? I know I'm asking you to stick your neck out. Look, I'm going to be your best man, aren't I? Yeah, I hope so. So part of my duty is to get you to the altar and Fiona there with you. Come on, remind me, what's this Tilreg's name? Stephen MacDonald. Lives at number 11 Coronation Street. Yeah, clever devil, I remember. We'll have him, don't worry. I'm fine. Yes, she's fine. No, I've got no news. I'm not being awkward, Mother. I'm, I'm just on my way out of work. Look, can't I ring you when I've got a bit more time? OK. I'm going. Bye. Oh, you think there's no news? Don't you know she's going to be a gran? No, not yet. What's Fiona said to you about all this? Not much, really. I don't think she can believe it herself, actually. <laughs> well, neither of us can. Have you told anyone? Look, don't you start. I've already had Fiona on at me about it. Well, just look, if you told your mother, isn't she very likely to tell Fiona's? Yeah, she'd probably start on the phone, actually. Well, we want to tell our parents ourselves in our own time, all right? OK. I won't say anything, all right? Excuse me. Your next client's waiting for you downstairs, Max. OK. I'll take you down for you. I had to ask about Steve. Did you? Yes, I did. Have I asked you what you got up to during our time apart? Should I? There's nothing to tell. But then I've never given you any reason to be suspicious. It's not my ex who's stalking us. Anyway, after everything I've had to put up with, I think it was a perfectly reasonable question. I think it's a good idea if we don't tell either of our parents yet. No. Alan? Don't question Maxine about me, all right? I'm only going for a week, you know. Yeah, but I've only brought some hiking gear. We're going on the boat. Presumably, we're going to get off the boat and have a walk occasionally. Uh-huh. To the pub. You could do with some exercise from what I've seen. <laughs> hey, go out and get your car again. Uh, sure, yeah. And out of a deep sense of gratitude, you can drop us off at the boat tonight. Deal. <laughs> right, I'm going to get some supplies. For the onboard bar, he means. Ha-ha. Uh -huh. See ya. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> <laughs> So, do you think you'll know him any better after a week away? Well, that's the idea, Ange. And uh, do I get kicked out when you come back? I wasn't thinking of moving in. Then again, I haven't been asked. Good. I mean, good for me, yeah, of course I do. But good for you too. He's always rushing into things and then regretting him. So, um, are you sure about ditching your marriage for Dad's? There was nothing to ditch, Ange. It's just that... Uh... It's just that he's had more birds than anyone can count. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, well, I know. But my past's nothing to write home about, either. I saw you pottering around for the window there, so I thought I'd come in and say hello. Oh. <laughs> well, would you like to have a cup of tea with me? Uh, no, thanks. I'll... Oh. Yeah, well, tea would be lovely. <laughs> I'm going away for a few days onto oh. the boat with a friend, Samantha. Oh. Yeah. Will you still be here when we get back, or will you have taken off? No. No, Rita and I have got a lot to do before we go. Ah, yeah. Only the last time I went away was the last I saw of Derek. Oh, yes. Oh, do you know, it, it seems very strange, this big move I'm making without him. I, I just keep wanting to ask him things, what he thinks. And, and, and I look around at all the work we did here together, and, and selling the house, it seems like a betrayal somehow. Well, you need to start again, Maeve. I think you're doing the right thing. You'll be missed. Well, I shall miss a lot of people. You know, if you are having second thoughts, well, that's OK too. No, I'm not. I can't stay here. Not without him. Why aren't you telling your parents? I just don't want to. Not yet, anyway. Is there something wrong with the baby? No. It's nothing like that. 
can talk to me, you know. Maybe you do need your mum. No, I'm all right. It's all just a bit much at the moment. I mean, I'm only 21. I've only just got the business going. Oh, I will manage. I'll help more. Do you regret telling Ellen to soon, yeah, before you decided what you want to do with the baby? Because if you don't mind me saying, you don't look too happy about it either. Oh, it's been a bit of a shock for both of us. We're just, I don't know, we're just getting used to the idea, that's all. Neither of you wanted it. You should have been more careful. Oh, we thought we were being. But you're going to keep it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, did she say how long she'd be? She didn't. She just said she'd several phone calls to make, so she would make them from home. Solicitors, removalists? Possibly, Fred. I really couldn't say. I'll pop over. Uh, leave her. But I'm waiting on her decision, Rita. So am I, but if you push her, we'll never get one. What's the matter, Fred? Is the bride cracking the whip already? No, it's supposed to be a surprise. And see, you're not to breathe a word. Mm. We're moving on, Rita. In Cartmel, who knows? You might meet someone you'd like to say yes to. Ah! Oh, I've been calling the shop, but Ashley didn't know where you'd gone. Now, you, you said you've got everything in place, your finances and so forth. Yes, absolutely. Right, well, if you've got the time and if Rita can spare me for the afternoon, we'll get it all finalised, shall we? Does that mean we've agreed a sale? The house is yours. Well, I'll see you in the row of us tonight, then. Well, I should say that's a fair bet, Wally, wouldn't you? Ah, Steve? Uh, actually, I said I'd go into town with Andy tonight, so, uh, Dad, if you don't mind, can I, yeah? No, go on ahead, clear off. Besides, I'm always quicker without you. Hiya. Hi. Hi, where'd you spring from? Uh, can I can have a word. In public? Are you sure that's wise? Well, I've been thinking and I've been worrying. What about? What do you think? Faye, I told you, you can cross me off your list of suspects. Jim, I haven't got a list. I'm sorry. Like I told you, it couldn't possibly be me. Yeah, I know, but I, I read magazines and I hear customers talking all day about, about people who tell they can't have children and then they do, and about vasectomies that go wrong. Yes, well, mine didn't, did it? I was just wondering if you would go, if you'd go for another test, just to be sure, just, just for my sake, just so that I'd know. And what happens then, Faye, eh? What happens if it's your man's? You just go on ahead and get happily married, don't you? But there's a but, isn't there? What if it's not? What happens then, eh? You just keep the secret, marry your man and have the baby, is that it? No, I couldn't be that dishonest. I couldn't live with myself. Hmm. Yeah, you see, this here's about you again, isn't it? Will you do it, Jim, please? I mean, if I'm certain, then I can reassure Alan, can't I? And then, I don't know, he might stop going on at, at Steve, might he? Well, I see, we're concerned about Steve now, are we? Well, I'll tell you what, Fee. I'll think about it, all right? Round and round the grass we go, Teddy and me. Oh, and... One step, two step, let's have tea. And they all lived happily ever after, like they do. Funnily enough. <laughs> Hiya, girls. Hiya, Grandad. Hiya, Grandad. Hiya. Uh, uh, Sally's invited me now to have my tea with him. Yeah. Um, Rosie? Do you want to see if you can do that yourself now? So, Bill's here. Hiya, Bill. Hiya. Tea's nearly ready. Chris, will you set the table for us? Sure. <coughs> uh, this morning's post still here, Sal. Have you seen it? Yeah, what is it? More bills? No, there's one card. A, a postcard. It's to the girls. Who is it from? It's from your daddy. Can I see it? Um, I'll tell you what. Why don't we both go into the front room, eh? And uh, I'll read it to you. Come on, then. Yeah. That was thoughtful of him. How many more ways can he think of to hurt me, I wonder? Maybe it was an indirect way of him keeping in touch with you. I doubt it. I think so. I mean, I wonder if Natalie knows it's him too. It's probably her idea. Right then, mate, where'd you fancy? Uh, anywhere really, mate. Somewhere with music? Yeah, for you women. Oh, I might lay off the women tonight, actually, mate, and give you a turn. Oh, thanks very much. That's very big of you, Steve. Cheers, Steve mate. Steve McDonald. Yeah? We'd like to come to the station, answer a few questions. What about? Just get in the car. 
What's all this about, Steve? I've no idea, mate. What am I supposed to have done? I said, get in the car. Uh, excuse hey, me, all right, thank hey, you. Yeah, get yeah, I leave him alone. What's he done? We'll talk about that down at the station. Right, well, I'll come with you then. No, no, that won't be necessary. Uh, hold on a minute, this is harassment. I know me right, so I want to know what I've been accused of. You'll find out. All right, just tell all us right. what he's done. Look, Steve, I'll, uh, I'll follow you down there, mate. All right, don't worry, yeah? Pigs! <laughs> Another round, ladies. No, no, not for me. I'd best get a move on. Are you off? Oh, of course. It, it, it's the cookery classes. <laughs> it's Yorkshire puddings tonight. <laughs> How, how's Vera doing? Well, it, I mean, the course has just started, so it, it's really just been the theory so far. What's Vera doing it for? Uh, to, to help Betty out. Alec! Never need helping out before. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Have a nice time at the theatre. I will. Bye then. Bye. Bye bye. Hey, Mavis. Oh, I oh. thought you'd gone already. No. Hey, but come on. Listen, we might get next to each other again, eh? There she is. My mother in law to be, and looking rather splendid. I'm going to see a play. I must say, I'm continually impressed by your independence, me old stocking. Let me get your sherry. That is it, as anybody serving? Hey, are we fit? Alex mucked my money up. Surprise, surprise. Mm. There you go, Samantha. Now, do I need to check it this time? I don't think so. Right, well, wish us a lovely holiday. Have a lovely holiday. Right. Thank you. Uh, See please. you. Right. Scotch and bread, please, Alex, and a sherry. Right. Mm, they make a nice couple. Yeah. Suddenly, everyone round here seems to be getting together. Oh, good heavens, is that time? I've got to meet Ashley. I've been warned about you mm. all day long today. Well, you're the one with the husband threatening to come back and claim you. Well, your wife's been known to turn up unannounced. True, but we have jumped out of a plane together. There's got to be some basis for trust there. Well, better be. The meter's ticking over here. <laughs> Last chance to change your mind. No, we're not at the boat yet. Hmm. Perhaps yours came out of the oven a, a tad early, Mrs. Jarrett. Um, eight and a half out of ten. Oh. Um, Mrs. Wilton? Oh. Now, I know that the recipe said lard, but at home I always use the dripping from the roast, so I took the liberty of bringing some in with me. Oh, yes, I can taste the difference. <laughs> Very nice. Oh. Nine. I oh, thank you. Teacher's <laughs> pet. Are you thinking of going into catering? Well, yes, my friend and me, we're, we're going to Cartmel to open a bed and breakfast. You and Mrs Duckworth? <laughs> no, no. no it's, a, it's a friend that I've worked with for a long number of years. And I'm sure you'll do very well. Thank you. I'm Mrs Duckworth. I'm the licensee at my own pub, you know. Rover's Return, Coronation Street. You know it? No. Oh, you'll have to pay us a visit sometime. Very cosy. Isn't it, Maeve? Oh. She's in most days. That's why I wanted to take an interest in the catering side. We've had the same woman for years, old Betty, but, well, she won't move with the times, you know, so unfortunately, we're going to have to let her go. <laughs> well, once I've graduated. Um, did you use a half teaspoon of salt? What well, recipe says one and a half. No, one half teaspoon, Vera, not one and a half. Well, that's not very clear, is it? Well, never mind. Um, it, it, it's probably my fault. I've got awful writing. Yes, you have. I've been making ten out of ten Yorkshire puddings all my life. I knew she were wrong, you know. But I thought, well, she must know what she's doing. She's a teacher. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Well, if she doesn't know what she's doing, how, how the hell does she expect us to know? Oh, Vera! All right, Mrs. Metlock, it's all right. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. And look at her burnt offerings. So, this is it. This is it. Almost. Mavis has, Mavis has sold her house to someone this afternoon. Now, all I need is someone as keen on running the cabinet. No interest. No. Why, are you waiting for the price to drop so you can snap it up? <laughs> well, hardly. I don't want it sold at all. Oh, 
know, for some reason, you do seem keen on Miss Day input. I like things the way they are. The way they are? Yeah. Me back behind this bar and you over the road. You're part of the old guard, Rita. Well, you know what I mean. I mean, we go way back. We share a history. Not many that can say they've been friends as long as you and I. Friends? Well, yeah. No, I know you accuse me of playing fast and loose with that from time to time. But we still are, aren't we? I hope so, Alec. Because for a moment there the other day, you know, when he came with me to Cartmel to look at the property, well, for a minute, you know, I thought, no. <laughs> you thought what? Huh? Well, I thought you were moments away from going down on one knee. We might join. No, if I went down on one knee, I'd never get up again. <laughs> That's what I was worried about. Yeah. You're back early. Oh, because we never went. As soon as we got through the door, Steve got picked up by the police. You're joking, what for? Well, dealing drugs, they reckon, but, you know. Is this true? Well, not that I know of, no. I mean, they're holding in for questioning. Are they now? Look, I'll come with you, Rick. No, you won't, Willie. I've been through this before. I want to get to the bottom of it this time. Excuse me. Oh, Excuse me. dear. Well, he didn't stay out of trouble long. <laughs> no, he didn't. Amazingly enough. What are you holding me here for, eh? You can't stick me in here without a reason. We've got a reason. You've been told. I don't deal drugs. Well, according to somebody we picked up, you do. Who? No, there isn't anybody. If that's what you believe, then don't look so worried. Am I going to get formally questioned? Or do I get to call my solicitor, eh? We're having a busy night out here. Somebody be with you later. Make yourself comfortable. It might be a long way. <laughs> Hmm. I'll get it. Uh. Hiya. What are you doing there? I'm watching telly. Come on in, have a drink or something. No, not here. I wanted you to be the first to know. Des and Samantha have gone away for a whole week. Is that right? And I was thinking I might be a bit lonely in that big old house on the hill. You may well be, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Hang on a second. So, it's Sanji. Oh, does she want to come in? Does she want a drink? Hi, uh, no thanks. I've just come to kidnap him. Do you mind? Of course I don't mind. I've got Dizzy's car and we could have a drink out somewhere if you'd like to join us. Uh, thanks, but I can't leave the girls. Anyway, no, I'm quite into this now. No, off you go. OK, night. Oh, and, uh, I probably won't be coming back, so you can lock up. I'll stay over the road. Yeah, right. See right. you tomorrow. See you. Night. Bye. Is she all right? Do you still want to go out? I'm quite happy to go straight home. Come on, then. <laughs> Vera's planning to get rid of Betty. No. Well, Betty never said. Well, I don't think she knows. Oh, dear. Still, don't get involved, Mavis. I mean, we're going to have to stop worrying so much about folk round here. Everything's going to be very different. Mm. So, now, would you like to come and stop with me tonight instead of you staying oh, here on your own? Or I could stay. No. No, thanks, uh, Rita, but, see, I've got the Packers coming Sunday, so I have to think what goes and what doesn't, and... Anyway, I wouldn't mind one last weekend in our home. Well, you let me know if you need any help, won't you? I will, yes, thanks. Night, nah, love. Oh, and them Yorkshires were a poem. <laughs> Your cookery teacher's right. I'm going into business with the right person. Oh. Night, love. Night, Rita. Where's your man, Fee? Why are we doing him for? I want to talk to him. Yeah, well, he's not here, and I don't want you here, I'm either. I'm sure you don't want me here, but I'd like to speak to Alan. He's working. Oh, he's working, is he? 
Doing what he gets paid for. Doing what he does best. Work. What are you going on about? I'm on about Steve being arrested again. When? Oh, tonight. Oh, yes. No explanation. But then I have a feeling you and I know exactly what this is about, don't we? Eh? No, I don't know anything about it. Oh, I think you'll find we do. After all, we both know he's terrified, isn't he? He's just terrified in case that baby you're carrying belongs to Stephen. What's the charge? <laughs> Supplying drugs. I mean, it's completely stupid. No, it might not be. I mean, he has done before he did while we were living together. Well, he's hardly likely to be doing it now. Not since he's just been released from jail, is no, he? No, he does take stuff. I've seen him. He even flaunted it in front of Alan at Angie's party. I was the one that stopped him. Otherwise, Alan would have had him there and then. Well, very interesting timing now, wouldn't you say, Sophie? Eh? Hey, wouldn't you say so? I mean, we all know Alan's got it in for Steve. You said so yourself, my yeah, dear. Well, this he has afternoon. got a right to be really, hasn't he? Steve's trouble. You can't tell yourself he's not, Jim. Well, I'll tell you something, Fiona. I'd better not find out it's another one of his setups. You get my drift? Leave our flat. Come on. different from some of the welcomes I've had in the past, eh? Jim? What? Have you had any more thoughts on the test? Yeah. And are you going to have it? Yeah, definitely. Well, well. Imagine my surprise when I'm walking past here and I see your name on the door. If you wanted to have another chat, Alan, we uh, could have met in the Rovers. Oh, aren't you in on suspicion of supplying illegal substances? Well, that's the story, yeah, but how do you know that if you've only just noticed I was here? Well, as I think I told you last time, when you thought you were being victimised, you have got a record and you are going to get pulled. Nobody has named me for supplying anything. Listen, if you think you're being singled out in Weatherfield for possession or supplying or... Anything else. There is a simple solution. Leave. Search me. Search my home. You won't find anything. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure about that. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised by anything we might find in any quantity. <laughs> oh, oh, unless you're happy to go for a nice, straightforward assault of a police officer. In custody. No other witnesses. No legal representation. Uh, you can't detain me here overnight. Oh, I can do anything I like. Now, you sweat it out for a few more hours, Steve. Then maybe you'd be willing to be a bit more cooperative than you have been. And cooperative about what? Fiona? All right, OK, I was out of order. I won't go near her again, I swear. Yeah, just exactly how near have you been getting? I don't understand what you're talking about. I was going out with my brother tonight. This could backfire on you, Alan, in a big way, and you know it. Have a pleasant evening. What is your problem with me, eh? You win. She's marrying you. She's having your baby. Isn't she? Well, isn't she? Alan? What is your problem, eh? Alan? Have you got everything? Yeah, yeah. Uh, camera, sandwiches, bit of spending money. Right. Behave yourself for your granddad and don't be nagging him for treats every two minutes. Hiya. Hiya, Chris. Hiya, Chris. Um, be back about seven, eh? Right, thanks, Bill. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye. So, nearest they're going to get to a holiday this summer, a day in Blackpool with a granddad and him swanning out at Flaming Canaries. Did I leave my keys around here? Yeah, they're on that shelf. <sighs> Look. What are you doing today? Nothing. Washing, ironing. Well, I'm off to that out-of-town shopping centre on the A34. Do you want to come? I haven't got any money, Chris. Neither have I. Uh, go on, then. I can always do this another day, can't I? Well, I'd have thought so, yeah. Is there a bus that goes round there on a Sunday? No, we're uh, taking the van. What Kevin doesn't know won't hurt him, eh? Well, I won't tell him. <laughs> there is one thing, though. I've got to stop off at Natalie's to, uh, to feed a cat. I didn't know you'd been feeding a cat for her. Yeah, well, she would have only chucked it in the cattery if I hadn't said yes. It'll only take two minutes. So he's still there? He's actually in custody? 
Well, he's not been back here. And has he wrong? Oh, God. Well, that's it then, isn't it? They've definitely charged Elizabeth, look, settle down, will you? I'll take a wee dander down and find out what's going on in a few minutes, OK? Just settle. Drugs? Oh, yeah, they're definitely going to chuck away the key this time, aren't they? Look, Mum, do you want a cup of tea or something like no, that? No, I don't want a cup... Stephen! Well, and then, what have you done this time? To charge you. You know, I don't think you give a damn what you put us through each time, do you, Stephen? I haven't done anything. Have they charged you with something? No. <laughs> so what the hell have you been doing down there all this time, eh? Look, I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to go and have a bath. Well, hang on. They must have said something. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I did knock on it. Obviously, you didn't hear me. No, I was just... Uh, oh, it's bigger than you think, isn't it? Without the clutter. Well, I, I was just trying to make it all neat and tidy for when you move me. Oh, that's very kind of you. Oh, oh it's the least I can do. Hello again, Mrs. Budgie. It's Mr. Budgie. Beauty is a him. Him or her makes a difference. I don't like Budgies. It's not to them, is it? Carpet's faded, isn't it? Uh, well, yes, it, it is. Um, much more than I thought and, until the furniture got moved. It looks as if we're a bit anemic to start with. Makes nods. I think a darker carpet here would be better myself. Something richer. Yes, well, Derek and I worked on the principle that... Lighter colours gave a more spacious feeling. I think we could slap something more interesting on walls. Well, we all like different things, don't we? Oh, yes, we do. Because uh, wouldn't it be boring if we didn't? <coughs> well, I suppose you and Derek were very happy here. Yes. Well, I hope that Maureen and I will be as happy as you both were. Who could wish for more? Did you want something? No. Well, the key, only uh, you're not ready. There's no rush. I'll uh, leave you alone with your thoughts. Oh, oh beauty. It is sad. It is a shame. But we're lucky to have found a buyer so quickly. We must keep telling ourselves that. Hmm? Do you want to come in? No. Look, Arnie, be a couple of minutes, OK? Go on then, Stephen. What's the crack, son? Well, it's McKenna up to his old games again, isn't it? All right. Andrew mentioned something about drugs. Yeah, he just wanted to pick me up so he could frighten me again. <laughs> well, he succeeded then, hasn't he? Are you sure he really hasn't got something on you? Look, Daddy told me what he was up to last night in the cell. So, were you smoking weed at Fiona's party? <sighs> I may have had um, a little bit if they were offering it round, yeah. Anyway, they come and unlock the cell this morning and they say, yeah, right, you can go home now. I mean, that's wrong for the rest, Whoa, 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 listen. Fiona said you were smoking weed at her party. Look, surely you're not going to start lecturing me about having a little bit of weed. Stephen, people get arrested for possession of a little bit of weed, especially people who are a little bit on parole and especially people who've got the police bleeding down their neck. Look, Dad. Look, honest to God, you're worried about him having something on you, and then you go and offer him something like that in a plate. Look, Dad, I've just spent the whole night in a police cell for nothing. If you want to get wound up about something, get wound up about that. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Look, Stephen, just promise me you won't touch the stuff again for a while, OK? I mean, don't give the man the excuse. Oh, he doesn't need excuses. I mean, the guy's threatening to set me up properly, big time, unless I move out of here. Why? Because he's desperate. He hates me. I mean, you should have seen the way he was looking at me. The guy's mad. He's got Fiona. I mean, she's even having his baby. He's got everything that he knows I want. So why does he still hate me so much? 
I mean, all last night I was thinking, why? And then I realised. What? Well, isn't it obvious? No. Well, have you noticed? And Fiona's not exactly been over the moon about being pregnant, has she? So what? So I think McKenna isn't sure that it's his baby. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. He must have got it into his head that me and her are still seeing each other. No. Unless she really has slept with somebody else. And he just assumes it's me. Chris? Oh, Sally, I'm sorry. I've been waiting out there for ages. The flipping cat's dragged a pigeon or something. It's all over the floor. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Look, do you mind hanging on for a couple of minutes? You want to use a vacuum cleaner? Yeah, right. I don't want to think I'd been feeding the flipping thing properly. I was uh, just in the cabin and Rita asked me if I could come down and pick up some suitcases or something. Oh, that's very kind. These ones, I presume? <laughs> yes, if you don't mind. What, oh, down to Rita's? Uh, uh, yes, I'm, I'm just moving in with her until we go. I mean, it's just, just a few bare essentials. All the rest's gone into storage. <laughs> Are you locking up, then? Yeah. I'll just be a minute. Right. Oh, shall we say goodbye? Shall we, beauty? <laughs> Goodbye, then. Are you excited? Not yet, if I'm honest. You will be come tomorrow. Ooh, I hope so. You'll be stood standing on the steps of that registry <sighs> office and you'll get that wobbly feeling in the pit of your stomach. I suppose so. <laughs> I woke up with it this morning. Did you? Mm. I don't get it as often as I used to. You're not? Well, I suppose that normal with a man of my age. <sighs> When I were a lad, I used to get so excited. Did you? I could never sit still. I were always orching and throching. Well, well, life lets you down and it disappoints you and then you know that 
There's not much worse to get excited over. I know what you mean. Mm. But then just occasionally, you get it again. And into your ground when you do. Well, I hope I'll be feeling it tomorrow, certainly. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Are you ready for a bit of dinner? But what the hell, I'm earning. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah, it really suits you. Chris. What? You know, this morning at Natalie's, I did something really stupid. What? I'm gonna be really cross. You're gonna think I'm going crackers. What did you do, Sam? Well, when I was waiting for you, I went upstairs just to have a look round. And? I left the taps running in the sink in the bathroom and I put the plug in. You mean? And I chucked loads of bubble bath in. Oh, so what did you do that for? I just went mad. I was so angry. She had this photograph of Kevin by the side of her bed and I felt so used and humiliated and it all came flooding back to me. What time are they due back? Um, this afternoon sometime. I'm gonna have to get round there and tidy it up. <laughs> Tidy up. I mean, it's going to be a bit too late. I mean, the, the mess. We could try. Look, I'll go. No, no, look, look, look. You can't risk going there. Uh, I'll go. I'll go. Chris, what are you going to tell her? I don't know. I just have to think of something. Chris. Next time, I'd want to smoke weed at your party. You what? I spent all last night in the nick on some more trumped-up rubbish your boyfriend came up with, so you've told him, haven't you? Steve, leave me alone. He's been on me back since I got out. So what? So what's Alan's problem, eh? Why has he got it in for me, Fiona? Why is he so jealous about one of your old boyfriends? Steve, you started this. Always hanging around me like a fly round. Uh, uh, does he still think that I'm seeing you or something? <sighs> Don't fly yourself, right? Or is it something you're not telling him? I thought I told you I never wanted to clap eyes on you again. Yeah, well, we're just chatting. Yeah? Well, you've already said too much, MacDonald. Come on, Fiona. Put him out of his misery. Tell him the truth. He what? Well, you didn't think it was your baby, did you? That's why you're so worried. That's why you want me to move away from here. Well, you're probably right. Probably isn't your little sprog at all, is it, Fiona? Steve, stop it! Tell him. That's somebody else's baby. Hey, perhaps it's mine. Well, you'll never know, will you? Yeah. Oh. Oh. No. I want to hear you say it. I want to hear you tell me it's not his. No, I won't. I don't even know I can even think it is his. Because he just said oh, it. Oh, right, and you believe him, dear. Why would he say it? Because he enjoys winding you up. Because he knows you're such a sucker for it. Because he would like nothing more than to see me and you split up. How can you seriously think... I don't know. How can I? Why do I think that? Oh, because you're paranoid. And I am sick of it. Alan, this has got to end, all right? This has got to end now. If you seriously think I'm carrying his baby, then you should just leave now and don't come back. All right, I'm sorry. What must it look like to other people, eh? You think I'm some stupid slapper who can't wait to put it around the minute your back's turned? I don't think that. Oh, really? So why don't you believe me when I say that I hate Steve for putting us through this? The only reason he's allowed to do it is because you're letting him. I do believe you, sweetheart. Yeah, right. Till next time. No, I, I promise. This... This is it now. I won't mention him again, ever. And smashing his face in that... Oh, you see? This is it. No matter what happens, somehow, somehow, you always manage to find a reason to feel sorry for him. Alan, I couldn't care less about him! I care about you putting me through that! Street and watch that while I'm pregnant as well. With your child, it's you that twists everything round to Steve, not me. It's only because I love you so much. 
I get jealous. I don't want you to mention him again. Ever. Right? All right. Or any of the McDonald's. Right? Oh my God. What the hell's up, Mason? Nothing. Who did this to you? Who did this? McKenna. McKenna! When? Just now. Where is he now? He's over there with Fiona. Fiona? She knows about this. She was there. Fiona just stood there and watched it. Right, I'm having... No, I'm Dad, having... leave me! I'm not letting him get away with his son. Not because he's got some poisonous idea going round his head. Yeah, but Dad, just leave it because you just make things worse. Stephen, look at the cut here. Yeah, well, I should have kept me gob shut. I said something about it not being his baby. Oh, for God's sake. Well, it's obviously true, isn't it? It just confirms everything I was telling you about this morning. He thinks she's seen somebody else. He thinks he's me. He thinks he's my baby. I mean, I'm taking the rap here for somebody else. Right, I'll murder him. No, oh, Dad, leave it. Why not? Come on. Because he'll take it out on me. I've told you. He's threatening to set me up and he will. He'll get away with it. I'll end up going back to prison, so just leave it, please. Would you mind telling me what that wee girl says, that man? Would you, oh, would you tell me? I don't know, and I'm past caring. I'm getting out of here. Hey, what do you mean? Well, I've had enough, I'm going. No, no, Stephen, Stephen, you're not going anywhere. Do you understand me? You're not going anywhere. Not because of him. Would you think she's been seeing somebody else? No, 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 no. I don't think that. He's just got some... He's got some crazy notion going on in his head, that's all. And I'll tell you one thing, Stephen. You're not going out that door. You're not leaving. You're not the one who's going. So what's your dress like? It's a secret. It doesn't suit her. Thank you. I shall be wearing black if I turn up. <laughs> so are you having a hen do or anything? No. Why not? I should have thought a wake would be more in keeping. Oh, go on. Come on, we'll all go to the Warwick tonight. Oh, Liz will yeah. be there. And Audrey will come as well, won't you, Audrey? Oh, where? The Warwick tonight. Maureen's end -up. No, I can't. Oh, what time? I've got a thousand and one things to do. Oh. That, that's the front door, and that's the back, and then there's two spare sets there. Oh, that's lovely. Right. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Fred? Hi. Kenneth, what are you having? Uh, no, 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 I'm fine, thanks. Um, uh, what's the itinerary tomorrow, uh, after the ceremony? I can offer lifts if needed, that's all. Oh, that's very kind of you. How many is he, Kenny? Oh, home oh, sweet home. <laughs> Do you know, I could murder a gin and tonic. Oh. And a bath. A huge gin and tonic lying in my bath. Well, I'm gagging for a proper pint. What's that smell? What smell? I don't know, it's like soap. Oh, Chris, hiya. Hi. You've not been cleaning up for me, have you? I only asked you to feed the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a nice time? Yeah, smashing, thanks. How's the garage? It's fine, it's fine. Oh, and got you a present. <laughs> this carpet feels all spongy. It's not wet, is it? Yeah, it is. Uh, we've had a bit of an accident. I think you must have had a burst pipe or something, because when I came in this morning, there was a uh, water cascade all down the banister. No. Yeah, it uh, seems to be coming from the bathroom. Anyway, I, I switched the water off underneath the sink and cleaned up a bit. I didn't phone a plumber, but I think maybe you should, and, uh, and I'm afraid the electric seemed to be affected a bit. Sorry. Hey, hello. Yeah, hello. All right. Well, what's that? <coughs> Soap of the day, that's what you ordered. But it's cold. Well, it's gas the It's not supposed to be cold. <laughs> she means gas patch. Sure. It was the recipe from our homework last Wednesday. And is it meant to have hers or not? Hmm? Uh, how do you know? A trained chimp would be more hygienic. Have you ever thought of tying the knot again, Alec? Only round Vera's neck. Look at him. He carries on like a daft lad. He must get a terrible shock every time he looks in the mirror. Mother, he can't help it if he hasn't got the most prepossessing looks in the world. No, but he could put a bag over his head. Fred, <laughs> do you know he tried it on with me, Mum? Oh. Fred! Oh, the things I could tell you. Didn't you have a lucky escape once, so? You could put it that way. Oh, poor Maureen. I hope she knows what she's letting herself in for. I mean, she obviously wasn't top of his list, was she? <laughs> well, I amaze myself. I mean, normally I'm a really bad liar. 
And then she started to ring the emergency plumber, so I thought, oh, better leave. What if he doesn't find any leaks around? I'll stick to my story, we'll be fine. You shouldn't have lied for me. What did you do with all those bubble bath bottles? Just cleaned them up and put them back. What if she notices something's different in her bathroom? She won't. I told her I had to move a few things around while I was cleaning. Maybe we should just tell him the truth. No, so Not now. You shouldn't have had to lie for me. It's done. I haven't even said thank you. Yeah, well, she kept on thanking me for tidying up. I didn't know I'd feel guilty. I feel so silly. My mind's racing. Yeah, well, she deserved it. Kind of. I mean, I, I can understand why you did it. I didn't mean to do anything. I just flipped. I know. I know what it's like. Sometimes you just lose control. I can't imagine you losing control. <laughs> can't you? I'm shaking. Look at me. Hey, look. Just calm down. You're so kind, Chris. I don't know why. Hey, shh. Hey, we're back. Come on, girls. Oh, <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah. We've got it. Hiya. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Did you have a nice time? Yeah, yeah. What have you two been up to then all day? Well, it couldn't have been that serious if the plumber said we could turn the water back on. What do you mean it can't be that serious? My stair carpets are ruined, I've got no electrics. And where's that sickening smell coming from? I meant it could have been worse. Oh, did you? I'm going to start the unpacking. Well, I'll know in future, won't I? Not to go on flaming holiday. Is that how you're wearing your hair? Don't you like it? It's too young. You're being married, not christened. Just be happy for me. If I were Fred's mother, I'd be delighted. He's getting a bargain. Oh, not the shop again. No, Maureen, not the shop. You. You're still young. You're still attractive. You're still willing to see the good in people. There's a lot of good in Fred. There's things close to his chest, though. No, he doesn't. He's an open book. He's been very frank with me. He's not even told you where the reception's being held. Never mind the honeymoon. That's because he wants it to be a surprise. Doesn't he know it's your third trip down the aisle and there are no surprises left? I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. You're a lovely girl. Nobody knows that better than me. I don't want to lose you. Well, you heard what he said. Yeah? There's nothing wrong with the plumbing. So how come the place was flooded? He's a tradesman, Kevin. I think he knows his job. If he says there's no leaks, there's no leaks. It wasn't Sally. Someone turned the taps on. Someone wrote that word. She's not like that. Oh, for God's sake, Kevin. I stole her husband and took him off to the Canaries. She's hardly going to write me a thank you note. She wouldn't break in your house. She couldn't anyway. There was no need for her to break in. All she had to do was ask Chris for the key. Oh, and he'd give it her, just like that? Yes. Why? Go and find out. She didn't do it. She did. Phone me, tell me what she says. Because if you don't, I'll go round there myself. Are you sure you know what to do, Deirdre, love? Hey, I'm only the witness, Fred. It's you and Maureen who are going to be centre stage. It's a long time since I've been so nervous. Hey, there's still time to change your mind. I'll not do that. I say I'll not do that. We Elliot stand firm, always have. Old's worst out. She should have been here ten minutes ago. Mm. <laughs> Sorry we're late, Uncle Fred. We got stuck in traffic. <laughs> have you not brought Maureen? Has she gone somewhere else? <laughs> no, she's coming. She's just adjusting her makeup. I dread to think what Maud's adjusting. <laughs> oh, I hope Maureen's doing the right thing. Hey, it's Fred, and I feel sorry for him. He's marrying two of them. Anybody else, they'll be done for bigger men. <laughs> hey, have they decided where they're all going to live yet? I couldn't tell you. You know more than I do. I know nothing. Oh, well, that's you, me, and Maureen. Let's hope Fred's got some to be slip. Oh, she's here. Will I do, Fred? You will, Maureen. You'll do just champion.
Did you have a good holiday? Yeah. Suppose you heard what happened when we got back. Yeah, Chris told me. Did he? Is there something you want? Look, I know it's got nothing to do with you, but Natalie... How do you know it's got nothing to do with me? Because you wouldn't do a thing like that. I wouldn't know why. Because you're not that type. And what type am I? The type who stays at home and cries. No. The type who lets people walk all over and she smiles sweetly. No. The type who reads her daughters a holiday postcard from their daddy and his fancy woman. No. You really wanted to rub my face in it, didn't you? I wanted to send something to the girls. Well, you needn't have bothered. Because I whipped it up. Well, you had no business doing that. Was you in the house, wasn't it? Yeah. I took the keys out of Chris's pocket and I had a good time. Not as good as two weeks in the sun, but very invigorating. I can't believe you can be so stupid to write that word. It's the truth. And if I'd had the courage, I'd have written a lot more. And I'm not key on the taste of bubble bath. It's a bit flash and over perfume for my liking, just like the woman herself. Don't say a word about her. Why? What is she to you? Hers isn't the name on your marriage license. She's not the mother of your kids or the other half of your joint mortgage. No, we're not padlocked together and we never will be. Next you'll be telling me you love her. You know I do. And I've never been happier. Get out of here before I really lose my temper. You know what a marriage was for me? I was stuck in a rut and I didn't realise it. The purpose of marriage is that you may always love, care for and support each other through all the joys and sorrows of life, and that love may be fulfilled in a relationship of permanent and continuing commitment. We trust that this may come true for you both. If there is any person here who knows of any lawful impediment why these two people may not be married, you should declare it now. Will you repeat after me? I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare. That I know not of any lawful impediment. That I know not of any lawful impediment. Why I, Frederick Handel Elliot. Why I, Frederick Handel Elliot. May not be joined in matrimony to Maureen Elizabeth Holdsworth. May not be joined in matrimony to Maureen Elizabeth Holdsworth. Now, Maureen, I do solemnly declare... I do solemnly declare... ...that I know not of any lawful impediment... Changing the jag, are we? I'm moving it. Seriously? Yep. Why? Yeah, well, McKenna won't show up for doing that, mate. But on the other hand, you were asking for it, Steve. Oh, thanks, mate. Look, he's been engaged for months. You haven't had anything going with her for years. Yeah, well, that's why I've decided to call it a day. Go off and sink my fortune. In Gorton? It's no good having a go at me, Kev. What makes you think it's my fault? Because she got the key off you. No, she didn't. She took it out of your pocket. Is that what she said? I'm not making it up as we go along. Well, I don't know anything about it. I gave you that key so you could keep an eye on things. I didn't ask you to. You could have said no. I was doing you a favour. And all I'm getting is aggro. All I want to know is how Sally got her hands on it, that's all. She told you, didn't she? She picked my pocket. Look, she can't get in this place unless you're here. Did you see her hanging about the place? No, I haven't seen much of her at all. Are you sure? Yeah. I am allowed to turn my back now and again, aren't I? Half the time I got my head stuck under her car anyway, she could have sneaked in. So where'd you leave your coat then? On the back of the chair. That's what she's done then, isn't it? What's next then, eh? Send for forensics, check for fingerprints. I've got the rovers. Now we should have one with the three of us, Fred. You and me and Mum. Go on then, go on. Oh, it's been wonderful so far, Fred. And it's going to get better. I've no doubts on that score. Oh. We haven't found out where the reception's going to be yet. Hey, do you know where it is, Ashley? <laughs> no, he doesn't. And if he did, he'd told me. Then I'd have told you too anyway. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Eric! Oh, hello. 
Should have taken more care. It was only a key. Well, why leave it where she could find it? It's probably hanging up in the garage. Anyway. Anyway, what? Sally has had a lot to put up with. She's flaming flooded the place. All right, all right. It's between the two of you. I don't want to get involved. <sighs> oh, yes. Mother and father were very musical. They named us all after the great composers. Hot classical composers? Yeah, of course. Ashley's mother's middle name is Aiden. Well, be glad that's one tradition you didn't keep up. Oh, but they did. Ashley may be a peacock, but he's a composer and all, aren't you? What? Oh, come on, Fred. What? We haven't had the toast yet. Come over here. Oh, right, you'll have to excuse me, my dear. Ashley, yeah. will you make sure everybody's got enough champagne? Fred's welcome. Good Fred. luck. Fred, now, Ken wants to say a few words. Oh, does he? Yeah. Oh, where is he? It's not his job, he's not the best man. Built into fear, Mr. Sub. Look, things have got to be done correctly, haven't they? Formalities should be observed. Look, never mind formalities. Drink the champagne. I'm told that Ashley will be saying something at the reception. The reception? This is the reception. Apparently not. But what's this, then? Don't ask, Percy. Just get that down, you yeah. Mrs. Roberts is always four drinks in front of everybody else. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can I have, a, have your attention for a minute? Please. Thank you very much. Now, before before we leave the Rovers to attend uh, the real reception, the uh, the management, uh, Vera, Jack, and Alec, uh, have asked me to convey the streets' congratulations and best wishes to Maureen and Fred on, on this uh, yeah, on this late flowering of their romance. Oh, late flowering. Oh, late flowering. <laughs> this talk. Well, well, anyway, we hope that this union, this union, will be as happy and long-lasting as any that the street has seen. Oh, so, ladies and gentlemen, raise your glasses and drink to the young in heart lovers, oh. Maureen and Fred. No, well, that's good news. Yeah. Well, you read things in the newspapers, you know what I mean? You just want to be sure. Ach, no, so there's no need for a letter. Well, if they're going to send one, then, yeah, well, fair enough, I. Well, listen, uh, yeah, thanks for letting me know. All right, cheerio now. Ah, uh, what is the film? It's all yours, son. You know, I don't understand you. Oh, I see, McKenna. You reckon I should be across the road knocking his pan in, is that right? Well, maybe I'm biding me time, son. Yeah, maybe you're not. Stephen, I swear to God, he'll pay for hitting you, so he will. <laughs> yeah, well, he kicked me so it shows how much you know. He will regret it. When, Dad? When he's waving me goodbye? I don't want to see you leaving the street because of him. <clears throat> yeah, we'll pull the other one. Because as long as Andy, the lad with the letters after his name, is still here, you couldn't care less. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where you're wrong. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah, hi, I'm phoning about your advert in the Gazette. Have you spoken to her? Yeah. But why didn't you ring me? You can see all the places. Did she do it? Yeah. I told you. She didn't mean it, she just got carried away. I tell you, when I lay my hands on her... Hey, hey. I'll get you a drink, all right, and don't cause any trouble. Whoa, excuse me, excuse that. Ah, so, 
Where's the blushing bridegroom, then? Done a runner already. A couple of hours ago, I'd have said no such luck. Mm. But I'm beginning to see him in a different light. Well, it's a good sort, I say. It's a good sort. A bit wild, but uh, you can tame him, Maud. I'll leave that to our Maureen. Betsy's been preparing these all morning. I hope they're not going to go to waste. The bell hadn't. This is butter, you know, not your cheap oh. mouth. All in good time. I'm to eat because I'm starving. I didn't have any breakfast or anything. Oh, oh. Well, we she want cheese, Captain. She doesn't want to eat her away. Hey, what's going on? Oh, it's that fat Fred. It's his nuptials. Go on, see if you can get us a free drink. No problem. Congratulations, Fred. Oh, and you're Maureen. You. I hope you both be ever so happy. Oh, bless you, Lord. Lord, Lord, some cherry for these lovely ladies. Will it be, girls? Sweets or dry? Whichever you think's appropriate to our nature. <laughs> Rough. <laughs> There she is. I don't want any trouble. Well, hard luck, mate, because you're going to get it. Right, everybody! Hey! <laughs> Can I have your attention, please? Now, at the moment, there's going to be more being waiting for. If you'd kindly follow my dear lady wife and myself, we will lead you to the reception. <laughs> Somebody bring the victuals. I don't you. discuss personal business in public. You'll discuss it where I want to discuss it. And I'd like to wind my husband on your little finger. But you can't do much with me. Here we go. Pay for what you did. And what about what you did? I didn't rip him out of your arms. He was bored stiff. Well, you're welcome to him. You suit each other. What did he ever see in you? Nothing he'll ever see in you, that's for sure. Sally. Has she given you permission to speak? Kevin doesn't need permission off me to do anything. He doesn't have to beg for every penny. He'd have nothing left if he had to pay for you and your tarty makeup and your tarty clothes. Not to mention your tarty bubble bath. Hey. Hey. Oh. Now then, what do you think? I don't think it'll work. Jenu. Oh, we're having the reception in Davis's house. No, 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 no. We're having it in our house. I've bought it for you. A bijou resident, close to your place of business. And then, when we've time, you can have it decorated to your own specifications. How does it feel to be so sour and dried up at your age? It feels a lot younger than it does at yours. Yeah, you tell us, Sal. At least I know how to make him happy. Do you? He just looks embarrassed to me. Well, that's because of the way you're carrying on. Fighting in the street, don't you? Showing yourself up, it comes second nature to you. Kev, stop them. Leave them alone, they're enjoying it. It's best fudge as I did once. Well, just mind your own business. Hey, that girl deserves this. She's waited long enough. But you'll never get him back. You can do anything you like. Don't worry. I won't throw myself at him like you did. Just calm down now, Ada Perry. No chance. I don't know what to say, Fred. Saying out. Oh. Just give me the privilege of carrying you over the oh, threshold. No, <laughs> uh, come on, come on. Oh, yeah. Get up, get up. You'll regret the day you ever cross me, lady. Oh, yeah. Hey, don't you walk away from me. Don't you cross me. You are a Right, that's right. Get up, Sally. Get up. Get up. It's Leave childish. It. Come on. Come on. Come on, Come on. 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 There's always something happening in this street. You know something, McKenna, you're a scumbag. It takes one to know. I was just stealing. You really think you're going to get him to move from this house? Yeah. Who's going to stop him? Me, for a start. I'd be more scared of a pair of that. Sal, come on! Come on, stop it! Come on, come on, come on. You know, I've been thinking, why don't I just beat your head in? Because you haven't got the rules. You just give the word and I will step out this car. You'd like that, wouldn't you? I'd love it. Oh, just you and me. Clear off, McKenna. I won't give you the pleasure. Well, well. 
Now you're using your brains for once. Yeah, I'm using my brains. Why would you do that? Tried Elgar, <laughs> or uh, Bizet, <laughs> or Poulon. Who what? Bizet. Oh, Betty. Oh, Betty, you've done really well. Well, I didn't make the cake, though. I mean, Fred brought one of his baker pals in oh, to supply that. Well, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It just goes to show how lucky the robes are to have you. Yeah. yeah, and Betty, if you ever get tired of the smell of stale beer, you can go and help these two out in their guest halls. Unless <laughs> I'm never leaving the robes. They'll have to drag me out feet first. Oh, <laughs> Betty. <laughs> That's a sight to be home. You've got to admit, Mother, oh. it's been lovely. I've enjoyed every minute. <laughs> It's done you proud, Maureen. And we're going to a five-star hotel tonight, the honeymoon suite. What else? <laughs> He's a good man. There's only one thing bothering me. Where am I going to sleep? <laughs> oh, well, you'll be right at home tonight, won't you? That's no problem. Oh, no, it isn't. But where am I going to sleep when we live here? I can't manage them stairs. I don't fancy my chances in the conservatory. <laughs> And there's no downstairs toilet either. Well, I wouldn't worry about it, cos Fred will have it all organised. I'll ask him. <laughs> Look at him. They're still at it. <laughs> Is it Beethoven? No. Oh, come on, Tom. I've been waiting about outside long enough. Yep, I saw you. Well, I figured you wouldn't want me in here with customers. No. Nope. You didn't go to the wedding, then? I'll be having one of my own soon enough, so... Will you? Of course I will. Uh, listen, I've uh, I've had some bad news. The doctor rang me this morning. And? Well, this happens sometimes, and it's happened to me. What has? The tubes that were cut in the operation. They've rejoined, so they have. Tell me what that means. Well, you know what it means. It means I'm fertile again, and I have been for months. And the date fits. The child you're carrying, Fiona, it belongs to me. Hey, ladies, now, have you heard? Oh. What went on outside between what's it, Natalie Horrocks and Sally Webster? No, what? Better, how well. did we miss that? <laughs> <laughs> that quartet's been telling Mashley and Axie. Mashley and Axie? <laughs> no, they're wonderful. They see and hear everything then, they're mad. Oh, oh Audrey, stop drinking and tell us what happened. Oh, come on. Right. You come on. Stand. I think it's a disgrace. I don't know what the street's coming to. Be fair, Mr. Sugden. Natalie Horrocks doesn't live in this street. Sally Webster does, and Mrs. Horrocks has got a business here. Well, I think it was all very unfortunate. Get stuck in. There's plenty left. <laughs> Have you enjoyed it so far? It's been wonderful. I hardly know what to expect next. Expect the best. That's what you'll get from me as far as I'm able. <laughs> I am overwhelmed you've bought this house. I can't believe it. Anything for you, my love? Fred, my mother's a bit worried, and so is Ashley. What are they worried about? Well, Ashley's worried that he won't have anywhere to live when you sell yours. I'll help him find somewhere. Don't fret. I won't see him out on street. But what about my mother? She can hardly manage, can she, without a bedroom downstairs? Well, she won't have to, will she? But there's nowhere down here that can be converted, is there? Well, she's got her own house. She won't want to live with us. <laughs> what do you mean? See, I'm not the sort of chap who expects a woman of your mother's age to up sticks and move out. This place is just for the two of us, not her. So you don't want mother? I do want mother, but at a distance, same as she wants me. This place is ideal for both of us. I mean, it's... It's no use for an old lady in a wheelchair, is it? No, it isn't. And that's no bad thing. It's about time you cut the apron strings. She'll be perfectly happy on her own. She'll have meals on wheels and social services. She won't have need of you anymore. Say, look at her. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just finding about that flat you got advertised. Oh, is it? Right, OK. Right, I'm sorry to bother you. You're not really moving out, are you? No, I'm just running up the phone bill. It gives me something to do. 
Well, McKenna wouldn't scare me off that quick. Oh, yeah. Well, you watch her spending a year in prison, mate. You might think differently, then. Look, we can't bang you up for nothing, Steve. Yeah, well, maybe, but I'm not going to be around to find out, am I? Well, what about all the money you've put into the business? Well, I'll still be involved. I'll just be living a few miles down the road. Can you talk some sense into him or what? Who, me? Talk sense into him? No, <laughs> you got the wrong man there. So you'll regret it, Steve? Yes, regret. You want any of that, let me tell you. It's a real killer regret. You know, you're right bundle laughs these days, Dad. What is it, eh? Male menopause or what? Shut up. I'm not over the hill yet, son. Not by a long way. You get my drift? All right. Keep your hair on. So, you want me to talk sense into him, eh? Into him? This is the man who spends a year in the big house and no sooner is he out, what's he doing? He's skinning up and having a joint in front of McKenna at Fiona's place, eh? That's what he's doing. Then he proceeds to get his head knocked in by the same guy. Oh, why? Talk sense into him. He's living in a pipe dream. Three weeks from now, that wee girl's marching down the aisle and he still thinks he can get her back. Talk sense? There's more chance of me playing for Northern Ireland in the next year's World Cup final. Right, well, I'm uh, just off down the shop for some milk. Can I see if they sell Prozac? Hey, hello, Sally, love. Hello, girl. How are you? I suppose you start all yesterday. Getting a dab hand at showing myself up, aren't I? Well, it was her that was doing all the running, as far as I could see. Well, maybe she had good reason. How cool. I'll tell you one day when I can laugh about it. Have you got any white shoelaces for Rosie's shoes? Yes, love, they're over there, on that shelf. Near them doings. Mavis. Help her, won't you? Please. That's 70p, Sally, love. Right. Thanks, Rita. Thank you. Thanks, Mavis. Okay. Come on, please. let's get to school. Bye-bye. <sighs> Was I a bit above my station just yeah. then? Above your new station, yes. I'm sorry. Might take a bit of getting used to. Give me time. That flaming woman. Why, what's up? Electrician's bill, 200 quid all because of her. We need new stair carpet, the ceiling wants replastering. It's all mounted up, is this? Well, claim it on the insurance. Well, why should they have to pay? It's what you would have done if you'd left her bath running. Yes, but I didn't, did I? This wasn't an accident. She did it on purpose and she should have to pay. <laughs> yeah, fat chance. Well, I'm damned if I'm making a false claim because of her. She broke the law. I've got a good mind to go to the police. And what good will that do? Well, she can't go on behaving like this. She needs teaching a lesson. Look, don't you think yesterday was bad enough without getting the police involved? You got your own back, didn't you? She probably feels right dumb today. Look, I'll get my dad to fix the ceiling. He won't charge much. That's not the point. Look, just forget about it. Put it down to experience. She's done it now. She's not going to do it anymore, is she? She's got it out of her system. She'll just be grateful she didn't burn the house down. Oh. See you later. Try not to be late, Emmy. I'll do my best, Scott. I wish we could get away, you know. We are doing. No, I mean for good. The last time you said that was because of Steve MacDonald. Yeah, well, there's always going to be trouble for both of us, isn't he? I mean, do you really want to live here forever, opposite him? Or do you enjoy getting into punch up? Uh, no. It's not just him, anyway. Why? Who else is there? We're going to need extra space, aren't we? For the baby. Extra rooms, garden. You're still gonna have to work in this salon. Mm, I can get another salon. Eventually we will move, but I am not about to be panicked into a decision by Steve MacDonald. Especially now he's not a problem anymore. Hmm, I've heard that one before. Yeah, well, this time I'm right. Okay. Here we are, oh. home sweet home. Oh. Have you had a nice time? Oh, it was wonderful, Fred. Thank you. I'm glad to hear it, because <laughs> that's my job, you know, to make you happy. I'm not saying we're going to stay at Swiss hotels every weekend. <laughs> oh, it's nice for a change, though, isn't it? Ah, they did us proud. <sighs> a shower cap for me, and has it been perfect? <laughs> oh, do you know, I think I'm a bit tiddly from that champagne for breakfast. You sit yourself down, and I'll make us some coffee. No, I've got to get back to the shop. You'll have a little rest first. We said we wouldn't be back till dinner time. Till then, we're on our honeymoon. I'll have to ring my mother, though. What for? You rang her from the hotel. Yes, I know, but to tell her I was back. See, your mother's not her traffic control, Maureen. She doesn't need bulletins on the hour as to where we are. I know, 
but I like to check that she's OK, Fred. Just ask yourself, who are you doing all this checking up for? Her sake or yours? It doesn't feel right. I tell you what's not right. Put in yourself second all the time. Go on like this and you'll get to 60 without ever having had a life. And what about her life? Where is she going to live? How am I going to tell her that she can't stay here? Then? All in good time, we'll think of something. I say we'll think of something. Now, you sit down and put your feet up. I'm going to spoil you, Maureen, and neither you nor your mother is going to stop me. Oh, for heaven's sake. I'm a good man to go and knit in with that still never mind the walls. Well, if I thought a prison cell was any quieter, I'd do it myself. Well, I'm off out. I've got a jar of coffee that I want to put in my banking account. Good for you. It's marvellous how they mount up. Yes, you have explained the principle, Mr Sugden, many times. That's funny. I could have sworn it were full to the top. You haven't taken any, have you, Mrs Bishop? No, I have not. I'm not accusing Mrs Bishop. I just thought it might be uh, absent-minded like. I can assure you I've been nowhere near your coppers. No. Oh. You didn't take anything out for the milkman this morning? Where are you going? You haven't finished your coffee. Who knows? Perhaps I'll go and watch the roadworks in Rosamond Street. I thought you wanted peace and quiet. I do. Listen, you wasn't serious, was you, about going to the police? Well, I've not had any better ideas. Oh, look, you can't do that, Natalie. I think legally you'll find I can. She was on my property without permission and she caused criminal damage. Yeah, well, before you go storming in, just think what effect it's going to have on me kids. Seeing the mother carted off by the police, they're going to be terrified. Well, perhaps it'll bring it home to her. It's not her I'm worried about. If you can get her to pay for the damage, I'll leave it. <sighs> she hasn't got any money. Well, she'll have to find some then, won't she? I'm going to grab her back to eat in the flat. I have a few things to do, yeah? All right, I'll catch you later then, Willie. Come for a beer, son? Uh, yeah, I've just got a phone call to make and then I'll see you in there. Yeah, see you later. Are you on your own, then? She's on her honeymoon with Mr Blobby. Oh. How long for? Well, I'm expecting her any minute. They've just gone into Manchester, some posh hotel overlooking the river, she said. So if the town centre gets flooded, we'll know who's fallen in, like? I'm refraining from sarcasm from now on. That way, I can't be blamed when it all collapses. Be not same, though, if you'd been mugged again, eh? Oh, I don't begrudge her a morning off. Are you going to be living with them, then? Looks like it, God help me. You'll have to have it adapted, then, what? Well, it'd have had to have that done anyway. Joyce'll need bolstering before he can start carrying on in the bedroom. Or he'll be coming through the ceiling. What was that about, sarcasm? Yes, well, old habits die hard, don't they? Morning! Morning. Ta-da, ta-da. Bye, Bill. You all right then, Mother? Well, I shouldn't have been. Now, what did I tell you? I've been telling her, Maud, that you're more resourceful than she gives you credit for. She was worried you couldn't manage on your own. I see. Does this mean that I've no part in your plans, then? Just so long as I know. Got spunk as your mother. I say she's got spunk. Yes, by the way, I take it my wife's are still living upstairs. Yeah. Oh, we'll talk about it later. Talk about what? Well, given our new circumstances, we might want to change the arrangement. I don't see why. I told him he could stay there. Well, written in blood, is it, this agreement? No. Any road, like I said, we'll talk about it later. Have a nice piece of belly pot for tonight, so don't you go spoiling your appetite, will you? I'm sorry. Don't you fret about me. Even if I couldn't manage, I'd move myself into a home before I'd live with that pillock. I saw the place was empty, otherwise I would not come. Jim, just spit it out, all right? What have you come for today? Tell me you've got AIDS? What? No, no. 
Um, I'm here about what I said yesterday. About the vasectomy not working. I don't know why I said that. Well, I, I do know why I said it. You said it so that I know the truth, I hope. Well, that's just it. I didn't tell the truth. That's not the truth. What? You mean you lied? Yeah, I'm afraid so, yeah. And I'm more ashamed than you'll ever know, Fee, honest to God. That's why I'm here. I want to put things right before there's too much damage done to you. The vasectomy, it worked. And I couldn't possibly be the father of your child. <laughs> But why lie? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? What, to mess things up with me and Alan? Yeah, I suppose so, to mess things up. Look, Faye, my feelings still run pretty damn deep, despite all the things you've no, said. No, but you've... that's vicious. Yes, it's vicious. And then I get to see what Alan did to Steve, you know? You know that Steve brought all of that on himself. Well, it doesn't have to make you protective, though, let me tell you. I can't get my head around this. I mean, I can understand you being angry and jealous. But to be so nasty as to lie like that, it's not you. Oh, isn't it? I don't know anymore. Unless that was the truth yesterday. And this is the lie today, that'd make more sense. Oh, come on, Faye, why would I do that? Because you're scared that I'll get rid of the baby. You want me to go ahead and have it. Then claim it for yours and break me and Alan up. No, no, Faye, honestly, I don't... No, no, no. no why not, eh? You acted out of malice yesterday, why can't you do it today? Except for this time you'd get a bigger payoff, wouldn't you? No, Faye, believe me. I swear to God, I'd never do anything like that. Not honestly. why, no! You have to believe me. No, Jim, you have just admitted that you're a liar! Oh, fine, OK. Look, I don't know anymore. Why didn't you just ask Alan to take a test after the kid he's born? That'll prove it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can just <sighs> see that. Alan, you won't mind going for a quick paternity test, would <sighs> you? I think it's yours, but I just want to make sure you'd absolutely love that, wouldn't you? It's fine. Faye, I've swallowed an awful lot of pride to come here. I just want to put your mind at rest, lovey. That's all. Well, it won't work. How am I supposed to possibly believe a word you say from now on, eh? Although that won't be a problem for much longer. What do you mean? We'll leave him. You're leaving Weatherfield? Why? To get away from you and your family, not to put too fine a point on it. Think it'd be best for everyone, don't you? It's about the damage at Natalie's. She wants her to pay for it. Well, she'll have a long wait. She's talking about going to the police cell. Well, let her. Look, she's serious. Can't you just pay for some of it? She can claim it on the insurance. That's what I've said, but she won't. All right, well, if you won't, I'll probably end up having to. But I'm telling you, it'll come out your maintenance because there's no other money. You do and I'll get the law onto you. I'm not having my kids suffer because of her. You did the damage, Sal. Be reasonable, can't you? Reason doesn't come into it where that cow's concerned. I'd rather die than give her anything. Whose is this? Chris's. What's he doing here? He's been sleeping on the settee. Since when? A couple of weeks while you were away. Why is that? Because he's got nowhere else to stay. Why do you think? So how come you never told me? I'm telling you now. Before? Who I have to stay is none of your business. Sounds like you've got something to hide to me. Don't you dare accuse me of anything like that. There's only one party guilty of that round here, and it's not me. Yeah, all right. No, it's not all right! You come round here moaning on about some stair carpet when it's our marriage that's in ruins. Go back to your tart, Kevin. Go back to her and tell her she'll never see a penny from me. How are you? man? All right, mate. Hi, Dad. How have you been? I went around the corner for fresh and chips. Are you all right for a jar? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Here's thanks. a pint, please, Andrew. Yes, mate, of course I'm. I bumped into Fiona, so did. Oh, yeah. Well, there's good news and there's bad news. Go on. The good news is you can put your paper away. Your flat hunting days are over. Oh, how come? Well, that's the bad news. McKenna and Fiona, they're leaving Weatherfield for good. She won't do it. Tried to reason with her. She just went hysterical. Oh, that old ploy. Pretty real to me. If she thinks she's going to get away with this. Chris is staying there as well. He's been there two weeks, apparently. Kept that quiet, didn't he? 
It's already sleeping bag. Kevin, I don't care if you saw his Winciette pyjamas. I just want to know who's going to pay for the damage to my house. Back where we started then, aren't we? So why didn't you tell me? About what? You, sleeping at Sally's. Because I knew you'd be like this. Yeah, well you can wonder. When people lie, they usually have something to hide. I didn't lie. As good as. And I've got nothing to hide, okay? You must have been staying over there when Sally went round and flooded Natalie's house. Yeah. So she didn't have to come to the garage for Natalie's house key. She could have got it out your pocket. She could have. Well, did she, didn't she? I don't know. You said she got that key from the garage. I said I think she did. Look what's going on here. You tell me. You keep it quiet about where you live and you don't want to tell me how Sally got the key. What else is there I don't know, eh? <laughs> well, there's nothing going on between me and Sally, if that's what you mean. Are you sure about that? What, do you think I'll be that stupid? To be working for you and sleeping with your wife. So what does Anne say about you sleeping over there? She's completely fine about it. So should you be. I think the lads at work have got something planned. I found this uh, big envelope that they'd hidden away, and there's a lot of whispering going on. What about you? Have you had a good day? Yeah. Mm. 48 hours till the honeymoon. <coughs> I can't wait. No, me neither. I'll tell you what I am dreading, though. Coming back. Why? He's not been bothering you again, has no, he? No, I'm just never going to be happy round here. Every time I go out, I'm worried I might bump into him. Oh, we'll feel different when we've had a holiday. I want to go away. As soon as we get back, I want to go somewhere where I'll never find us. Well, that might be difficult. Alan, you know what I mean. I want to go somewhere new. Fresh start. I mean it. I want to change my mind. All right. If that's what the lady wants. Mm-hmm. Right, well, that's what the lady shall have. Hmm. Right, you take those into the kitchen, Rosie. I'll help Mummy. And you take those, Sophie. That's it, good girl. That'll be Chris forgotten his keys, are you, Grandad? Yes? Mrs. Webster? Yeah. Detective Constable K, Weatherfield Police, DC Harris. I've searched everywhere. And you're sure it was full? I'm positive. When was the last time you saw it? Sunday. I always count my money on a Sunday night. Well, I've had no one in the house since neither then. Neither have I, neither have I. And I can assure you I haven't taken them. Well, there's only one explanation then. We've had a break-in. By thieves who left a television set and jewellery, but took 70 pence in copper without making a mess. There's no other explanation. Well, I'm afraid there is, Mr Sugden. I could have sworn I'd lost some raffle tickets last month. They turned up two weeks later in my other handbag. I hate to say this, but at our age, it's the sort of thing that happens. The brain starts to deteriorate. I think we do very well considering. Do you know, I was just thinking, that funny little attic room at the back, I make a nice little bolt hole for Sally and the kids. What do you mean, to come regularly? Well, it'd be nice for them to know they can get away like that, wouldn't it? You'd have no objections, would you? Well, not if it's now and again. But, well, turning over a room just for them. Well, I don't mean just for them. I mean, we'd use it for the other guests as well, obviously. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Well, say if you mind, and I won't mention it. No, no, I, I, I don't mind, but... Well, don't you think we ought to get settled first before we start making plans like that? You're right. Besides, it needs decorating, that room. Kids might like to choose something that they like. We'll leave it. I just want to have a word with Mummy about something that happened, so go up and play for a little bit, all right? Well, we've had an allegation from a Mrs Horrocks that you entered her property unlawfully and caused a substantial amount of criminal damage. She says you've admitted this. That's right to my husband who now lives with her. Didn't she tell you? She took him away from me and left me on my own to bring up two kids. But you do admit the charge? Yeah. 
I did it. I cleaned up afterwards, but it was too late. What are you going to do? Send me to jail? No, but I'm afraid I will have to arrest you. We normally need witnesses, but since you've confessed... You mean if I accuse somebody of something and there's witnesses, you arrest them? Well, it's a bit more complex than that, but yes, if it's a serious enough offence. Well, she started thumping me last night out in the street. Loads of people saw it. Why don't you arrest her as well? We could stop at her house on way to the police station. You can take us both in at the same time. Only don't put us in the same cell together because we might rip each other apart. And can you hang on a while while I go and get a babysitter? Or were you thinking about taking my kids into care while I'm interrogated? They've been damaged enough already with the father leaving. I'm sure one more trauma isn't going to make any difference. I'll report this to my superior and get back to you. OK. You're not eating your belly pork, Mrs Elliot. Is it not crisp enough? It's delicious, Fred. You're an excellent cook. Well, there's something wrong with you, I can tell. It's about what you said about Bill this morning. Oh, I. It works very well with him above the shop, so I'd rather you didn't interfere if you don't mind. Oh, we're only commenting. And about Mother, I am not going to turn my back on her, no matter whatever you might want. Now, I never said that. What I said was, we've got to get on with our own lives. Now, when you get married, you cleave to your spouse. That's not turning your back on her. It's getting your priorities right. You mean you first and her second? Us first, Maureen. Us. I married you, not your mother. You know how much I care for her, Fred. If we're going to make this work, then we've got to start as we mean to go on. We're happy, aren't we? Yes, of course we are. A long may it continue. Raise your glass. To a long and happy marriage. To a long and happy marriage. And that means you and me, Maureen. There's nobody else in this equation now. Well, thanks for coming round. Pity we're not being arrested. The girls might have liked to ride in a police car. Has it got a blue flashing light on the top? Don't push it, Mrs Webster. Even if we do drop charges, there's no guarantee Mrs Horrocks will. Why, what else could she do? Well, she can take out a civil action against you. It still drags you through the courts. And from what I've seen of her, I'd say there's every chance of that happening. Good luck. Paper in the hall. No. All around the front door. Go and have a look. You get another roll. Try and match it up. I don't think so. Why not? Because it needs stripping down and starting from fresh. The whole lot, just like the stairs and the ceiling. Well, we'll see what it looks like when it's all dried out. It's stained. It won't look any better than it does now. All right, I'll sort it. Why should you? It's up to her to sort it out. Oh yeah, and how's she going to pay for it? You know, it's all down to me in the end. I shall have to get a loan. <laughs> yeah, right. I still can't see why you don't claim it on the insurance. Tell them you went to the shops, left the tap running. Save a load of hassle. One, it's not true. And two, they won't believe me. Because I've already told the police what really did happen. You are? When did you do that? Yesterday. You gave him Sally's name? Oh, terrific! What'd you go and do that for? Right, I won't be late. All right, and we're setting up as soon as you get back, all right? If we're packed and ready, will yeah, we? Yeah, we will be. Hey, come on, you. Cheer up. It's not going to be long yet. What way? Us. Married. We'll be away from here. I just can't wait to get away. Oi! Where do you think you're going? School. Where else? Not dressed like that, you know. What's wrong? That is never less than three inches above the knee. So? So, it's not regulation. Well, it's no different to everyone else's. Liz! Will you tell her to put a different skirt on? Why? What's wrong with it? See, you're living in the past, ma'am. If she gets sent home, don't you blame me. Hey, I can't tell her what to wear. But you could back me up. Oh. Instead of opting out every time! Morning. Morning. Dare I ask, 
You've got a job. Uh, yes, yes, but I wouldn't get too excited. A school the other side of town just found could have do a day's supply teaching, but uh, tell you the truth, I'm dreading it. How on earth can I prepare six lessons at ten minutes' notice? I'm not even sure how to get there. Oh, good luck. It sounds as if you'll need it. Oh, uh, by the way, can I give you a lift? I'm going down Rosamond Street. Oh, thank you, yes. I'm doing a shift at the charity shop. Actually, I'll be glad of a break from Mr. Sugden. Oh, what's the problem? I couldn't begin to explain. You promised! I did not! How can you say that? I said I was going to go straight to the police. Well, did I or didn't I? Yeah, and then you promised not to. Because you were going to get Sally to apologise and pay for the damage. She refused, so what was I supposed to do next? You could have told me first! I did, Kevin! <sighs> what a mess! I couldn't agree more, but I don't know why you're siding with her. I'm not. I'm the injured party. Yes, I know you are. So, if she doesn't pay for the damage, who does? Look, I'll source it somehow. Anyway, that's not the point. It's a, it's a matter of principle. Look, I'm not arguing with that. All I'm saying is it's just all getting out of hand involving the police. It's, it's all getting out of proportion. No, you're wrong. It's because I don't want it to get out of hand that I've done it. If she can get away with something like this, she'll try something else. No, she won't. Well, I'm not prepared to take that risk. Morning. The lodger returns. Chucked you out, has she? No, I've just come to get me overalls. There's things. Rosie, go and take Sophie upstairs and go and brush your teeth. Don't be too long, because it's nearly time for school. What's up? Police came round last night. What about? What do you think? She's gone and told them the whole story. Oh, kidding? Yeah, I made it up. Of course I'm not kidding. She's pressing charges. What? After all she's done to you? <sighs> but I admitted it to the police, Chris. What else could I do? Right, well, that's it. I'm going to go and have a word with her. No, don't. Why not? Because I don't want you to get the sack. Well, that's a risk I'm willing to take, Sal. I'd rather you didn't, but... Thanks. I appreciate the thought. You must get on to the sign writer. What for? Maureen Allsworth, licensed to sell, etc., etc. Who's Maureen Allsworth when she's at home? I don't suppose there's any hurry. Oh, you, know, you never know. You might be selling intoxicated liquor illegally under a false name. <laughs> what are you going to do for a bite to eat this lunchtime? Shall we go out for a trip in the country? I can't leave her on her own. Where is she? Have you mentioned out? No, you said you... you promised. Mother... Fred wants to ask you something. Well? Maureen and I... We were wondering if you'd do us the honour of gracing our table. Gracing it? Gracing it with what? Our humble repast. 7.30 for 8 tonight. It was Fred's idea now, wasn't it, Fred? Oh, yes. Fridays, I usually stop in and watch the telly. Oh, well. If you've got a previous engagement, then we'll leave it. Fred, I'm sure you can make an exception, Mother. Well, if you insist. And of course we do, don't we, Fred? We'd be flattered. I'm sure you will. Run it. Hi, Bill. What's this, a late start? Snap time. I'm doing a job around the corner. A uh, packet of digestives, I think, and a kind of pop will do. Oh, Bill, I'll get that. No, we've got a dodgy shelf here, look. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, it wants fixing up properly, that. Do you want me to have a look oh, at it? Oh, would you, yeah. Thank What's you. the problem? Well, <clears throat> it looks like a dodgy bracket to me. What's a new bracket? Mm. Once all you fit, but more like. Leave it to me, and I know just the fella. He owes me a favour. He's a proper joiner. Oh, and I'm not, eh? Well, don't say I didn't offer. Oh, Fred, Bill's a proper joiner. Made a lovely job of my kitchen units. Dare say, but I know a cowboy when I see one. I say, I know one when I see one. If you want a job doing proper, you don't go to build the bodger. From now on, my petal, it's all in the best. I'll see you tonight. Give your rubby a kiss. Mm. You lot sit down. Right, we're going to help me get them over. Was it in here? Yeah. Oh, I might have known you'd have been in here. First today. You liar. Hey, you. Uh, can you lend us a fiver? Can I, Eck? I'm not working to keep you in ill. Something come. Suit yourself. Don't worry, I will. Right, girls, there you go. And I don't tell Mike Goldman. Why is it on expenses? He has some very archaic ideas about fraternising with the workers. 
thinks I should keep a discreet distance from the oinks. I hope that don't mean me. Oi, me? <laughs> I'll have you know I went to a very good school. Oh, I approved, was it? <laughs> <laughs> She's heard it. Yeah. <laughs> do you know, that's the first time you've smiled today. Don't do you any good, Sal, you know, keeping it all bottled up. Whatever it is. Well, I'm surprised nobody saw the police car outside. Yeah, well, we didn't like to ask. Oh, you must have been biting your tongues all morning. Well, we were. But is it trouble, Mike? Well, somebody seems to think I went round to her house while they were away, turned on all the taps in the bathroom and caused loads of damage. No. Oh. <laughs> Who's house can that be, I wonder? Hey, did you? I might have done. <laughs> Buy it. Hey, good on yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, it were good at the time. I'm in it up to my neck now. Oh, don't worry, love. They'll probably just let you off with your caution. Oh, I don't think so. I think somebody wants a word. Is that your idea? Is it Eka's like? I know nothing about it. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Wants to be ashamed. Fancy going to police about a thing like that. It's her that wants locking up that fancy woman of yours. Anyway, I'll try and talk about pressing charges. Oh, that's kind of you. Fear you are. Do you reckon it's unlocking? What? Or going on your honeymoon before the wedding. Why should it be? I don't know. You're not superstitious, are you? Actually, I think everybody should do it. Because then if you don't get on, you can always call it off when you get back. I wasn't meaning that you might want to. Fee, you all right? You're not having second thoughts, are you? Because of Alan? Or is it the baby? Do you think we're not going to be able to manage with the business? Because we'll manage between us. I've no problem. It's more complicated than that, Max. I won't tell anyone. Oh, I'm sorry, Max. I really, really appreciate your concern. You're a brilliant mate, but this is something I can't tell anyone. Not even Alan. She's told everyone. Everyone was egging her on. How do you mean? Just saying how much she deserved it. Well, I hope you put them straight. So, what did you say to Sally? Nothing. Nothing? Well, next time you see her, you tell her that I mean business. She's not going to get away with this. Look, can't we just forget the whole matter? No, we cannot. And even if I would, she won't. Not with all her mates rallying around her. She's a loose cannon, Kevin. I mean, what's she going to do next? Could I have a few words, Bill? Now, I hope you don't think I were casting aspersions about the quality of your work, because I wasn't. Well, I'm glad about that, Fred. Mind, some of the tars you put up for me have dropped off. No, ah, well, it's probably the fumes, isn't it? Fumes? What fumes? From your pies. I hope that were a joke, because I don't want us to fall out. Well, let's call it quits, eh? Now, there's just one other thing, and it's got now to do with the fact that Maureen is now Mrs Elliot and it being a bit awkward, you living above the shop. And why is it awkward? I, I said it's now to do with that, because I'm not a jealous man, never have been, but you'll have to flit. Out of the flat? Yes. But why? Storage. Well, she's overloading her shelves, you see. That's why they're sagging under the strain. She's going to need more space, and with the business expanded, with the added input and the fresh ideas, well, she's going to need even more. But what for? Storage. So, you want me out of the flat? Now, there's no need to be so blunt. I was, I was just tipping you the wing because Maureen doesn't want to mention it herself. Right. I get the picture. I thought you would. Max, um, look, can you just take over for ten minutes? I've just got to pop out. Yeah, sure. What, we shall say the long rings? Um, just tell them I've gone to the shop anywhere I won't belong, don't we? Right, sorry. Where were we then? Oh, hello. I'm sorry about this morning. I would have liked to have heard it from you. And I had hoped that there wouldn't be any unpleasantness. I beg your pardon? Anyway, look, I'll start getting my gear together and I'll look for another place and, uh, end of the week be all right, will it? What are you on about? Haven't he told you? 
Alison too, Toby. What? Fred? Oh, what has he been saying? That he want me out of the flat. What? Well, has he not discussed it with you? Oh, you don't know the half of it. What exactly has he been saying to you? He said that you need more storage space, so you're going to have to use upstairs. Well, yes, we're cluttered. I can't deny that. And he said he was telling me because you didn't want to mention it yourself. Oh, look, can we come to some sort of compromise? I mean, you don't have to move out straight away. Well, that's not the impression I got. I don't blame you. Oh, dear, look, I certainly don't want to stay around when I'm not wanted, yeah? But I'll try and get out by the end of the week, right? So sorry, Bill. I'm sure he's just trying to ease the situation up. Between the both of us, just to avoid any confrontation, you know, for you and for me. Aye, maybe. Oh. You're trouble. You're too loyal. Is it a sin to be loyal to your husband? Depends on the husband. Hi, Effie. Set yourself down. Can I get you a beer or something? No. Right. There we go. Satisfied? Yeah, thank you. So, all your worries are over now, eh? Alan's the father of your child, just like I said. You also told me the opposite, Jim. Yes, I did, and I told you why I did. Don't get me wrong, I should never have done it. Mind you, haven't said that Alan doesn't exactly play by the rules now, does he? And you've got a whole lifetime to find that out. I didn't expect you, bless him. No, I don't suppose you did. But I bet you this here's the best wedding present you'll ever have. Almost. Have you ever told anyone about us? No. Nope. Do you promise me that you never will? Mm-hmm. I'll give you my word. I suppose you change your mind. And why would I do that? Because you hate Alan. Because you can't accept the fact that I'm marrying him. Hundreds of different reasons. I mean, it'll always be there, won't it? knowledge between us. You mean when you were going out with him, we uh, went together? I wasn't actually going out with him at the time, Jim. So what's the problem, eh? Hmm? Tell him. Then you'll have nothing to fear from me at all, will you? Want to put a cat on? Yeah. Hi. You know my boyfriend? No. Well, I've chucked him anyway. He's a big head. Oh, why are you telling me? I just thought you might be interested. You tell you, aren't you? Yeah, well, your mum used to hang me out on the washing line to dry when I was little. Honest? You must think I'm dad. Do you go to Summers? Sometimes. I go every Saturday. Small one. Yeah? I might see you there. Come on, leave him alone. He's got work to do. It's a bit over the top, eh? Getting the police involved. Look, if Sally's decided to cause trouble, what's Natalie supposed to do? Turn the other cheek? There's two sides to every story. Sally isn't all sweetness and light like she's making out. And Natalie isn't supposed. Well, just keep your nose out, if you can, you know, staying in the same house. Who says I am? Well, aren't you? No. I'm staying at Angie's or Dizzy's away. And then what? You're gonna move back in with Sally? I'm not planning to, but it doesn't stop me from feeling sorry for her. Me sitting the police on her, what's that all about, eh? Right, I'll just go and fetch the other curse. All right, and don't be long. You know that Chris? He's asked me out. He hasn't. I thought he went out with Angie. I'm telling you, slumbers, Saturday night. What did he say? Hey, you were dead keen. Is he picking you up? No, he said he'd meet me there. He don't want that Angie to find out, does he? I bet your feet. So, have you told him yet? What do you think? <laughs> well, I hope you don't regret it. Well, he'll never know, will he? Not from me, and not from you. Why? What, because I give you my word? No. Because if you so much as breathe the word to him, then the next person to find out will be Steve. So you just think about that, eh? You've both got just as much to lose. Oh, hi, Jim. Thank you. 
Oh, what a day. Oh, was it ghastly? There was something I wanted to ask you. Would you mind calling round? Uh, sure, yeah, uh, as soon as I've recovered. Yes. Were you talking to Jim McDonald? Yeah. Was he pestering you? No. He was just wishing us a happy honeymoon, that's all. <laughs> I didn't know he cared. Let's go. <laughs> Woof. Whose go is it? It's mother. Might have known. I'm thinking. So am I. Reverend Green in the library with a lead pipe. Wrong. With a candlestick, then. You've had your go. It's my turn. Reverend Green in the library with the candlestick. <laughs> I said that first. Game over. <laughs> did you want to be getting back? You promised us a brandy. So I did. What about your teleprogram? I put portable in conservatory. Shall I wheel you out? Don't bother. I am motorised. Well, yeah, you see, she likes to be independent, likes to fend for herself. So be it. Fred Elliot in the conservatory with snake venom. Apparently they're going to spend the week in Cartmull to get the hang of the ropes sort of thing. So, it's all going ahead? Well, it seems so. Anyway, Rita's asked if I look after the cabin and wondered if you'd help. Well, I can't be any worse than what I've been doing. Did you not enjoy being back in the classroom? Not the same as a permanent job, you know, no chance to get to know the kids and uh, the subjects I'm interested in, like drama and poetry, depend on mutual trust. When you just stay on occasional days, you can't initiate your own projects or get to know the staff. No, to be honest, for someone who enjoys teaching, it's very frustrating. I'm sorry. Can I use your pen? Of course. The big man of the tribe who are going to... Have you altered the colour? I haven't been using the television. Well, when Trevor McDowell was reading the news on 10 o'clock news last night, he went blue. You probably did it by mistake. Aye, I probably spent them uh, Thomas's, uh, you know, without knowing. Only I didn't. Hello, right, Barlow, yes, I was in on supply. Yeah. Look, I know it's rather short notice, but uh, I thought I'd better give you some warning. I'm afraid I won't be able to be in on Monday. Yeah. Yes, that's right, I've got another job. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, a little more permanent. And local. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. Thanks. Bye. <sighs> you know things are bad when I have to lie so I can help out in the cabin. Only a white lie. And um, you will be doing Rita a favour. Yeah. Great girl drinking that. There you are. Staff nurse Crompton's looking for you. Well, I've just knocked off for me break. <laughs> Why? What's it about? Oh, there's a patient just been brought in. They're asking to see you. What's the name? Dunno. Not sure if it's a relative or friend. Didn't say. Right. Cheers. I don't think she'll have any trouble sleeping tonight. I said she'll not have any trouble sleeping. She's had three brandies. She was trying to keep warm, stuck out there in the conservatory. Well, it was what she wanted. <laughs> she hasn't got any choice, do you know? It's lucky for her that we haven't got a garden shed. I thought we entertained her right royally. Any road. We'll ask her again in a fortnight. Oh, will we? Well, what's the matter? I thought that's what you wanted. It is, yes. Now, what but the... is it, Maureen? Come on, Petal, tell us. You're making all the decisions without asking me. I mean, why a fortnight? I might want her to come over on Sunday for a dinner. It's like I've got no say in anything anymore. You telling my tenant that he's got to move out, you just can't go around doing that. I apologise, but I only did it for best. Maybe you did, Fred, but you really must consult me. You really must. Agreed. Humble pie will be eaten in vast quantities. Now, let's have a night, Captain, then have an early night. All right. But first, the washing up. I'll wash you dry. Oh, let's leave it till the morning. Don't put off till tomorrow what can be done today. Any road, it's unhygienic, I say. Perhaps we'll... Uh, We'll leave it till tomorrow morning, just this once.
All right. I came over soon as they told me. Yeah, thanks for coming. I wasn't sure you'd be about. Yeah. Well, what's happened? And they tell you? No. No, I mean neither. Uh, here, we'll just pass that drink. Yeah, sure. It's somewhere down here. Somewhat they can't sort out. Hey, don't say that, Don. <laughs> Never know these days. I know, all right. I know I'm dying. Hey, Shaw. Special delivery. Hey, can't be Sunday. It's a letter from Natalie, giving me seven days to pay for the damage or she's taking me to court. Yeah. Bye. Flaming woman! I don't believe this. This is bang out of order. What does our Kevin think he's doing? Look, Sal, hey, listen, listen. Don't worry about it, eh? I'll see what I can do. Oh, it's all right, Bill. I brought it all on myself. No way. Look, I'll talk to our Kevin. Try and get him to see sense. If that's possible, eh? Thanks anyway, but I've got to get used to fighting my own battles from now on. Are you sure? I'm sure. Well, you know where I am, eh? Oh, what a beautiful... Bill! Walk. Bill, Fred's got something he wants to say to you. Uh, what, what? Oh, yes. Have I? Yes, you have. Oh, yes. Uh, well, like I say... Not now, Freddy. Eh? Bill, it's about the flat. Look, I've told you. I'll be out as soon as I can, Maureen. Fred! What? Fred was going to tell you that you needn't move out on his behalf. There's no hurry. We can sort all the storage out. Don't you bother. The way I feel at the moment, the sooner I'm away from this place, the better. Bill, uh... uh right, I I'm off to the cabin. Uh, you remember I'm helping out while Rita and Mavis are away? Right, well, I'll have some fairy cakes for you when you come back. Oh, there's no need. It's... Very kind of you, Mr. Sugden, but I, I, I don't want to put you to any trouble. Well, there's been a frost between us recently, haven't there? It's my way of making amends. I'd like to invite you to have tea with me. Well, are you sure? It, it, it seems a lot of trouble. No trouble at all. Bye. Close that deal, how to get on in business. The customer is always king. Where did it come from? Don't ask. Well, they're mine, actually. Are they? Yes, well, I thought starting a new business venture. She thinks she's Richard Branson. <laughs> actually, they're quite good from what I hear. Are they? Well, then, I'll play them on the journey. <laughs> you won't. I'm having Radio 2 on. <laughs> on my walkman. Mm -hmm. Sorry I'm late. Oh, oh, that's all right, Emily. We're grateful. Yes, oh, it's so exciting. Cause well, Derek loves the lakes, you know, the hills and the peaks. Oh, come on, let's get going before she bursts into the sound of music. <laughs> now, I'll give Ken the lowdown, Emily. There shouldn't be any problems, but if there is, give us a ring. Of course, yes. Right. Yes, OK, well, bye-bye. Yes, have a safe journey. Bon voyage. Well, OK, then. <laughs> you all right, Emily? Uh, what do you know about Alzheimer's? Well, not a lot. Why? Mr. Sugden's getting so odd. He's invited me to tea. I, I mean, I've got to go, but I'm not sure I want to. I I don't feel comfortable with him at the moment. Oh, I see. Well, do you think you could get him to see a doctor? Oh, no. I mean, I don't even know if there's anything wrong, really. It, it's just... Oh, I don't know. I, I feel responsible for him, in a way, but I don't know what to do for the best. Well, why don't I come back with you? Oh, would you? Well, I think you should tell her. Tell her what? The man who tried to kill us out. Yeah, but he's not. That's what I'm saying. But Gail is on his deathbed. He's dying. He's not rampaging the streets. 
Look, he's been transferred to Weatherfield General for medical reasons. There's no chance of him getting out. He's not been released. So why worry, Alma? Oh, the only reason I told you this is because I feel sorry for the guy. Sorry? Mm. Sorry. Look, as far as the police are concerned, Don Brenner's not responsible for his own actions. Well, if he was, he'd have been sent down, wouldn't he? You know, he's not responsible. He's dying of pancreatic cancer. He's hardly got Lady Luck riding on his back, has he? So what do you want to do? Visit. Go and see him. I thought you might say that. I don't know, Martin. Why up? I can take this. I can see why you want to sit over here. Yeah, as far as where's I can get after their latest stroke. And what's that? Well, that woman that he's taken up with is only suing Sally for the damage to her house. No. Oh yeah. Pay up or see you in court. And he's got the neck to bring it in here. Don't do it, Natalie, please. OK, love. Thanks, Dave. She's got a lesson to learn. learn. She's learning it. I know she is. She's not going to do it again. No, not if she sees that I'm not standing for it. It's not her you're punishing. It's Rosie and Sophie who are going to suffer. And how do you work that one out? Well, think about it. The man being dragged through the courts. How's it supposed to affect them? Sally can't yeah, cope with all that. It's bound to come back on the girls and us. Us? Yeah, of course. But Sally's got no money, so I'll end up paying for it. I pay for it, it comes out of what we've got to spend together. Please. Oh. Oh. Isn't it just wonderful? Can't you just smell the ozone? Well, I can certainly smell what they're spreading on that field. Oh, it's beautiful. Derek would have been so happy here. Oh, come here. Yes, he would. But it's just you and me now. He wouldn't have minded that, would he? Girl. Oh, Arita. You do think we're doing the right thing, don't you? The right thing? Of course. You and me, mistresses of all we survey. <laughs> oh, mistress of thy do we. <laughs> Oh, hello again. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, good hello. journey. Yes, oh, yes, yes, thank you. Yes, lovely, thank you. I was just saying to Rita, it, it's just so tranquil. Uh, tranquil? Mm. Oh, right, yes, yes, you, you won't need any sleeping pills round here. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, shall we get going? I'll show you both to your room. Room? Rooms? Ah, no, room. We're operating at full capacity at the moment. Me and the wife are in the caravan, and you're in our little room. There's no problem, is there? Oh, no, no, that'll be lovely. <laughs> Just you and me, Rita. Just you and me. Ah, oh, friendly. He's telling you he's not keen on you at Sally's. That's his territorial look. Yeah? Well, he should pay me a bit more then, shouldn't he? I mean, what am I supposed to find around here on his wage, isn't it? Two pints, please. Oh, okay. Maybe someone should have a word. Hmm? She's probably not an unreasonable woman. For somebody who steals husbands. Oh, she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing, all right, breaking up homes. Maybe someone ought to have a word with her. Maybe that's just what I need to do, eh? No, Bill. I mean, calmly, sit down, work it out, like adults. Right, what can I get you? Try about wine, please. Oh, let okay, me get you that, Bill. No. Oh, for all time's sake. I said sake. no. Dad? Not you, were. What do you want, Dad? I said not you. You've got some neck, haven't you? Coming in here after what you've done. Hey, don't talk to Natalie like that. Don't talk to Natalie like what? Like the marriage wrecker that she is? Like the home breaker that she is? How do you want me to talk to her, Kevin? Like the sensible woman that's going to drag your missus through the courts? Not in here, Dad. Oh, sorry, Kevin. Is it not convenient? Look, just leave it, can't you? Right, I'm going. No, you're not. Stay there. He can't talk to you like that. Oh, can't I? <laughs> She's going to drag Sally through the courts and you're standing up for her. I'm trying to do what's right. Right for whom, Kevin? Right for your little kids when they see the mum dragged through the courts? Now, that's enough, Bill. Dad. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
I'm a big disappointment, Anna. Correct. But I'm getting used to that. you remember? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> oh, thank you. Right, well, I'll uh, see you for tea. Right. Look around anywhere. The house is open to you. <laughs> hey, you've scored a hit there, lady. Oh, oh <laughs> really? Oh, but what do you think? I mean, it is lovely, isn't it? Mm. We're going to be so happy here. I can just feel it. Well, we will if you keep your snores to yourself. <laughs> hey, being as you've scored such a hit with mine host, why don't you ask him if he can cancel one of his bookings? Then we wouldn't have to share a bedroom. Mavis? Sorry? The room. Yes. It's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> so, everything went quiet. <laughs> and then Bill walked <laughs> out. We all went back to our drink. <laughs> What did Kevin and Natalie do? Oh, don't know. Nobody dared look. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Kevin. Oh, you don't mean that. No, I don't. <laughs> Surprising how generous you can be when you're enjoying somebody else's misfortune. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Natalie. <laughs> Poor Natalie. <laughs> She's very misunderstood, Ooh, you know. Yeah. I do hope she wasn't too Ooh. upset. She was shook to her roots. What? And little black ones. <laughs> <laughs> you seem a bit yonderly this after, love. Can I get you out? No, nothing. It's right. I'm just a bit worried about my mother. I don't know what can be keeping her. You say you're wrong? No, three times. She's not picking it up. She's playing hard to get, is that one? I'm not waiting any longer. I'm going to go over... Your mother. There you are. We were worried about you. Oh, really? Certainly we were, beside ourselves. Well, you needn't be worried anymore. Where have you been, Mother, and why haven't you been picking up the telephone? I'm going to tell you that now. In private. I am getting a trickle, Mr. Groves, and I'm used to a gush. <sighs> Wonderful old lady. Great character. She comes back year after year. <laughs> and always with the same complaint. Ah, heck, she won't get that treatment from me. We take over this place, she'd be looking for alternative accommodation, I tell you. <laughs> Rita. This isn't the cabin, you know, it's a different world. This is not retail, it's what they call the service economy. It's what? It's the service sector where the customer's always right. Not when she's getting into my bath, she isn't. You know, I don't think you're taking this thing seriously. How do you mean? Well, you seem to be finding an awful lot of faults. I'm perfectly happy, thank you. There you are, Mayfield Court. I can move in when I want. Well, say summit. I'm taking it in. It's a shock. I was worried sick that you were lying at the bottom of the stairs unconscious. While I was visiting an apartment in a nice sheltered accommodation scheme and sorting out my life. Well, I don't know why it's a shock. It were inevitable. What? Of course it was. You abandoned me. What was I supposed to do? Any road, I thought you'd be pleased. Pleased? Of course. Now you've got your own life to lead, and I'm letting you get on with it. I won't be a burden to you. I'll move into Mayfield Court. A nice to old folk there. Nice? What do you mean, nice? What are you trying to say, Mother, that I haven't been nice to you? Well, if the cap fits. I know exactly what you're doing. Nice. You're letting me get on with my own life. 
You're not going to be a burden to me. Well, when has that ever stopped you before? What do you mean? You're not going to be a burden to me. I know exactly what this is about. This is about poor Maud being forced to go into a home because nasty Maureen is being selfish. This is about Maureen being made to feel guilty, so she'll persuade poor, hard done by Maud to stay with her. Well, think on, Mother, because I'm going to call your bluff this time. I don't time. know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, don't you? This is about Maureen being made to feel guilty because Maud has tried to ruin every relationship she's ever had. I have not. Name one man, name one relationship you've tried not to sell her. Bill Webster. Luncheon's ready. Not, not now. now. Have you had some? No. Are you sure? Uh, what makes you say that, Percy? Well, I've ate 12 cakes. There's only nine in here. So somebody must have had some. Well, uh... Are you sure you baked 12? I'm positive, yes. I, I used my baking tray, didn't I? I had 12 holes in it, and I filled every one of them. I know me baking, me. I bake fairy cakes under fire, I have. Well, I, I just thought I'd ask. Oh, there's something very funny going on in this house. Yes. Uh, tell Ken about Trevor MacDonald. Oh, uh, Trevor MacDonald, he's gone blue. Don't worry. He'll come round eventually. He's your dad. Dads always do. Yeah, not this time. Yes, he will. Look, even I don't agree with what you're doing, so what does he? Hey, you know what I think? It's wrong. I keep telling you, but you keep taking the notice. Wait a minute. I'm the victim, now I'm taking the blame. Yeah, but it's vindictive. I mean, what's Sally going to do? She can't hurt you. She knows she's done wrong, she's not going to do it again. You seem very concerned about Sally all of a sudden. Yeah, because she's my wife. Oh, is that right? And what am I then, your bit on the side? Natalie! We should give Kevin those flowers. Looks like he needs them. Oh, over my dead body. <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, are you two off out then? Uh, yeah. Oh, hey, those are nice. Who are they for? Um, um Ben Martins is in hospital. Oh, that's where you're off to. Oh, never mind. I just thought you might fancy a drink, that's all. Oh, nothing serious, is it, I hope? No. No, oh, no, it's not serious. Oh, good, I hate hospitals. They give me the creeps. Hey, it's nobody I know, is it? No, I don't think so. Oh, well, anyway, hope they're better soon. Anyway, I'll see you both. See you. OK, Bye. yeah, see ya. Well done. Well done? You know I ain't lying. No, you do. That's why I said, well done. Well, it was either that or admit I was taking flowers to Don Brennan. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you obviously don't think much of me. Don't start again. If you think I can be that manipulative, Mother. when all I'm trying to do is what's best for you. I've only ever had your best interest at heart. You've chosen Fred, well, so be it. You know what I think of him. So you must have known that I couldn't live with him and you. Not while you shared the same roof. So I think it's best for all concerned if I do the unselfish thing and see to myself. Right, I'll be off now. Hang on a minute. You really going through with this? Yes. To tell you the truth, I'm rather looking forward to it now. I don't know what to say. You selfish old woman. Happy to go into a home now, are you? Sort your own life out, will you? Well, why didn't you do that? Ten years ago. What? I've looked after you all these years. I've put up with your snide comments about my friends and you're happy to go into a home now, are you? Why didn't you give me the freedom when it mattered? When I could have done something with my life? Not now when all I've got. All you've got is him. I'm sorry, Maureen. You've made your bed. Why you had to bring so much stuff, I cannot imagine. These creases will never fall out in this space. I say these creases are... Oh. 
Come back to this planet? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, were you saying something? Yes. We definitely need more space. Our own oh. space. Yes, well, I was thinking, apparently, the successful business needs to keep its unit costs as low as possible, so I think in that case... It means that we should continue to share this bedroom and then we won't eat into our profit margins. What? <laughs> yes. No, he's not here. He's in his caravan. Well, I don't know. Well, Mrs Late, you will just have to do what I'm doing and that's grin and bear it. Going to have to make more effort. Now the expert says that the customer is always king. You quote that tape to me one more time, lady, and I am going to ram it somewhere where you will find it very difficult to hear. I think we should go. Huh. A few more minutes, eh? We've been here half an hour. He's obviously out of it. And come back. Okay. 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 Huh. Hello, Don. How are you, Don? Huh. I've had my fortune told. Apparently, my lifeline isn't too healthy, mate. How are you, girl? I'm fine. David, say hello, huh? They're fine. I'm gonna miss them. Huh? Oh, thanks for coming, girl. It means such a lot. I was gonna say, when you're getting to end up road, but it's. It's a bit melodramatic, that, and even for a minicab driver. <laughs> you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying, do you? I haven't always seen eye to eye. <laughs> That's some rows. Huh. Some right barnies, eh? <laughs> yeah. I've always respected you, girl. <laughs> it may not seem like that, but... I have, and I want you to know that. It's important to me that you know that, because it means that when I think about the kids, I think of them with fondness. What I'm trying to say is that I'm sorry for everything. <laughs> oh, don't, don't you start looking. You got me going. It's smashing to see it really is. You can't... You can't... I mean, will you? Like, you know... Can you forgive me? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of people to say that to you. You're most important. Listen, can you not help me with others? Well, I mean, that'd be brilliant. Because I could go with a clean slate. Will you bring Alma to see me? I don't. I don't. Oh, please. You, you and her. If I can make me peace with you two, I can die happy. What do you say? I mean, will you do this last thing for me, will you? Please? There was a time when meadow, grove, and stream, the earth and every common sight, to me did seem apparelled in celestial light, the glory and the freshness of a dream. Oh, Mr. Groves, that's beautiful. <laughs> William Wordsworth. The Lakeland poet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not another place like this in England, Mrs. Burton. I don't know how you can bear to leave it. Well, everything has a season, Mrs. Wilton, and our season here has come to an end. Oh, we've enjoyed happy times, myself and Celia, but neither of us are getting any younger. Well, 
It's just lovely, the garden and the house. Well, actually, I came out to see if you'd like to take a peek at the vegetable garden. Oh, homegrown vegetables? Oh, yes, in season. The customers come to expect oh. it, you know. Would you like to see my little patch? I'd, I'd love to. Derek and I were very keen. Oh, Rita! So, you are up at last. Mr Groves. <laughs> well, Mr Groves, I don't know if it's the country air or the strength of your nightcaps, but when I got up this morning, Rita was dead to the world. Probably the excitement warmed me out. Well, never mind, you're here now. Just in time, because Mr Groves is going to show us his vegetable patch. Uh, well, no, if you don't mind, I'll settle for a cup of tea and a piece of toast. Have you not had your breakfast yet? No, but I intend to rectify that almost immediately, Mavis. <laughs> She's going to have to pull her socks up when we move in, isn't she, Mr Groves? Always an early start at by the wee. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I haven't moved in yet, Mavis. But I'm quite sure getting up at 5.30 every morning to mark up the papers for 24 years will stand me in good stead. Excuse me. Oh, dear. I, I do hope we haven't upset your friend. Oh, no. She's always grumpy in the mornings. She'll be fine when she's had a cup of tea. <laughs> so, uh, you're going to tell Alma then? I don't know. Well, you saw what it was like. He was hardly a threat. He didn't try to kill me, did he? Uh, kids, look, Ashley's over there now. Watch the road. Go and have a chat with him. Go on. It's the road. Look, Gail, the man's on his deathbed. He's got a few weeks to live. He's desperate. I know. You know, when she sees how helpless he is, yeah, all right. Maybe you're right. So what are you going to do? You're going to ring her? No. Best do it face to face. Well, don't leave it too long. We can't afford to hang about, can we? Oh, I know. I'll invite her round to the cafe. It's a day off today. But I want you there when I do. All right. Better tell Ashley as well. I bet he doesn't, then. Right. See you later. See you. Bye. Good day. And you. Hiya, Sally. Hiya. Have you seen her? The cow. Not good enough for you nicking her husband, eh? You have to bleed her dry into the bargain. Leave it, Janice. Leave it? She wants what's coming to her, that one. Please, I've got enough. Somebody ought to put the boot into her. See ya. Have a word with yourself. I don't know why you've the cheek to show your face after what you're doing to this lass. I want to talk to Sally, not you. It's all right, Janice. Talking. Okay. Nice, Sam. Some funny friends nowadays. You're the one to talk. OK. Look, I'm sorry, Sam. I'm trying to put it right. Look, I'm only talking to you so that Janice doesn't smack you one. So say what you've got to say and let me get off to work. Cos I need every penny now, don't I? Not if you apologise, you don't. What? If you apologise, she'll drop all charges. Have a solemn promise. On your bike. Morning. Uh, more tea, Mrs Sullivan? Oh, why not? Usually takes three cups before I get going in the morning. <laughs> Your uh, friend says you run a news agent. That's right. Have you been together long? Me and Mavis? Oh, long enough. Oh, that's good. I think it's so important to have a proper kind of partnership in a business of this kind. Well, I wouldn't argue with that. A proper partnership? Well, it would be a proper partnership. I mean, I can't think of any other way of doing this. Oh, uh, I meant of a, a personal nature. Eh? Like me and Mr Groves. Oh, don't worry, dear, I'm no prude. You can't afford to be in this line of business. Are you thinking what I think you're thinking? Hey, you must have a built-in time clock. No, oh, just a long-distance sense of smell, Alma. Uh, two sugars, please, love. Have you said anything yet? I was waiting for you. Oh. You know, what I want to know is what is it that you actually do in that hospital? Oh, the odd bit of brain surgery when they're desperate. Oh, <laughs> well, I wish you'd do something with mine. Honestly, since I passed 40, I can hardly remember the time of day. Uh, there you go. Oh, thanks, darling. Oh, I've got all that to come, eh? <laughs> mine, there's some things in life that you never forget, do you? No, I suppose not. No, no, some things in life. Like, unpleasant things. Hey, come on. What is this? What's going on? It's Don Brennan. What about Don Brennan? 
He's in Weatherfield Hospital. What? For treatment, so don't worry, he's not going anywhere. <sighs> well, that's not uh, strictly true. Um, he's dying, he's got cancer. So they brought him to us for treatment. Dying? Yeah. Well, I don't expect you to shed any tears over it. No, 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 no it's, not, it's not that. It's just, just, just to me by surprise, that's all. He wants to see you, Helma. Oh, why not? I mean, why does he have to turn up now just when I was beginning to get over it? Well, I think if you had any choice, he wouldn't be here at all. Look, we understand, Alma. Just forget it. How can I forget it? Alma, you're under no obligation. What, refusing a dying man his last request? Mike had gone mad. Yes, his, his death was very sudden, very unexpected, so... Oh, it was a great shock. Yes, I, I can imagine it. <laughs> but he was a lovely man. He looked after me in life, and he's still looking after me, because, I mean, I wouldn't be here but for all the provision he made. Well, I hope that you'll be very happy here, Mrs Wilton. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm sure I will be. Please call me Mavis. Mrs Wilton sounds so formal. Oh, very well, Mavis. <laughs> And uh, it's George, by the way. After the king. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> oh, hello, Celia. You like our little vegetable garden? Oh, yes, it's lovely. Oh, I shall miss it. Yes, I'm sure you will. <laughs> you don't happen to have seen Rita uh, by any chance, Mrs. Sullivan? Oh, oh, yes, indeed. She's just uh, popped out in the car. In the car? Oh, I see. Did she say where she was going? No, she didn't, but she said to tell you she, she'd be back in an hour or so. Oh, oh well, in, in that case, I, I think I'll just take the opportunity to acquaint myself with the rest of the town. Um, oh, well, yes. Excuse me. I'll get the drink for you. Yeah, I'll go and look some Hey, Bill. Yeah, so? Running with a wild bunch? Yeah, well, I'm a criminal now, aren't I? You're a wronged woman. I still shouldn't have done it. Yeah, and she should drop it and all. Well, she will, if I'm prepared to apologise to her. What? That's what she told Kevin this morning. I had to practically stop Janice from gobbing him one. Well, he should have let her have saved me a job. He's your son, Bill. Yeah, and I'm fed up to the teeth with him. See, you want to stay well away from that Don Brennan? He's had you enough bother already. Right, he says he's dying, Uncle Fred. Good riddance to bad rubbish. You can't say that. No. Before he was ill, he was my mate. He looked after me. He damn near had you in Nick, don't forget. He were ill, though. Psychiatrists said so. It's them psychiatrists that are ill. You should have gone to prison proper, never mind this secure hospital rubbish. You mark my words, Ashley, until that fella is six feet under, there's none of us safe. You all right, Bill? Yeah, yeah I'm fine. Yeah. Is it the wee girl up there, Willie? Yeah. Sort of prayers on your mind, you know. Do you know, I'll tell you what. I'm surprised Kevin let this business go so far so long. Well, I'm sick of making excuses for him, Jim. Yeah. It's a bad job, though, isn't it? Look, uh, do you think you could uh, manage the porch without me this afternoon? I no problem if I have to. Because I just need a couple of hours off, that's all, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all right by me, Stephen? Yeah, fine. Can't serve your cigarettes, Toya. You're underage. For me, Dad. Well, then your dad will have to come and get them for himself. I told you he can't. He's busy. I'm sorry. If anybody think I'm asking for drugs? No, you are, young lady. Nicotine is just as much a drug as any you're likely to try. And who asked you? <laughs> you do well to listen to Mrs Roberts. The reward's full of people with smoking-related diseases in Weatherfield Hospital. If I'd wanted a lecture, I'd have stayed at school. Yeah, which is where you should be now, by right. You little madam! Oh, ignore her, Audrey, ignore her. I'm just thankful I'm behind this counter shoveling wine gums rather than behind a desk trying to get through to her. Uh, I wonder, do you think wine gums could have any soporific effect if you eat too many? Oh, yeah, you mean Percy? Well, he does eat rather a lot, and he's not exactly at his sharpest at the moment. Well, I think it's more to do with old age and wine gums, Emily, I'm afraid. Mother-in-law! I trust you are well. 
There's no wrong with me so long as you keep a distance between the pair of us, Fred Elliot. E you are a wag, you are more. That's ain't you, wag? A right little joker. Will you two stop it? I'm sick of you bickering. This isn't a bicker, Maureen. This is a demonstration of our mutual independence and admiration. You can speak for yourself. I were, and I'll say more. I think you're absolutely right to go to Mayfield Court. There's no doubt about it. Well, I think there is. I don't think you want to go there at all. I think you're doing it to wind me up. Well, you can get that right out of your head. I'm doing this for me. And don't you ever think any different. Oh. So you decided to come back then? Yeah. Well, you might have said where you were going. I didn't know where I was going. But I might have wanted to come with you. Well, I didn't want to drag you away from your cucumbers. <laughs> there aren't any cucumbers. Well, peas, beans, whatever. Do you know, Rita, you really are going to have to learn about this garden. Huh? Well, it's going to be an integral part of our new business. How's that, then? Because it's much cheaper to grow vegetables than to buy them. Rubbish. You know it is. Well, it stands to reason. I mean, when you think what you spend on sprays and chemicals, not to mention the hours you put in trying to keep it going. Oh, yes, but it's all worth it to be able to serve fresh food. And that's what people come here for. You don't think old Groves relies on this to feed his customers, do you? Yes. Yes, I do, actually. Well, you're more gullible than I thought. This is just for sure. <gasps> oh, that's typical of you. Always look on the downside, always the cynic. Wrong. Always the businesswoman, if you want to be accurate. And if you want to succeed in business, you're going to have to toughen up a bit as well. Oh, and get like you. Oh, Rita, this is the country. People out here, they're more, more genuine, more honest. Do you think so? Yeah. You don't think this is all part of a sales pitch? Well, I mean, of course they want to sell, but, well... I think they're really reluctant to go. Do you? Yes, I do. And I'm beginning to wonder if you are cut out for this life at Bideway. Do you know? Yes, I do. I, I think it's something you should consider very seriously. Right. I shall do that. Well, where are you going now? Back to Weatherfield. To my own bed and my own company. And don't ask why, because I just might tell you. Well, you can't just leave like that. Well, you stay, then. Yes, I intend to. Fine. And you shouldn't rush off like this. The truth is, Mavis, I think you're right. I'm not cut out for country living. What are they going to think? I mean, what am I going to say to them when they ask where you've gone? Oh, that's easy, Mavis. Just tell them the truth. As far as I'm concerned, the whole deal is off. Alma? Look, we've got to talk about this. Fine. I've been into town, I've been home. Look, if you don't want to go, just say so. Nobody would blame you. Well, I wouldn't blame myself, but could I live with it? Oh, what about you? What do you want to feel so nice? Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, you'll be able to come back with us and help us with that old porch, eh? Oh, I think you need a bit of stick. No, it's not giving us any stick at all. It's just a good man's always handy to have. Well, I think you... You might have to start advertising for one, Jim, because uh, you decided to leave. You mean you decided to leave? What, you're leaving the firm? No, I'm leaving the country. What? What do you mean you're leaving the country? I've just been on the phone to a mate of mine in Germany. Right, he owes me a few favours. What are you saying? You mean he's got a job waiting for you or what? No, 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 but he's looking. And he's a good lad. He'll, he'll, he'll turn some on. Oh, fine. So if something turns up, then, then you're away on then, just like that? No, no, no. Before that. I'm fed up, Jim. I've had enough. Ah, Kevin. Natalie. Maury. The flat. I, look, I just feel like I need a fresh start. Well, it's, uh, it's a long way to go for a promise, isn't it? Yeah, but I've got my lad out there, haven't I? I can't. Oh, what, your son, yeah? Yes. Stayed with his mum, doesn't he? I mean, he's 12 years old now. It's, uh, it's time I started taking him seriously. Yeah? OK. So, 
So are you sure this is what you want then, William? Look, I've, I've no real options yet. Hey, I've got to do something with myself. Get a bit of pride back, you know? Well, I think you're doing the right thing, Bill. Well, only time will tell her. There you go. Just be It's not the time. Or... Just hang on. Could you put me up some sandwiches and coffee, please, worth the stock taking? It's about time somebody took some Come stock on. down there. It's not. On second thoughts, forget it. Just hang on a second. Bill, I've got nothing to say to you. No, but uh, I've got something to say to you, and I might not get another chance. For what it's worth, Natalie, I think you're a scheming little cow, and I, for one, will never forgive you for what you've done to Sally and them two kids, and what you're still doing to them. Now, you'll be pleased to know that I'm leaving by the film, but one of the pleasures that I'm going to take with me in leaving is that I'll never see you again. Is that all? Isn't that enough? Excuse me. <sighs> Kenneth, do you mind me asking you something of a delicate nature? Oh, depends what it is. Regarding Mrs. Bishop, have you by any chance noticed uh, there's uh, signs of her old problem coming back? Old problem? Yes, you know, she moves things and be very forgetful. Ah, uh, can't say I have Percy now. No, they want to watch out because yesterday I baked a dozen cakes and she ate three of them. Well, isn't that what you're supposed to do? Yes, that's not the point, though. She she denies every part of it. Yeah, hang on a minute. When is she supposed to have eaten these cakes? Yesterday cake? afternoon. Yesterday afternoon? Well, it couldn't be her. She was with me all yesterday afternoon. So you have to look for your culprit elsewhere. Phil! I've not come to buy anything. I've just come to tell you that uh, I've had enough. And I'm going back to Germany. I'll be out the flat by the end of the week. Oh, but you going to Germany? What, on a holiday or what? No. No, I'm going to live there, Molly. Well, I'll see you want. Uh, it, it came to say he'd be out of the flat by Friday. Oh, well, that's good news. He's going to Germany. Oh, you eat well there. They like the food in Germany. I don't think he's going for the food. Done. Ah, oh, Matt, yeah. How are you, mate? Well, I felt better. I've uh, brought someone to see you. Huh? Hello. Don. Oh, man. Thanks for coming. Thank you. So did they say what he was doing then, or what? No, he was just slagging me off. Anyway, I don't know why we came in here. We should have gone into town. Everyone treats me like a pariah. You should drop the charge again, Sally, then, shouldn't you? Yeah, I will if she apologises. Well, she's not going to do that, is she? Then I won't drop the charges. Can I have a vodka and tonic and a pint of bitter, please? You can't, love. I want a word with you. Yeah, I want a word with you, I know. I would have thought you'd said enough today already. Just said what I felt. Yeah, well, in future, keep your opinions to yourself. Well, you won't have to put up with me for much longer because uh, I'm moving away. Then. Yeah, Natalie said. Oh, I'll have to tell you then, will I? Well, as long as you're going far enough to keep your nose out of our business. Oh, yes, I reckon I'm going far enough. I'm going to Germany. See ya. I didn't think you'd come. I mean, it didn't. And I don't deserve it, but is there any way that you can forgive me? Well, I can't understand what you did, but I can forgive you, yeah. Thank you. No, it's OK. I kept thinking. All the time after it happened, I kept worrying that I'd wrecked your life. No. Are you sure? I've got a new job. I'm keeping myself busy. I'm, uh, I'm very happy. Mike? Mike? <sighs> Mike's just Mike. He's fine. His, his new business is doing well. Oh, good. I'm glad for the pair of you because I didn't want to go with any recriminations, you know. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah. Are you all right, Don? <gasps> Yeah, I'm all right. Martin! Martin! Yeah, OK. I'm all right. Uh, yeah. Go on, don't worry. I think he's had enough now, yeah, Alma. Thanks for coming, Alma. That were a finer piece of sirloin as I've had in many a day. Do you want your pudding? You're not finishing yours. I'm not hungry. 
Maureen, you must not let your misplaced concern for your mother spoil your appetite. Food is very important to a working woman. It is woman. not misplaced concern. She didn't want to go into that home and you know it. See, we've been through all this and I know now to sort. And I'll have that before you decide to chuck it. It's best British, is that? Oh, don't be disgusting. Pardon? You're an insensitive, greedy, self-indulgent old man. Don't charge your husband like that. Husband! I wish you weren't my husband. I wish I'd never married you. Maureen! Maureen! Everything's going to be OK. Hmm? I'll be here when you want me. So don't worry. It's a bit late for that now, mate, but thanks anyway. See you later. Well, it's a long way to go, but I hope you find what you're looking for. Looks like you found yours. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, if I don't see you, good luck. Yeah, thanks. Maureen! Maureen! Just leave me. Just go in, Fred, and just leave me, please. Terrible mistake. 